What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Ivy Broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. We are live once again, folks, boys, girls, NBs. It is 60 degrees and sunny out here. It's a little cold here in Los Angeles, but we are live and alive. It's Monday, no November 9th. 2020 11 07 a.m and i'm i'm actually early i'm earlier than i've been in a while with the exception of of course the celebration day when donald trump was uh, finally ousted but i am early despite what people in the chat the ungrateful little children in the chat might tell you i'm actually early normally i start around like 11 10 11 15 you know that sort of thing but we're here and of course i have news uh Mark Esper is gone. Donald Trump has fired the Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. There's a lot of news to cover. It's Monday. Monday means news day. So obviously we will be talking about a lot of news. So um, obviously that's, that's something we're going to do. But also, also, this is an incredible amount of copium that we have right before us, ladies and gentlemen. And the reason why I say that, well, Dave Rubin has some clips. There are just a lot of people, okay? There are just a lot of people with a lot of copium everywhere, all around. A lot of people, a lot of copium. That's something we're going to take a look at. Obviously, there's the John Oliver stuff. Uh, I'm not using my Instagram voice. It's just, I, I think... I don't know why my voice is deeper, but it's just deeper. So chill the fuck out. Okay, get over it. Just learn to live with it. It'll fix itself throughout the day. Um, We will be talking about a bunch of different things. News related. But before we get there, let me get started with before we get there, let me get started with uh, some personal news. What, what, what should I give you? Personal news related. Not really much to say. Not really much to say. Uh, still have no PlayStation 5. So, don't know what to do about that. Coming out on Friday, I think, right? Why does XQC's community hate you? They don't hate me. They're in here all the time. I do want to play Demon Souls when it comes. Stop begging for it. Have some self-respect. I have no self-respect. Oh, I, I, I have no self-respect whatsoever. The fuck do you mean have some self-respect? Have you seen the zero IQ take from Matt Christmas? Some workout personal news? Well, I worked out earlier this morning. It was a good, it was a good workout. I feel good. You're going to have to gun for target on Thursday, brother. We'll see what happens. There's some good COVID news, COVID vaccination. Pfizer early data shows vaccine is more than 90% effective. So that's good stuff. Uh, there is some good news, man. A lot of good stuff is happening. What's between, happening between you and Tramic? Nothing like literally nothing. It, it, this is all like it, it's all weird it's all fucking weird shit like weird drama that does not exist I don't think anyway Bolivia's former president Evo Morales returned to the country on Monday a year after his Shut the fuck up. Is this real? 
Is this from November 9th? Really? A year after his failed attempt to keep the power toward the nation apart and send him into exile? Yo, why are they doing this? Why do they write like this? Like, are they just openly... Are they openly just like straight up? Oh, yo, no, we love coups. Like we're we're doing coups. We're fans of coups, and this was a coup, and we liked it, and we don't like that the the incredibly popular the incredibly popular uh, president and his incredibly popular party after that coup failed, basically. Um, is coming back like the incredibly popular leader of the incredibly popular party after an overwhelming victory is coming back post coup d'etat that's what this is there's nothing else outside of it okay fuck it i'm gonna get right into the news so i'm doing it it's monday and daycare is now open for the normans Lots of news to cover, including vaccine news, www. Wish.tv slash Hasanami. Okay, got it. Have you heard about Parler and how copium Trumpers are switching into it from Facebook? Switching to it from Facebook? It doesn't work that way, man. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, here's how this goes. I hear a lot of, I hear a lot of, of, uh, conservatives are moving over to Parler. It's going to be just like Gab and it's going to be just like every other failed experiment. Oh my God, Dave Rubin looks crazy. It's going to be just like every other failed experiment of a social media platform that's not regulated. And the reason why it's not regulated is because they want to pick up these like Nazis and stuff, but it always fails. Now, the reason why it fails is because one, if you don't get libs on that platform, it doesn't matter. Okay. These people want to be on Twitter and they want to be on Facebook so they can own the libs. If there's no lib owning happening on those platforms, because no liberal will touch those platforms. It doesn't matter. Like, then it's not fun. It's not fun at all. The whole fun of social media for a lot of these people is just owning the fucking libs. They don't want just an, eco ch an echo chamber. They want an echo chamber, sure. They want to save space. But then they also want to own some fucking libs. So that's one. Two, these websites that start off without having, uh, the, without having any speech restrictions very quickly come to the conclusion that you have to have speech restrictions like you literally have to otherwise they become nazi infested like gab is most famously known for the synagogue pittsburgh synagogue shooter uh endlessly posting nazi shit on there and even like mentioning why he was going to potentially shoot a synagogue like these websites get infiltrated immediately if there's no speech restrictions by nazis <laughs> and then they also end up having to implement speech restrictions so there is no full free speech and then the nazis are like well fuck you you got restrictions now it is an inevitability okay it is an inevitability that's just how it works so just all these platforms come around Every couple of years, I don't know why I'm having a hard time breathing. All these platforms come around every couple of years and they literally just go away as fast as they came out. And when they first came, when they first come out, everyone's like, oh my God, what's happening? What's the deal with Parler? Parler is going to fucking be a Nazi den, whatever. And then it does turn into a Nazi den, but nothing else happens. Telegram, I think is another one, right? And when I mean Nazi den, I mean, when I mean Nazi den, I mean everything from like actual neo-Nazis and skinheads, like racist skinheads to 
uh, alt-right members, groipers, uh, paleocons, like, every, every fucking branch of, like, the nerdy racists out there that, like, have made it a science, like, have made their racism into, like, a, a weeb-like endeavor, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not exactly, like, you know, if you're thinking, oh, these are going to be dedicated to the Nazi uh, party of Germany, like, no, it's not like that. If you're new here, that's not what I'm talking about. Go to the pulmonary clinic for a PFD exam. Got one a couple weeks ago. Turns out I have asthma. I hope I don't have it. Anyway. Can you recommend good, let, and right political analysts? There's no good right-wing political analysts. There's barely any good left-wing political analysts or commentators. But there is no good right-wing ones. Why would there be? Jim Clyburn, there ain't nobody in the Democratic Party of the United States of America that's more progressive than Jim... Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's just get started. Let's get started on me losing my fucking mind at the Democrats, and then we'll get to the copium stuff. First, I'm a... Well, let me say this. There ain't nobody in the Democratic Party of the United States of America that's more progressive than Jim Clyburn. Nobody. <laughs> I met my late wife in jail protesting... The status quo. John Lewis and I, you would not call John not progressive. But John would never yell, burn, baby, burn. John would never say defund the police. As progressive as he was. Old man. It's past you. It's past your time, old man. No one is denying the incredible work that you put in for civil rights. Okay? No one. And that's the truth. Like, same with John Lewis. But ultimately, you got to recognize that the people out on the streets right now that are saying defund the police, those activists, they don't, they're, they're ahead of you. Okay. That's just how it is. Like instead of adopting a reactionary framing over defund the police, why doesn't, why doesn't representative Jim Clyburn talk about Man, what are people saying? Why are you saying ages shit, man? So immature. Wow, making fun of old people. Yo, learn how to fucking spell, okay, bitch? Here's a week off for you. Learn how to spell, and then you can come back and call me ages, you dumb motherfucker. I'm also being ableist because you have a smooth-ass brain, too. Take that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, motherfucker. All right. I don't have a lot of time for this sort of nonsense today. Okay. What I'm trying to say is... Listen, stop adopting right-wing framing on defund the police, okay? It's not about fucking abolishing the police in its entirety. It makes so much fucking sense. Lowering the amount of funds that the police have, increasing accountability, demilitarizing the police force, increasing accountability on the police force by way of legislation, and taking some funds away from the police and giving it back to social workers like this is these are these are good programs okay so the moment that like uh, jim clyborne jim clyborne <laughs> refuses to acknowledge how good these ideas are and immediately immediately fucking jumps to the worst reactionary framing possible you're doing yourself and your constituents a disservice and don't come at me with this, like, black people versus white people shit either in the chat. Like, oh, look at Hassan. Oh, yeah, he knows better than a, a civil rights icon. Like a person who, uh, who, who did work, who actually did work in the civil rights. Like, what do you know, like, white guy? Yeah, sure. If that's your approach, if that's your opinion, then, you know, you're not going to have a lot of fun on this channel. Because sometimes I do 
yell at uh, figures of power, regardless of what their race is, on issues that even pertain to their race. There is a massive difference in opinion. There is a massive generational gap on these sorts of issues uh, amongst certain uh, demographics, amongst certain ethnic backgrounds, amongst races. It, it doesn't matter. You have to do what's right. You have to do what's good. This dude is completely removed from his civil rights days and is bought and paid for by private uh, insurance. Fuck him. Yeah. And also, he's not just bitching about defund the police. He's also shit on Medicare for all. Now, of course, there's got to be a reason why Jim Clyburn doesn't like Medicare for all. Wonder what it is. You think... You, you, you think that, um, you think that the million dollars that he's gotten from big pharma, you think that has something to do with it? I don't know. I feel like that could be somewhat of a motivator for his perspective. I, I might be crazy, but I'm no big city lawyer, but it kind of feels like you're getting a million dollars over your career from big pharma kind of seems like that's going to guide your perspective a little bit or maybe cloud your judgment in this circumstance feel me that's just 2019 2020 we're talking over his entire career okay wild that 2019 and 2020 insurance industry gave him $183,000. What? Hey, son, you may not remember me, but a few weeks ago, you banned me for saying something stupid. You said to get my head checked, and turns out I did. Turns out I had a tumor pushing up against my temporal lobe. Just wanted to say thanks. You saved me. Shit posing saved my life. Can we get a chroma 90 day? I don't believe that. Is that real? That's a copy pasta or something, right? Here, I'm going to go up. There's no way that's real. Or maybe Jim Clyburn legitimately thinks that, uh, you know, his district. Or maybe Jim Clyburn legitimately thinks that his district with a median income is $35,000 a year, okay? Maybe those guys don't need Medicare for all. Maybe he legitimately thinks that. But I fucking doubt it. I think he knows better. And I think he's saying this shit regardless. Because he's filling his own pockets, and ultimately, who the fuck is who the fuck are his constituents going to vote for? He's going to primary Jim Clyburn. These are communities that are tight knit. They're super tight knit. Very difficult for, very difficult to penetrate, even from within. If you had uh, if you had another uh, figure. Uh, try to run and try to primary him, they would get fucking owned into oblivion. And Clyburn is very powerful. I just wish he would do what's right by his constituents instead of shitting on the left. And I'm just as progressive as anybody else, but I'm practical about politics. And just because it works in my district doesn't mean I'm going to label or cause my friends to do, um, have to adhere to it in their district. Wait, so he's saying it works in his district. What the fuck? So what the fuck is your practicality then? Bro, never mind. Uh, okay, yeah, he's just... Representative Jim Clyburn railing against socialism while often having a bust of one of America's most prominent democratic socialists, W.E.B. Dubois, behind him. 
on TV. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Also, he wasn't even a democratic socialist. He was a communist. So that's a democratic socialism in that circumstance is not enough to describe uh, uh, W.E.B. Dubois. It's so weird seeing old ass activists, former activists bitching about the radical movements of the youth. Man, they get old. They get comfy. They make a lot of money. And they benefit. Once you have a certain amount of capital, you benefit from stability. You benefit from the system being preserved. So, of course, you're going to fucking try to justify it any which way. I hope it doesn't happen to me. Seriously. It doesn't seem like it because... I, I live well, well under my means and don't even have a fucking credit card and literally don't do anything beyond just um, sitting around and streaming for fucking 10 hours a day complaining about shit. But that's what it is for a lot of these people. Like, I'm, I'm really... Like, I just don't think that this dude is... Like, I... Yeah, I saw this. We're going to watch the Fox News Pundit in a second. I just don't think that, like, Jim Clyburn legitimately thinks that, it, like, Medicare for All would be bad for his constituents. It's going to be good for your constituents. And if you know that, then fucking say it. Say it no matter what happens. You don't back away from social justice. And economic justice is social justice. Like, I just, I don't know. I wrote a bit about the way forward and direct action. The left must hit the streets again right now. Ooh, okay, Osita. We'll take a look at it. No credit equals humble. Power and money corrupts inevitably. It's like an illness. Just how long you can hold off. You own your own home? No, fuck no, I don't own my own home. No, the point I was, the point I was making about the credit shit the point I was making about the credit shit is that, like, I, I live way under my means, is what I'm saying. So, like, if something happened tomorrow, and half of you guys were like, yo, fuck Hassan. I don't want to be here. I fucking hate him. Oh, Osita wants to come on. If... Um, if something were to happen and if, uh, half of you liberals and you are, a lot of you are liberals were like, yo, fuck us on. This is a bridge too far. Like, I can't believe he's disparaging the good name of, uh, Jim Clyburn, who is, you know, an important figure in the black community. And he is an important figure in the black community. Like how dare this white dude fucking disparage this guy? Like, what the fuck have you done? I'm done. And you decided to no longer support me. And you decided to no longer subscribe, like, well, I would be fine because my lifestyle choices, like, this is what I do. This is all I do. Anyway, these are long-term political arguments for Bernie Sanders, free college for all, posture for Democrats. Oh, I've been saying this. I've had this conversation a bunch in the past couple of days. That's actually pretty cool that Shane Goldmacher is say, Goldmacher is saying that. Yo, so you know how I need someone with a lot of knowledge to tell me what the Democrat point of view was on amnesty and Hispanic voters back in the day when Reagan wanted to give him amnesty. And the reason why I asked this is because Republicans now talk about demographics of destiny. Now, Nazis say that shit, obviously. You can't build a civilization on other people's children, blah, blah, blah. But the real reason why Republicans often hate uh, Hispanic immigration, South American immigration, is because they vote Democrat. They're very young and they vote Democrat, even though there are social conservatives. In the Latino population, racial agitation uh, skews makes them, you know, go out and vote Democrat in a lot of circumstances. Even though there's a lot of diversity in South American communities, obviously, we can't just look at them as like one big thing, but uh, one big monolith. But, um, but it turns out, like, while Reagan was the one who was trying to do amnesty, 
originally. Hispanics are voting for fucking Democrats, right? And that's partially, that, that demographic shift is partially responsible for Democrats winning places like Arizona. Democrats having a competitive uh, opportunity in a, in a state like fucking Texas, right? Well, bitch, let me tell you something. If there's one fucking policy that would permanently offer a majority status to the Democrats, it's free college for all. Free college for all, and Republicans know this. If you have a college degree, you are more likely to vote Democrat than Republican. That's just facts. That's just it. That is literally how this works. Okay? So why don't you, why don't you try to fucking, even for purely selfish re-election reasons, even if you're not going to think about it from the point of view that I think about it, like it's a good thing, it's a necessity, and it's going to have a more competitive more educated voter uh, population, but also a labor force that is competitive with, you know, international demands at a time when there's so much uh, professional, uh, when there's so much need for, like, technical proficiency, blah, blah, blah. Why the fuck aren't Democrats pushing for free college for all nonstop just to ensure that there are more Democrats? Now, Republicans know this. Republicans know that college makes you a Democrat. Now, they know this, and they literally say it. Like, they don't even hide it. They, they will openly say, if you, if you watch, like, Prager U videos, or if you watch any of these, ironic, by the way, Prager U, not a real university. But if you watch Republican videos, like, they openly say it. Republican commentators would be like, college is a Marxist safe space. Like, college is basically an Antifa factory where they bimbify you and forced feminization occurs and everyone is trans and gay and, and Marxist. Like, they just say it. Like, they lie and, and, you know, make up all this shit about college campuses. So why the fuck aren't Democrats constantly agitating for it? It's just so dumb. It is a completely idiotic thing for Democrats not to advocate for it. It's just another self-defeating, moronic fucking approach from the Democrats. It just honestly feels like they want to lose. Because it's a win-win no matter what. It's a win from a purely pragmatic point of view where you want more educational, uh, more educated uh, voter base that's end up uh, that's going to end up swinging Democrat. Okay? And it's good because more people going to college is always good. It's always a good thing. A more educated uh, labor force is a good thing. Elitism? Yeah, I'm, I'm elitist, yeah. Man, shut the fuck up. Yo, no one says idiotic liberal shit like this in countries where we have free education all the way to college like no one fucking turns around and says like oh you're being so elitist like you don't know anything like shut up and that's probably because you didn't go to college okay there you go i'm elitist i'm classist and i'm elitist shut the fuck up i hate it when people say this shit you don't even learn anything important in college it's literally more important that you get to have a space where you can kind of be an adult with no restrictions whatsoever with an incredibly diverse uh, uh community where, like, at least you accidentally learn a few things, all right? It teaches you critical thinking and shit. That's way more important than, like, actually learning anything. I didn't learn fucking dick in college. So shut the fuck up. It's literally just a piece of paper that allows your... Uh, that, that increases your... improves your chances of getting a job. And in this job market, that doesn't even matter anyway. It's not... It's the experience of college that's good overall. Oh... And in countries where college is free or, or worse, even more communist, where the government pays you to go to college, oh my lord, in those countries, there isn't this conversation. Like, this conversation does not take place. Leftists aren't being like, this is so elitist. So shut your stupid fucking mouth up, okay? Please, for a brief moment. So many more people... So many more people would go to college if it was free. Anyway, let's go back to the uh, the uh, Pramila, uh, the Pramila Jayapal conversation. Um, asked if she was progressives were responsible for moderates so losing the race. at its majority in the House appears to be shrinking. 
At this hour, NBC News projects that Democrats will lose several seats down from the 232 that they held before Election Day. NBC has so far made calls in 19 of the 27 districts classified as toss-ups by the nonpartisan Cook Political Report, and they've all been called for Republicans. Some moderate members are blaming progressives in the party who they say pushed policies to the left of Joe Biden's. Pennsylvania Democrat Connor Lamb, who narrowly won re-election, told the New York Times, quote, the rhetoric and the policies and all that stuff, it has gone way too far. It needs to be dialed back. It needs to be rooted in common sense, in reality, and yes, politics. But progressives are pushing back. I hate this, like, uh, real politique is very different than your ideological uh, wants or whatever. Okay? Let me tell you guys something. One thing that you need to be reminded, and the reason why you need to be reminded of this is because you're already in a hyper-political space where you are actually building uh, some ideological perspective, is that only 20 to 15 to 20 percent of the country is ideological. Okay? Most people, the overwhelming majority of people who vote, do not vote based on ideology. They vote based on partisanship. It's team sports for a lot of people. That's why there's a lot of wonky, idiotic perspectives from so many fucking people. So these guys constantly talking about... These guys constantly talking about like, oh, it's the, it's the ideology of, of socialism. Like, shut the fuck up. Okay? Shut the fuck up. No. You're not doing a good enough job... Because you're not pushing back hard enough on right-wing talking points. We looked at a compilation. We looked at a compilation last night that Wally Shaheed put together of all of these swing states and swing districts and the ads that they were running. The ads that they were running didn't show AOC. The ads that they were running didn't even show Ilhan Omar. And even if they did, it doesn't fucking matter. They were showing Nancy Pelosi. Because Nancy Pelosi... He's seen as a goddamn demon. In 2018, a study was conducted where two-thirds of the country thought Nancy Pelosi uh, should, should uh, give up leadership in the Democratic Party. Two-thirds. So that includes Democrats, too. Because Nancy Pelosi has been demonized. Now, do I like Nancy Pelosi personally? No, of course not. I have differences in opinion. I think Pago is uh, trash. Okay, it's doo-doo butter. But beyond that, like, is she that big of a demon? Is she as big of a demon as Republicans? No. No. But she's been demonized. It's just about marketing. Republicans never stop running. They campaign for four fucking years. Meanwhile, Democrats think elections only happen once every four years. It's dumb as fuck saying the party's left wing energized the voters who got Biden over the finish line. Joining me now to talk more about this is Congresswoman Pramila Jaya. Wait, this fucking idiot said this is such a rad lib take? Man, me fucking your mom is a rad lib take, okay? Shut the fuck up. What is a rad lib take about this? That I'm saying it doesn't matter what the opposition says about key Democrats or specific policies it's only because you lose because you don't advocate for your progressive policies hard enough. How the fuck is that Radlib? You stupid fuck. Yo, some of you were... Anyway. Paul of Washington. She is the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Congresswoman, uh, it's great to see you as always. Uh, thanks very much for being here today. I, uh, let's, let's just start. I, I mean, frankly... A lot of this anger spilled out on a, a caucus call that, that we reported on over the course of the last week. Uh, but the reality is these losses surprised everyone. I mean, every all of the sources I was talking to heading in to election night expected the Democrats were going to win between five and seven seats and that if it was a good night, it would be in the double digits. And frankly, the opposite happened. Republicans picked up seats. Why, in your view, did that happen? Well, that's right. I think that the uh, important thing here is I don't think anybody expected the turnout of Trump voters. I mean, the, you just have to understand this. In 2018, Donald Trump was not on the ballot. 
And so we had incredible turnout in districts that we never expected to win, but we mounted great candidates in those districts and they won. <laughs> And so that was very, very important. But in this cycle, I think we expected that our turnout would Still taking private jets to small streamer conventions? No, I take private jets to fuck your mom. Okay? That's what I do. I take a private jet to go and fuck your mom. Would uh, be enormous, which it was. But the Fucking morons, dude. Snarky ass fucking... Idiotic Andy's hot. Huh? You think I'm private jet, dude? No, you're right. When um when I was uh, offered to speak at some fucking uh award show, and they were like, "Hey, uh, we will fly you in a private jet," I should have been like, "No, sir, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fly in a private jet, bitch. Of course I'm gonna fly in, fly in a private jet. Suck my dick. The reason why you're fucking saying that is literally because you're bent out of shape. You're like, oh." Calls himself a fucking leftist, flies in a private jet. It's free, motherfucker. What are you? What are you gonna? You're gonna get offered to fly in a private jet for free, and you're you're not gonna do it? Okay, bro. Well, you're so honorable. Thank you. Thank you, dude. This is why the left looks so idiotic half the time. I mean, I, that dude is probably not even a leftist, but like, they say idiotic things. Like, like 99.9% .9 of people would be like, a free private jet. Yes, thank you. It's not like I had to suck a dick for it or do anything that I didn't want to do. It's not like I had to fucking, I don't know, defend oil barons or some shit. I was literally, I lost. I ended up losing at the Shorty Awards to fucking uh, Dave's Hot Ones, or Dave, whatever the fuck, the Hot Ones show. But ultimately... You're like, what do you, what do you want? It's not like I had to sell out or anything this is the same energy as being like i can't believe bernie sanders is flying around in a private jet when he's got like eight campaign events lined up in a span of 40 hours and like what, what do you expect him you expect him to die why isn't he flying economy shut the fuck up you idiot shut up you're a child you don't know anything shut your stupid childish mouth up the adults are fucking talking maybe you will learn eventually how things work By the way, there's nothing wrong with sucking dick if you if for getting on a private jet. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Would not turn. I can't believe Bernie Sanders claims to be an environmentalist and he's not cycling from Vermont to Arizona. <laughs> now, people, and of course, those districts are districts in some cases that Donald Trump is winning by 25 percent. My good friend Max Rose in, in New York, I hope he gets to say one of my favorite members of Congress. But Donald Trump is winning his district by 25 percent. So I just think we have to understand that. Uh, there are terms that will be thrown at Democrats regardless of what Democratic members of Congress do. They are terms that were thrown at people like Teddy Roosevelt being called socialist. Medicare was called socialist. Now it's one of the most popular programs in the country. But the reality is that a lot of this is about not only the turnout, which we did a great job on, and let's be clear, that without the turnout of young people, of new voters who were not part of the Democratic Party base before. These are new people that we energized and got to the polls and got out to vote in not only swing districts like Pennsylvania or swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, but also look at the incredible work that Stacey Abrams, Black Voters Matter and others did in Georgia. Look at the work sure. that immigrant rights organizations did in Arizona to turn out those voters. We would not have won without that and without- No, no. Representative Jayapal, who I love, by the way, I think she's fucking awesome. Um, she is one of the one of the better representatives. No, what you don't understand is it's actually the Republicans that helped us win. Like, you know, like how Kasich got us Ohio, for example. You know, that blue state that we won where Donald Trump did not increase his margins. Uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't the black women. It wasn't the fucking Latino population. It wasn't the Native American population, which, by the way, I was right, wrong on too. Native Americans. Holy fucking shit, dude. Holy shit. Talk about a group of people who have been fucked over by both parties relentlessly. Like, just absolutely relentlessly. They have been just dumped on. And these dudes were 
if you look at like Arizona maps and it's like blue districts, every district that's blue is like Native American tribal territory. Just fucking blue as shit. And yet uh, they are all but an afterthought in our conversations. Meanwhile, they're getting like they literally have their own territories. Some of them are on the border and ICE is just clapping them because they're brown and, uh, and uh, assumed to be undocumented. Like, imagine, imagine living on this soil for longer than the motherfuckers that came here and then uh, getting run over by, like, uh, getting run over by some fucking white dude in an in a ICE van and getting arrested. It's like, bitch, this is, this is, if anything, you're the one who's invading. Anyway, that does happen, which is uh, crazy, but... Native American turnout in Arizona was 89% and voted 97% Dem. Are you saying that a teenager can't understand politics or an elder? Yes, the only person who can understand politics is a 29-year-old uh, himbo on Twitch. Every other age group I'm ageist against. Okay, are you happy? Is that, is that what you want to hear from me? Shut up. Just shut your mouth. No, there are plenty of teenagers who have a better understanding... Natives call Bernie Sanders Uncle Bernie. There are plenty of teenagers who have a better understanding of American politics than you do. I don't know how old you are. And there's plenty of fucking old people who are very progressive. I mean, the guy who I wanted to vote for, who I think would be a better president, is literally 7 million years old, Bernie Sanders. My super old mom spent the last year and half getting people on the res in AZ to register the vote. She's so proud. Yeah. I'm in a bad mood today. Maybe a little bit. Just because my back hurts like a lot and I'm just mad. I, I hate being 29 years old and my back hurting all the time. Like, and it's probably because of the way I sit and I haven't been able to adjust my fucking desk appropriately. And I, I need to figure it out. It's just, it's so frustrating, dude. I hate it. 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 I stretch my back literally for a fucking hour every morning and it's still fucked up. Anyway some other people coming out so let's just be clear this so, is an important election for progressives to have turned out and we did a great job doing that so the i i i totally understand all of those points and you know the data does uh, back up uh, that a lot of your uh, you had a lot of those new voters and that that uh, i'm sure that we'll, we'll find that many of them were energized by progressives but the reality is your majority is made in these suburban districts where a lot of these frontline members who won in 2018 are still, some of them are still fighting to see if they're going to keep uh, their seats. Lauren Underwood, for example, uh, comes to mind. Jim Clyburn, the, uh, the, the whip in the House, just basically said, well, defund the police, that was a problem. Uh, he's, he said it in the context of, of Jamie Harrison, but it certainly uh, could potentially be applied to these House districts as well. How are you going to prioritize hanging on to the majority in the House and balancing it with uh, the, the energy on the progressive side in a Biden administration? Well, that's actually exactly Donald Trump in democracy to make them believe that there is Exactly what I said on the conference call is we just have to be very careful about pointing figures, fingers in any direction because the country is divided. We see that um, in spite of this tremendous victory for, for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, which we're all celebrating. The reality is there are a lot of people who voted for Donald Trump as well. And so there is a different math to winning a state or uh, and a different math to winning a district. So that's the first thing. And many of these districts had different challenges. So my appeal to everybody in the party is to not point fingers. We we did not do that. We did not say, you know, uh, we we are the conservative part of the the wing is wrong and we're not going to turn out democrat. We all unified around Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in spite of the fact that Joe Biden was not our have you noticed that you are harsher on female pol politicians than you are on male? You seem to have higher expectations of women than men. Kamala, Elizabeth Warren, etc. Even that it isn't the case. It's what you believe your stance is in our house. Hopefully, you're, it's what we believe your stance is in our house. Hopefully, you reflect on this. Hey, moron. What did I just say? Pramila Jayapal is literally one of... Every single one of... Every single congressperson that I love deeply are literally women of color. Not that it fucking matters. 
It's what you do with your background and what you do with your experience that fucking matters. Just because I'm incredibly critical of Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren, who literally fucking, like, ISIS-style suicide bombed the progressive cause uh, for a cabinet position that she didn't even fucking get, doesn't change the reality that... Uh, it doesn't change the reality that I still love these women of color. So how, how does that work in your brain? How is it that Ilhan Omar is my fucking favorite congressperson in America? How is it that AOC is one of my favorite congresspersons in America? I love Katie Porter. I love Pramila Jayapal. I like more female congresspersons than I like male congresspersons. How does that work? Can you explain that to me then? It's like Bernie is the only fucking male and now Jamal Bowman is cool too. Rokana is all right. Like, what, what does this take? What, what is this? Where, where, are we co where are we coming from with this one, huh? You just said Native Americans were a key to them win, yet you disrespect Elizabeth Warren? Exactly. Like, none of that matters, by the way. It doesn't matter. Like, it, it doesn't even matter. So you're saying you have female friends? No, I'm not even fucking saying that. I'm saying that I am not even... I'm not even taking the premise of that question seriously. Okay? Because I think it's an idiotic one. It's a completely idiotic one. You understand? But even in the idiotic worldview that they have about, like, how I'm more, uh, more aggressive on female politicians than male, then why the fuck do I like mostly female politicians then? Like, even in their, even in their fucking delusional worldview, it, it still doesn't work. Sorry that I didn't fucking write fake tweets about my fake child saying Ruth Conda forever when RBG died. You know, 800 miles of, of pipeline over indigenous territory is exactly the way you express your girl power or while you fucking sit around and say Colin Kaepernick is, is pathetic and stupid for kneeling for uh, police brutality. That's, that's my fucking girl power. Saying Antonin Scalia is my best friend. Let me demonstrate my fucking girl power so hard. Ooh, I love, ooh, I love RBG. Oh my God. Ladies, will you please spare a crumb of coochie for me? I am a male feminist. I love Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Is that good? Did I get it right? Did I say the right things? Shut the fuck up. Our top choice of many progressives, many young people, but we made the case that I firmly believe in that no progress is possible with Donald Trump in the White House. And we turned people out. Now, if we say from anywhere in the party that progressives are the reason for losses in these Democratic districts, some of these Democratic districts, I fear we will lose people for a generation. They gave us a chance to make them believe again in democracy, to make them believe that there is a difference between a Democratic administration and a Republican administration. We did that. Joe Biden did that as well, but many of us were the translators of the message and the organizers of people on the ground. And it is important for people to understand that these are folks that really in many ways are the biggest swing voters. They're not part of the Democratic base. They weren't before. We turned them out and we need to respect and celebrate that they turned out to help us get Donald Trump out of the White House. That's the thing we should be focusing on. What a giant victory for the country that we got Donald Trump out of. Well, we haven't yet, but, but that we voted him out of, of the White House and that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won not only the popular vote, but the electoral college vote in, you know, for the first time in, in some cycles. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys understand that, like, well, some of the shit that I'm saying might come across as like anti-SJW rhetoric. You have to remember, when those people are fucking criticizing that sort of thing, they're literally making fun of a weakness in our armor, in the way that we understand the world. Liberals, oftentimes, unfortunately, liberal capitalist feminism does not go far enough. 
when it comes to uplifting women, even here in the United States of America, and certainly not fucking all around the world. More girl boss female CEOs is not going to fucking fundamentally change the structural issues that actually ends up oppressing women, black women, for example, disproportionately under our capitalist organization of the fucking economy. Okay, shut the fuck up. If you come to me with this shit and then talk about how like, oh, Quibi CEO Meg Whitman is going to be in the cabinet, though. That's sick. Like, shut up. You're a fucking child. Then your understanding of the world is unfortunately guided by all of these mainstream institutions that have told you like, no, 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 it's only progress if a woman is in a position of power. That's not fucking progress. Women have the capability of oppressing other women as well, as long as they continue to enforce the structural oppressive nature of this current fucking system. If they do not try to change the status quo, if they benefit from the status quo, then they're not doing shit. All of those gains are marginal. Yeah, more female drone operatives. More, more black female prison uh, guards is not going to change our carceral state and the way we understand crime and punishment in this country. Shut up. Yeah, half of ICE enforcement is this Hispanic. Yeah, 52% of ICE is motherfucking Hispanic, dude. So what's up? Are they not doing Gestapo shit? Is that it then? Well, you don't understand, Hassan. They are doing... They're doing um, Hispanic power. They're, they're actually... Why do you want brown people not to be able to militarize and fucking deport other black, brown people in this country? What you're doing is simply anti-immigrant. Seriously. And it's hard. It's like, it's hard because there's a give and take. That stuff is, that stuff is important. Okay. Why is diversity important is a question that you have to ask yourself. Diversity is important because for far too long, people in positions of power have been from a, the same exact fucking background. And when you're from the same exact fucking background, you don't tend to care about other marginalized communities and their, their personal experiences or what you're putting them through. So obviously, diversity is important from that point of view. Why is it important? Because when you come from a marginalized background, your personal experience oftentimes guides your worldview. You have a better understanding of how to help your own community. That's the point. You're like, you just saying my lived experience in and of itself is not enough. You have to show us how your lived experience has uh ha has changed your perspective and how your lived experience guides your ideology how uh, and, and what kind of progressive legislation you're going to pass as a consequence of your lived experience why do you assume hispanics are obligated to assist other hispanics in illegal immigration climb out of your tribalistic hole and you might want to see that we are not isolated to our own racial groups no that's actually my point that's literally my point is that like uh, South Americans are an incredibly diverse group of people, uh, and and there is a gigantic difference, for example, between even Mexicans, even white uh, white Mexicans versus uh, versus was it mestizo? Is uh, am I saying it right? Like indigenous Mexicans, like there is a gigantic difference. There's a gigantic cultural difference, and there's a gigantic difference in which, like, um, uh, they missed it totally. I, that was the point. Yeah, that was the point I was trying to make. Like. There are white Mexican Keck W. Bitch, have you been to Mexico City? There's Mexicans out there with blonde, blonde hair and blue eyes. Y you know that, right? There is a thing as white Mexicans. The reason why there's a thing as white Mexicans is because, and this might shock you, colonization. Okay? Louis C.K. is Mexican, motherfucker. You would never look at that guy and go, well, that's, that's not a white guy. That's a white guy. And this same racial and, and ethnic and cultural differences exist uh, in, in all Latin American countries. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, like white Mexicans like Mitt Romney. <laughs> true. Yeah, it's true. 
Mitt Romney's literally a white Mexican. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. Good one, dude. For those of you who don't get the reference, uh, Mitt Romney's uh, like hyper Mormon family was like, wait, we can't do poly, uh, not polyamory. We can't do polygamy. Fuck that. We're moving to Mexico where we can. And then they did. Mitt Romney's dad was literally born outside of U.S. soil. Even though he ran for president. Um, anyway, we're going to move on to some other stuff. Obviously, there's a fuckload of news. There's some copium coming up. Do not worry. There's some copium. Um, and then there's like the Trump administration. We're going to watch this Fox News uh, pundit thinking that she is uh, forgetting that she's online. But, but of course, before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and bees, top of the hour, every hour, we have a contractual obligation. We're right around a 60 second ad break. And if you're wondering, how the fuck do I have an ad free experience? I'd like to support the streamer and also enjoy this broadcast without a fucking ad break. All you need to do is subscribe with your Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime, of course, is free. And also, on top of that, another thing you can do is subscribe with a regular $5 tier 1 subscription. This will allow you to enjoy an ad-free experience in the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, a 60-second ad break coming to you. Uh, possible reason they had to move for season press conference. The hotel was across from a school. Their star witness is a convicted sex offender. Yeah, I, I heard that. I work at a big tech company where all we get is bullshit shut down on throats all the time. They want to push more diversity in executive positions, but literally do not push for any systemic reform. So it was literally just smoke and mirrors. As a female, I've literally seen almost zero additional power with, with women in power. Yeah. Picking neoliberal loyalists from black and brown communities and elevating them into positions of power where they will not try to uh, change the status quo is not necessarily going to help these communities. That's just how it works. That's how it's always worked. Not that, not, I'm not even saying that these people are, are bad. Uh, the... They do a, a tremendous amount of good. Stacey Abrams is a perfect example of this, okay? Stacey Abrams lost their race in the gubernatorial race against Brian Kemp in Georgia. And there was a lot of cheating going on. And she dedicated her fucking whole life, basically, after that to getting black people to turn out to vote. She got 800,000 uh, new voters registered with her organization. Now, that was a huge deal in, in Georgia. That was... A that played a fundamental role in, in Georgia turning blue, potentially. And, and that, you, you can't fucking hate on that. You absolutely can't hate on that. Even though Stacey Abrams also personally got millions of dollars from uh, Michael Bloomberg. And that definitely played a role in her keeping quiet about Michael Bloomberg's horrific racist policies. Um, as she did. She did keep quiet about Michael Bloomberg. When she could have criticized them. So that's definitely a real thing. Just like Stacey Abrams immediately went and got a job in Center for American Progress. Not exactly very progressive, but it doesn't matter. You cannot deny the role that these people play. Any incredible work that they put in regardless. <sighs> There's a woman assistant principal who used to dress code me for wearing a tank top when it was hot out. Women representation does not equal power. Yeah.
Abi ortada, oradaki durum ile alakalı bilgi verir misin? Rahat anlamıyorum. Oh, more than 1 million voters. Sorry, not even 800,000. Like, that was incredible. That is an incredible thing that she did. And you cannot deny that. That is an undeniably impressive thing that she did, okay? So it's more complex than just saying like, oh, uh, Stacey Abrams, like, she's a neoliberal, bleh. Like, it's just way more complex than that. Just like, same with Jim Clyburn. For a lot of these communities, and listen, I, I, I was uh, very critical um, about, like, South Carolina, South Carolina vote, and a bunch of brilliant uh, black authors that I personally love and I think are, are very smart were really mad at me. Um, like, some New York Times journalists and shit, they were really mad at me for what I said about South Carolina because they thought, like, I was being racist. So... I shut the fuck up and I uh, dug, uh, I mean, I, I put my head down and I listened to people. I, I talked to friends. I talked to uh, people from these communities and, and it, it is, it's way more complex. Like my, my anger for Jim Clyburn does not change the reality that he did a fuckload of work in, in, for civil rights in this country. Okay. A lot more than I ever have in my entire life. And probably ever will. And beyond that, for a lot of the, the, the relationship that uh, community, black communities have with their leaders, uh, their elected representatives, is incredibly complex. It's their only lifeline in many circumstances. So it's beyond just like black people just listen to Jim Clyburn and then go vote that way. Like it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't just work that way. Okay. But having said all that, he is, of course, still a stooge of the pharmaceutical industry. Certainly, that is. This is one of the many ways the liberals lunch left in the exact same way they punch right. Why? Over whoever is decided to be the president. Remember, just because CNN says or even Fox News says that somebody's president doesn't make them president. So I think everybody what? wants to know that this was done properly mm. and legally. What is happening? We like Trace, we've results. called it. And I think we have to look into every one of these concerns. Yeah. So and I think... What? Just, whatever, everybody what? wants to know that this was done properly mm. and legally. What is happening? We like Trace, we've results. called it. Remember, just because CNN says or even Fox News says that somebody's president doesn't make them president. So I think everybody what? wants to know that this was done properly mm. and legally. What is happening? We like, Trace, we've results. called it. And I think we have to look into every one of these concerns. Yeah, so and I think, <laughs> yeah, and I think Clayton makes a very good point there, Steve. You know, that look over. Does she not know she's on camera? Like, what happened here? Fox News pundit refused to admit Joe Biden won the election. The anchor reacts but doesn't realize she's live on air. Kratom would work great for your back pain. I'm not going to take fucking a heroin substitute, natural heroin substitute for, for fucking back pain, dude. What are you, crazy? What do you think about Warren probably not getting a cabinet position even after selling out Bernie on Super Tuesday? Um, it is, uh, unsurprising. Congrats if you had GOPers picking up seats in California for the first time cycle, for the first cycle since 1998 and Dems getting zero seats in Texas. Wow. Hats off to the NRCC and CLF Super PAC staff who didn't stop believing in off offense after plenty of pundits, including us, believe polls showing them on defense. A lot of people are going to look to this and say, it's because of defund the police. It's because of defund the police. Democrats put themselves in a horrible position when they don't have a tangible, understandable stance on what these community organizers are expecting of the representatives. Just simply saying, shut up, shut up, shut up, doesn't matter. 
You have to work with them and reframe the narrative. If you, if you just allow the right wing reactionary messaging and that, that framing to take root, then it's always going to be burning windows or, or, or burning storefronts, broken windows. And that's what the Democrats want. And that will trigger the fuck out of a lot of people in the suburbs who own small businesses and shit. Okay. That's certainly, that is certainly an issue, but that's not an issue because defund the police exists. You can't stop the streets. Like you can't stop uh, people that are organizing from a, uh, from a position of frustration. You can't do that unless you want to be a Republican, in which case, like, then fuck you go run uh, on the Republican ticket. What you have to do as a good leader. Wait, what? DCCC? Cherry Boutros plans to step down from her job as DCCC uh, chair and not seek a second term. Her decision comes after caucus infighting over the last week following a disappointing showing the election. At least seven Dem incumbents have lost with at least a few more expected to fall on election day. Bustos and other top Dems predicted Dems would expand majority. Dude, by the way, speaking of gaming and, and sleeping sleeping um the only thing i'm sleeping with is not chatter's moms but also sleeping dogs uh, a game i started last night and i'm really excited to play later today it was a lot of fucking fun um the correct lens for this is that dems won because the suburbs and defund the police is super unpopular with the suburbs i think the way to handle that is what joe biden did which was not embrace it and say we need more money for retraining etc no that's not the correct way to handle it because then it looks like you're skirting responsibility you're doing the, unironically, you're doing the Corbin take. Corbin, the biggest issue for Corbin wasn't like, oh, he's an anti-Semite. The biggest issue for Corbin was not taking a stance, a clear-cut approach to whether he wanted to get Brexit done, brav, or not get Brexit done, brav. Okay? That's the issue. So when Democrats, when the Republicans are constantly saying, Democrats are on the side of, like, destroying police and, like, killing them in the streets or whatever the fuck, and then... Joe Biden is like, no, Jack, I want to give them more money. I promise. It's like, you're not. But also at the same time, we got to listen to these folks. You're not taking a stance. You're not taking a clear cut stance. You're not taking a clear cut approach. And I think that is bad because that confuses the electorate. You understand? So what you should be doing instead is be like, absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. No one wants chaos. No one wants chaos. But what you must understand is these police budgets have grown. They are militarized to a degree that is frustrating. No one wants to see a tank roll down their fucking streets. Okay? Even, even ramp up the American exceptionalist rhetoric. Be like, well, this is not like one of the countries that we've done coup d'etats in, you know? Say that. This is not uh, El Salvador. This is America. Why do we have tanks running the streets? That sort of thing. Of course, that's not what you should say because you know, we are responsible for why... Uh, in a lot of circumstances, why that's happening in El Salvador, like literally, so. I'm a Brit and now I think about it, I have no idea what Corbyn's Brexit policy was. Exactly. Because he didn't have one. He was stuck between a rock and a hard place. And good leaders are supposed to, in times of conflict like this, Make a fucking decision and sell it. I cannot repeat this enough. Folks, here, I will show you. I, I tweeted this already yesterday. Democrats love to talk about how unpopular progressive policies are when those policies are not unpopular, while Republicans sell and push policies that are completely against the wishes of the overwhelming majority of people. 75% of the country supports Roe v. Wade. Republicans make it seem like everyone wants, uh, uh, everyone wants abortions to be criminalized. 80% want amnesty for DACA. Republicans make it seem like Americans want to fucking shoot immigrants on sight. Okay? 70% of the country also believes that we should offer a pathway to amnesty for all of the undocumented immigrants living on U.S. soil currently. It is completely against what the Republican policies are. But Republicans don't care. They run with it and they make it fucking seem like everybody likes it. 
Why can't the Democrats do that for actually popular policies that people do want? Breaking news? What the fuck is this? Senator Purdue and Loeffler just called on Georgia's Republican Secretary of State. There's a man. Sh what the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that that actual uh, source is. Don't send me shit like that. Oh, never mind. It is true. Purdue and Loeffler call for the Republican Secretary of State in Georgia to resign. The Secretary of State has failed to deliver honest and transparent elections. He has failed the people of Georgia. Yeah, because he didn't do enough voter suppression. Like, like Brian Kemp did back in the day when he was Secretary of State. Hey, it's hard to follow Brian Kemp. Been, been in close communication with the Secretary of State's office and the Attorney General's office and made sure that if there's any sort of systemic examples of fraud or voter... Uh, you know, disenfranchisement uh, across the, the voting base to, to let us know. We've not had any sort of credible uh, incidents raised to our level yet. And mm -hmm. so we'll continue to make sure that the opportunity mm -hmm. to make sure every legal ballot is counted is, is there. But, you mm -hmm. know, at this point, we've not seen any sort of credible examples. That's interesting. And just to be clear, I think everyone on earth agrees that they want every legal ballot counted and That's no right. one wants That's any right. legal ballots counted. Absolutely right. That's every single American wants that. But the question is, and I think you just said this clearly, and I'll just ask you to say it again, you haven't seen any evidence of any widespread systemic uh, voter fraud or irregularities? We've not seen any get to our office yet, and certainly we'll, we'll make sure that every sort of legal mm -hmm. opportunity to, to make sure that that's, you know, if there's, if there's an issue out there, we want to make sure we understand it, investigate it, and be able to make sure that we we're able to rectify it. But there hasn't been any, correct? We've not. Yeah, so my, uh, my office has been, been in close communication with the Secretary of State's office and the Attorney General's office and made sure that if there's any sort of systemic examples of fraud or voter uh, you know, disenfranchisement uh, across the, the voting base to, to let us know, we've not had any sort of credible... Well, that's the problem. You see, the mere mention of uh, voter suppression is, is pretty much... Uh, like, it, it, the moment you admit that voter suppression could be happening by acknowledging it, the moment you acknowledge that voter suppression could happen, if, you only got to say voter fraud. And you got to say there's probably evidence to voter fraud. And you can't fucking say it. Like, you can't be a Republican, especially in a place like Georgia, and admit or even acknowledge that, like, voter suppression might be happening. And as a matter of fact, you should always say, no, 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 voter fraud is happening, which is why we have voter suppression, which they won't call voter suppression. So, of course they're mad. Of course they're going to be mad. Yeah, uh, Donald Trump is now firing Christopher Ray, and also, wait, Gina Haspel too. What the fuck? A senior admin official tells CNN that the uh, Defense Secretary Mark Esper, whom President Trump via fi fired just, just fired via tweet, is worried that the president will fire uh, FBI Director Christopher Ray. And Yeah, that's coming. He said that he was going to do it. What do I always tell you? If you want to know what the fucking uh, the Republicans are going to do, just follow them. They will tell you. They literally tell you all the time. Pennsylvania prevented us from watching much of the ballot count unthinkable and illegal in this count country. That's not true. That's not true. This is not true. This is wrong. This is completely made up. Yeah, he did. He did get fired via. Exclusive Esper on his way out says, oh, former uh, SecDef Esper says he wasn't into the dear leader stuff when he was in charge of Pentagon telling Military Times, have you seen me on stage saying under the exceptional leadership of blah, 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 we have blah, blah, blah. Look, I can fire you or you can get Corona. It's up to you. What? Why does when I put one of your vids on 1.5 times speed on YouTube, you sound like Ben Shapiro? Maybe. What is this? Wisconsin is looking very good. It needs a little time statutorily. Will happen soon.
This is my favorite cut. This is my favorite copy pasta. Like this, these copy pastas about like I'm leaving for Mexico or I'm leaving for the UK where there's no communism. Like it, it's so funny. It, it, I mean, they're all copy pasta, but another one, David Bossy, who has been tasked with overseeing the Trump campaign's legal challenges on the election, has coronavirus. For what is happening, dude? What are they doing, dude? Those are all copy pasta, by the way. Those aren't serious, if you didn't know, because there are a lot of normies in here. If you didn't know. Republicans will literally create an imaginary scenario of systemic fraud, yet cannot acknowledge systemic racism. Who do you think will run for president as a Republican next time? Uh, I have some ideas, but we'll get to it. Okay, he's saying... Georgia will be a big presidential win as it was the night of the election. Um, yeah, Ben Carson got it too. Bro, this shit is like, it's just ripping through the ranks. I mean, they won't die. Maybe, maybe some of them might die, but like, most of them are not going to die, but it is, it is really like a, like a suicide cult, dude. It's wild. Truly wild how fucking dedicated to the cause they are. Especially for Donald Trump. Like a person who... Real Donald Trump's pig for acting sec dev is prohibited from serving because he only retired from the military six years ago. Uh-oh. A person may not be appointed a sec def within seven years after relief from active duty as a commission officer or a regular component of an armed force. Miller served in the military since 2014. Oops. Such a brain surgeon move to get COVID from not following master rules. I think Ben Carson is a great example that like, even if you have the qualifications, even if you are one of the best neurosurgeons on the fucking planet, which he is, you can still be a complete smooth brained moron. Otherwise, actually, this is not a meme. It, it, it low key might be ableist to dunk on Ben Carson. Like if you've ever listened to him talk, like he, I don't know. I, I I'm not going to diagnose him or anything like that, but I, I think that, um, I think that part of the reason is because he has a hard time communicating. Because, like, if you've ever listened to his, if you've ever listened to him talk about like how breathing works and like the synapses that fire and shit, it's it's wild. Like, he is literally a savant. Like, he is he is actually really fucking. He's really fucking good at brain surgery. Okay, you can't deny that. But. He's also brain dead otherwise. Like he, Ben Carson literally once famously said the, the slaves that were being brought over were, were the first instance of undocumented immigrants or something. What did he say? It was fucking nuts. Like, yeah, he split conjoined twins from the brain. Yeah. How the fuck do you know how good he is at being a surgeon? Because he's one of the first people to successfully fucking separate conjoined twins that were uh, uh, conjoined at the brain. That's why. When you do that, you kind of get the fucking props. Okay? They made a movie with Cuba Gooding Jr. I saw it when I was a teen. Wait, really? So hire him as secretary of housing and urban development? No, that was because he's black. That's literally because he was like black and within the proximity of Donald Trump. Like that's literally the reason that that. If you think that there was another reason for it, I will tell you right now, there was not another reason for it. He was a, he was a black conservative. And uh, so that like Donald Trump could be like, I can't be racist. I put a black guy at the head. That's literally it.
Also, I've had other surgeons in my community tell me that like surgery is kind of like being a good engineer. It means you have a steady hand, not necessarily that you're very smart. I don't know how true that is. It, if that was the case, then they wouldn't say, well, this is as complicated as brain surgery. So, um, like they, I've had surgeons in this, I've had surgeons in this community that, uh, tell me that, um, surgery is not necessarily about like knowledge, but more so about like being a good butcher, pretty much. It's like precision, having good hands. But I don't know if that's true or not. I I'm not saying that that's true. Not a good engineer, a good mechanic. Sorry, yeah. Surgeons are regarded as the dumbest fucking doctors ever. I don't know. It's like a meme. I, I feel like it's a, it's a meme. I don't know if it's copium that other doctors who couldn't become surgeons. I wouldn't trust a surgeon that watches your stream, Hossie. You'd be surprised. I have some very fucking... I have some very interesting people in here. First of all... I have a lot of I have a lot of combat medics and shit that are now uh, in medicine that are doctors and shit that are in here. So there's definitely some doctors in here. And by the way, they spam the dumbest shit. I see them when they reach out to me in the DMs, and then I know what their fucking username is, and I see them spamming fucking idiotic shit in Chatterino. I do look different. I, I do look at doctors differently. Okay, I, I, I'll admit. One of them is an offliner who literally earlier in the day was, I don't know, I'm not going to out him, but he was earlier in the day, he was spamming like, uh, 9K Andy lol, 9K Andy lol over and over again. That's a fucking doctor, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> He's just trying to have fun after a hard day at work. Yeah. Also, there's like, bro, there's fucking, you know, Trump supporting doctors and shit like these people. You can definitely be a, a complete smooth brained idiot and, and still be a doctor. I mean, my, my previous, uh, my previous doctor, my like, uh, at my primary care, my doctor also had an MBA, which is where I decided that it should be illegal to have uh, an MD and an MBA. Like, I, I literally would make it illegal because I think it's, it's completely a contradiction in values, okay? And he was, he was also one of the people that was in hospital administration, and he would literally constantly repeat, because he knew what I did for a living, he knew who I was, so he would constantly try to fucking debate Lord me, and nonstop, he would use, he would use, like, Heritage Foundation talking points like all oh, medical innovation uh, exclusively relies on like uh, American pharmaceutical industry exclusively relies on like Americans paying 10x the price for medicine and like Medicare for all would never work in this country. Like you're, you're a doctor, dude. What are you? Just, just put your finger in my ass and let's call it a fucking day. I'm going to cough. We're going to act like this never happened. He had to apologize. He like called me and apologized after. He was like, I, I don't know if it was inappropriate or not. Uh, I don't know if it was inappropriate or not, but like, I'm sorry. I wonder if he still watches me. <sighs> What's your opinion of my field? I'm a petroleum engineering in this trying time. Oh no. He apologized. He did apologize. Are you friends with Jimmy Tatro and Christian Tatum or like acquaintances since you all live in LA? I'm friends with Jimmy. I don't know who Christian Tatum is though, but I am friends with Jimmy. I've been friends with Jimmy for a while. I've, I've known him for a long time. You're exposed to some, you're exposed. Watch Hassan Pikers, a racist, prove me wrong. What? You let a fucking viewer stick two fingers in your ass. Okay. I was kidding. He, he didn't actually, uh, he didn't actually check my prostate. I'm fucking 
29. At that time, I was like 27 or, or 28 years old. That was just a joke. Wait. Cap's name is... Cap's last name is Tatum? No, it's not. No, I'm friends with... I'm really good friends with Christian. And I'm, 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 I'm friends with both Jimmy and Christian, but I don't know who the person that you were talking about. What the fuck? You're over 30? No, I'm 29 years old, man. <laughs> Say my name and I'll give you my Jeff Bezos money. Okay, fart. F for RT. <sighs> Yeah, Christian's last name is Pierce. McConnell spoke. He's on Team Coup, baby. No, he's not. Oh, these people, they, they will suffer zero repercussions. Oh, this is pretty funny. Guys, this is really good. This is really good. This is really good. So, Lord Kill Clooney criticized for racist tweet about Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. When you see what this motherfucker looks like, oh, I gave it away. God damn it. So, a member of the House of Lords, Lord Kill Clooney, has been told to apologize for referring to U.S. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris as the Indian. What happens if Biden moves on and the Indian becomes president? Who then becomes vice president, he tweeted. Miss Harris has made history as the first female, first black, and first Asian-American U.S. Vice President-elect. After the Lord Speaker called on him to retract and apologize, Lord Kill Clooney agreed to withdraw the remark. Lord Kill Clooney, ladies and gentlemen. It's just like... It's like, dude... If you are a product of inbreeding, you don't get to uh, pull out master race style rhetoric, okay? Because, like, if your face is a permanent own, if you're, if literally, just like, if I can make an argument by showing you a photo of yourself, then you don't get to do, like, white supremacist racism, Okay? You just don't. You, you can't do that. Like, this is... Northern Ireland uh, member of the House of Lords. Wait, someone said the IRA tried to assassinate him? His face looks like the grocery bags we have stuffed under the sink in the kitchen. Oh, his parliament picture is even worse. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Bro, come on, bro. You can't do that, man. Bro, he literally looks like a fucking... Like, he looks like a villain in a movie. Like, Hollywood makeup uh, artists hate him. Find out how this fucking inbred lord, this Tory nonce was able to reach a uh, facial construction that uh, makeup artists cannot recreate. Decomposed Jeremy Clarkson. Bro, he's molding, dude. He's literally, he's moldy, dude. That's why I say, by the way, that's why whenever we talk about like racism and shit in America, it's like, dude, these guys low key invented it. Like you forget that. Okay. And this guy's of course, uh, he's like Irish too. So it's, it's a unique subset uh, where he, he's like a total, uh, he's a cuck to the, to the British in a, in a very different way. I'll just say, not the kind of Irish I 
play uh, the, the sounds of at, at the top of the hour. Top of the hour, every hour. He's English. Do not say he's Irish. Yeah, okay, sorry. He's not. Dogs are, dogs are workers. He's trying to Brexit, but his neck wants to stay in the EU, LMAO. He's British. We don't claim him. So, not the jocular Irishman. It's like, it's like when we, when we talk about racism in America, like our racism is pretty, pretty bad. Obviously all racism is bad, but like ours is kind of sophomoric in comparison to the accelerated racism that they have in some of these other, some of these other European countries where they kind of. They kind of were, were like the originators, you know what I mean? And, and what I mean raised by like white supremacy. Like this man felt comfortable to say the Indian. Like when he, when he wrote about a, a leader, when he wrote about the next vice president of the United States, he said the Indian. You understand? Like you, you don't, that's, that's, <laughs> you can't do that in America, dude. Like... <laughs> Uh, it's wild. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> In response to the complaints, Lord Speaker Lord Fowler said, Lord Kill Clooney should retract and apologize. <laughs> Meanwhile, the entirety of British broadcasting were like, yeah, this is bad, but can we, can we keep talking about how racist Corbyn is? Conservative MP Simon Hoare, uh, who chairs the Northern Ireland Affairs Select Committee, also said he had submitted a formal complaint. Mr. Hoare described the message as bad, rude, racist, appalling. Who, who said he's very fond? When he originally challenged on Twitter by referring to Ms. Harris as the Indian, Lord Kilcluny claimed he had not known her name yet. Oh, okay then. So what, like when Barack Obama became president, did he just call him the N-word? Like, oh, well, I, I did not know. I did not know the name yet. Oh, I apologize. This is why he does, this is why Felix uh, Biederman does the fucking, uh, the, the, oh, I should keep reading. This is why Felix Biederman of the Chapo Trap House does the pure class uh, meta now. Let's keep going. When he was originally challenged on Twitter about referring to Ms. Harris as the Indian, Lord Kilcloonan claimed he had not known her name yet. As the controversy continued on Monday afternoon, he told PA News Agency, the first thing is to get, in, get it in perspective. The criticism is minor. The support is massive. I've never had so many Twitter followers in one day ever. I'm very fond of India myself. I'm a member of the British India All-Party Group. I have two Indians... In my flats here in London, there is nothing racist in it whatsoever. <laughs> She's proud of her Indian roots, just as Biden's proud to say he's Irish. What happens if Biden moves on and the Indian becomes president, he said. Um, in 2018, he called the Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar a typical Indian, which he later described as a mistake. An oopsie. The House of Lords Commissioner for Standards decided there would be no formal investigation in the matter. I wonder why. Guys. Guys. What you simply... This is what the Conservative Party is in this country. The Conservatives today are celebrating the ending free movement. It honestly is shocking how outwardly racist and xenophobic they are. Is, is it shocking? Why would that be shocking? Guys. Guys. You simply do not understand. You fools. You fools. Dastardly. This is as British 
as the eels that we pull from the River Thames. It's his cultural heritage. You do not understand. Not allowing this lord to be outwardly racist towards the Indian is a violation of his cultural values. <laughs> It's called heritage, not hate, my friend. Quite elementary. Simple to understand. <laughs> dude, you're such a theater kid. No, I just like accents, dude. If only the provost had hit the right spot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so they, so he, he uh, survived an assassination attempt. Is that what happened? Black supremacy is the solution? Oh, this one's gonna be good. Nice solution. You're wearing glasses, just wanted to let you know, but you are too. Why are you doing it then? Or being mobbing, I hate you. Brown supremacy, nice solution. Black supremacy is the solution. Black supremacy is the solution. Here. Here it is, dude. I just, I'm sorry. I'm punishing the entire chat for that one bad chatter here. With his uh, very clearly, I mean, he's just a sock account. I'll, I'll ban him, but oh yeah, just remember that this is the white supremacist. Just tap the. I'm gonna keep tapping this photo back and back to back. Yeah, he did it to the Irish uh, uh, prime minister, right? Dude, look at this pic of him assaulting a poor young prince. Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, what did he like try to tackle Princess Diana or something? Nope. You're right. This is, yeah. Lord Kill Clooney uh, attacking, but trying to assault Princess Diana, colorized. If you squeeze his jowl, that's how you get blood pudding. Wait, that's the secret recipe? Is goiter? Is the goiter of the lords? I never knew. It's blood pudding, bruv. He's fucking perfect, bruv. It's made from the fucking goiter of lords, bruv. This is how it's fucking done, bruv. I'll be pulling fucking eels out the river Thames later. All right, I am begging. Please stop showing this image. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Dude, Mitch McConnell's looking over. Like, god damn, my dude's got a fat neck pussy. His neck pussy got... His neck pussy got his own gravitational pull, dude. When he walks into the fucking... When he walks into his flat, his neck pussy walks in first. He must be feeding it, dude. He must be feeding that nussy. Because I've never seen one so fucking fat. It's got hang. It's got a hang to it. You know that that neck pussy changes the way you speak. No more British accents. Your British accents thinks I'm confused. All right, I turned it off. I turned it off. I turned it off. What a fucking dipshit, dude. Fuck this guy. I mean, seriously, fuck you. A built-in headrest. Anyway, what a gigantic racist piece of shit. I switched to porn when my mom walked in. Easier to explain than this. Oh, Donnie O'Sullivan, friend of the show, Donnie O'Sullivan, has a new copium video. All right, we'll take a look at that in a brief moment. Um, stop! You're losing the advanced EU racist. Oh no, dude. 
It's crazy that your Irish accent is better than the English one. It's because Snatch is my favorite movie. That's honestly why. I just try to fucking... Uh, I just try to lower the... I just try to dial back the... the um, and I don't know if this is considered hate speech or not, but the pikey uh, accent. Just a little bit. And that's how I do it. I think you do a better Scouse or Geordie accent. You just don't... Just don't try to do a southern accent. I can't do posh. Yeah, you can't say Pike, you say Gypsy. Isn't Gypsy worse? What the fuck do you mean? It's Romani, isn't it? Guys, this is uh, former Congresswoman Hi, Michelle Michael. Bachman. Uh, absolutely losing her mind. God. That you would take your iron rod, and I ask that you would or traveler, smash sorry, the I guess. clay jar of deceit in America, smash the clay jar of delusion in the United States of America, smash the delusion, Father, of Joe Biden as our president. He is not. Yeah. Would you take your iron rod and smash the strong delusion? that Nancy Pelosi does have her House of Representatives. We don't know that. Smash it in Jesus' name. Smash, Lord, the takeover of the U.S. Senate by Chuck Schumer. Lord, smash it with your iron rod. I ask... Man, I mean, how is this any different than Holy Ghost send the power? You know what I mean? Like, this is Dr. Stella Emanuel type shit. I don't know why they do this in public. Like, you should listen. Like, if you want to pray to the gods or God or whatever you believe in, and, and you want this to be, you want to, you want to bring down holy prayer, like, but don't do it in public like this in front of a camera. You're going to look like a fucking clown ass. If us Muslims done that, they'd call us radicals. Of course. But also, it is kind of fucking radical. It is. It's like, just do like prayer should be done in the privacy. Like you don't have to fucking, you don't have to beam it up to God by getting clicks uh, on your tweet or something. You know what I mean? Like, if there's an omnipotent, omnipresent being, like you can fucking like God gets good five G coverage everywhere. Okay, he's supposed to. Like there is no like oh well on Sundays if I'm at church then. You know, the church has a 5G rod that di directly telegraphs it to, uh, to God. It doesn't work that way. You don't have to do it on camera. It it's so silly. You look ridiculous. You make other, like, religious people look fucking crazy. I'll be pulling eels out of fucking River Thames. Going viral is the new indulgences. Don't call North Carolina. The moment where Rudy Giuliani pivots from telling his viewers of the presidency has been stolen by a criminal corrupt media Democrat nexus to reading a commercial for cigars as jarring as being thrown from a horse. I have no idea why they don't call North Carolina. He's ahead by 2.3%. There's 5% of the vote cast. I did the arithmetic quickly. There are 250,000 additional votes to count. I did the arithmetic quickly. <laughs> oh, that's such a, that's such a boomer take. Hold on, I did the arithmetic quickly. <laughs> oh, dude. Ay, ay, ay. For Biden to win, he'd have to win 210 of the 250,000. And they're not calling it. Tell me they're not corrupt. Tell me they're not corrupt. This is a good time to take a break. I don't know why they never called North Carolina. I thought it was a wrap. Right. If you want a good cigar, go to a good cigar shop. You want the best, go to Famous Smoke Shop. Let Famous Smoke deliver your favorite cigars right to your doorstep at America's lowest prices. That's hilarious, dude. My man, my man cut in a hashtag ad. That's so good. At least like Ben Shabibo does like a segue before he gets fully into that. That's great. That's fucking... That's, 
That's great. Famous opened in 1939 as a small shop in New York City. Today, it's the largest privately held American-owned cigar business in the country. That's 80 years experience in the cigar business, and they're putting that experience to work for you. Making deals on the cigars you love, from affordable, everyday smokes to high-end luxury cigars for your next special occasion. Go to famous-smoke.com slash Oh my God, he's doing a DR campaign, dude. That's so sad. That's so fucking pathetic, dude. Come on, dude. He's literally doing a fucking... He, he's doing a direct response campaign. Like, a, like, as in, he's getting a cut. Or he has, like, literally KPIs that he has to hit. Okay? He has to hit, like, a certain amount, and maybe he'll, like, get a percentage or some shit like that. He's got, like, the code. It's the lowest of the low uh, kind of ad that you can do. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, Privately held, thanks for the clarification, Rudy. I thought it was government-owned cigars. AOC fires warning shot at the Biden team. We must govern with integrity and accountability. Lacan McDonald's life mattered. Yo, they cannot have Rahm Emanuel, dude. They, I mean, they cannot have Rahm Emanuel. <laughs> I expect AOC, but not threats from her. No. How do they, like... How do you, if you're a content strategist, mentor for associations and nonprofits and shit, like, how do you respond to the, to the fucking white women are also products of, or, or beneficiaries of like white heteronormative, uh, uh, patriarchy when you fucking literally do this shit? Like, you can't do this. You can't be like, huh, shut up. Okay. Your threats do not work here. We need Rahm Emanuel in the cabinet. Like. Why? What do you mean? Do you have any opinion? Like, do you think Rahm Emanuel's good? He's not even fucking successful. What is the reason why you need Rahm Emanuel in the cabinet? How? Like, he wasn't good in Chicago. There's a fucking reason why he couldn't run for re-election. Okay? Why is your FASA bot exposing me for racism? Okay, dude, here, I I'll bite. What is this? Let's see what this is. Oh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, yeah, I'm a Oh, I, was, I thought there was something bad going on. Hassan Piker is a racist. Prove me wrong. Independent thoughts and words. What the fuck is this shit? What, from me, from me talking to fucking... Gianno? Is that, is that why? Yeah, I'm not gonna watch a seven minute ra a video. Motherfucker just gave that video the most hype, dude. What's the blue thing you carry? He resigned, he didn't want to run. He knew he wasn't gonna win. Of course he wasn't gonna win. He hid the murder, the police murder of Laquan McDonald. Did you watch a video from her earlier this year? Who? <sighs> Here's another AOC related lib take. Yeah, I know. I already replied to this. I'm done with you. My son who used to admire you was horrified by your behavior in the last 24 hours. You attack our allies. You attack our allies. You attack our party all because your feelings get hurt. The, through the reality that your words have been used against Democrats in purple slash red districts. Uh, I, I replied to this. I don't know if you guys were there. This is not new to me. I, I replied to it as soon as it, as soon as Kurt, uh, Kurt Hentai Eichenwald uh, posted that. It was like a couple days ago. This is old now. This is old news. But here, I'll, I'll just show you what my, what my quote tweet was so you know where I stand on this, on this matter. I said, yo, Kurt Eichenwald, this is a lot of big boy talk coming from a dude who watches tentacle porn.
Kurt Eichenwald was just looking at tentacle porn for his family. He says, after he got caught. Surprising that he didn't ban me after this. That, that was actually the real surprising part about it. That, like, he usually is trigger happy as fuck with the bans. And uh, he, he did not ban me after this, so I don't know why. Take CBD for the back pain. Don't fetish shame him. No, man, I will. What is this? Doo doo daff? Turk var me? Turk var me? Arkadashim? Turk var me? Jesus Christ. Y'all are horny, horny, dude. You have to stop. Turk var me? Turk var me? Arkadashim? Turk var me? Arkadashim? Arkadashim? She's saying, are there any Turks in here? Turkish people are the horniest uh, on, on the entire internet. Like, like people, the common trope is like against Indians, but it's false. It's actually Turkish people that are the horniest, like pound for pound. And the reason for that is because uh, porn is illegal in Turkey. All the porn sites are, uh, are closed off. So Turks are forced to uh, traverse the interwebs looking for uh, any any area where they can get their rocks off so they uh you can find them in uh any female twitch members chat saying which means are there any other turks uh, in the chat because uh, we do not simply want to experience the cooming on our own we want other turks to also be there Is porn also banned in India? She was playing Assassin's Creed Revelations takes place in Turkey, so of course it was full of Turks. That's not the only reason why the chat's full of Turks. Come to Besiktas, baby, Jofie. Back in the day when I used to play games with Daff, with Dudu, um, I would sometimes go into her chat and look, and I'm Turkish, and everybody knows I'm fucking Turkish, and literally her entire chat was Turks. These motherfuckers would, like, migrate over there and watch her instead while we're playing together. Defnabla, exactly. So she's saying, Aren't brothels legal in Turkey? Yeah. The common meme in Turkey about brothels. Brothels are legal in Turkey, for those of you who don't know. And uh, the meme there is like, Which means, if we shut down the brothels, they're going to fuck us. Uh, that's, the, that's the meme. That's what they say about... Um, government regulated brothels it's state regulated this is true a very unique land turkey is yeah azan is this true what did i hear azan makes his mom pay rent what <laughs> but that's true. his mom it's true oh my god and he doesn't pay his editors still <laughs> That's fucked. Is this game? Does this game? Is this game in like Istanbul or something? Because I, I, I could fuck around with this. I could play this maybe. Where is it I good? Going? Why can't I just walk on the roads like a normal person? I'm like jumping diagonally, walking on everything but the road. It's Constantinople during the Ottoman Empire. Really? Is shit though? Have you ever been to a brothel? Yes, I've, I've only been to a. I've only been to a brothel in uh, Germany, though. I've only been to Artemis in, in uh, Berlin. I've never been to a Turkish brothel. He also kicks a puppy every day? Yeah, true. I heard if his mom doesn't pay rent, he punches her in the face. Just like he punched me at TwitchCon. I did. I did punch her at TwitchCon. All this is true. I made art for her song once and he didn't even pay me. <laughs> uh, I love Doo Doo. She's great. Um. Anyway, 
Stop playing 45 minutes of a shitty open world game and find something better. Shut up. Sleeping Dogs is actually fucking dope. And even if I go to Valhalla, even if I play Valhalla when it comes out, uh, I will go back to Sleeping Dogs and finish it. Absolutely. Have you been to Burgine? Uh, no. Despite his abject failure to deliver Ohio for Biden and the fact that the Republican defection never materialized, Kasich is still pushing Dems to oppose progressive policies and principles and instead follow him to the Republican platform. MSM, CNN politics, this is division, not unity. Yeah. John, yo, Kasich literally went on TV and the first thing he said, <laughs> the first thing he said was, like, it's good that the Senate is controlled by Republicans. If that's not disqualifying, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know what it is. Can you imagine if AOC says some shit like that? They would never. They would rip her fucking throat. I have no idea if this is a lib take or misguided leftist, but it's a stupid take. Well, this is Zionist Orthodox, so I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that probably not leftist and mostly a uh, liberal, but who knows? Um, woke people who constantly make fun of white people food because it's bland when those foods are primarily a response to extreme poverty are actually just classist. Like, I'm not that hung up about it, but it's an example of the left's complete disregard for poor people in favor of critical race theory and their constant disregard and mockery of poor white people who raise any nuance from the politics. Yeah, this shit sucks. Uh, this shit absolutely sucks ass and also is hilarious because a big part of the reason why fucking like black people food is so fucking spicy is literally because they had to they had to make do with some of the the worst parts of the animal that like other people wouldn't fucking eat. So insane take from this guy. Okay. Yes, originally spices are very expensive, I understand, but we don't live in the fucking 18th century, or we don't live in the fucking 16th century. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Fucking people from Bengal would like to talk to this guy. No, that shit is, is just crazy. Why are you extending on take a rando? Sometimes it's fun to just like fucking uh, laugh at these like silly takes. There was another one that I'm not going to elevate. But there was another take that I saw on the timeline earlier. It's like these are Tumblr takes, okay? This is what happens when Tumblr is unshackled and they ban porn on Tumblr. So all those people that used to jerk off to whatever the fuck they were jerking off to on Tumblr came to Twitter and now they just literally just pollute the timeline with some of the worst takes and they get like 60k retweets and shit half the time it's nuts um and and sometimes it's really fun like the witch stuff i really personally appreciate i love that shit they're all, all over tiktok too i'm a big fan of the witch stuff uh and and like crystal twitter i'm a big fan of for other reasons you already know but like there's some tumblr like woke tumblr takes can go horrifically wrong or really funny and there was another one that I'm not going to elevate, but there was a, uh, a, a black trans person that wrote about how junk food is anti-black and anti-fat. It's, it's fat phobic to declare food to be junk food and that um, people still, still need uh, fats and carbs in a healthy diet. It's probably the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm not going to do the fucking pile on because, like, again, these are so marginal and so silly you understand these are silly takes so i'm not an anti-sjw who like harps on these silly takes for uh, hours and endlessly pontificates on them and makes it seem like these incredibly marginal tumblr andy fucking takes are representative of like the overall progressive cause or anything uh, and and i think that that's that doing that is not helpful it's silly. You just say you're a silly bitch and you move on. Okay, that's it. So I am... I don't really... Do they misunderstand the concept of unhealthy trans fats? Uh, thoughts that tension between Greece and Turkey? I have no thoughts on that. 
You used to watch rising videos a lot, and I, now I never see you watch them. I still do. Why did you stop? I think Sagar's takes are so fucking bad. Like, I, 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 I reply to him from time to time, but I just, I can't. Like, I can't do it. He's such a Tucker simp. Like, I can't do it. And, and, like, it's just, I don't know. I, I really, I, I just can't do it. I, I literally can't do it. I stopped. Anyway, um, but also, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and NBs, it's time again. It's time for the 60 second contractual obligated ad break for you. If you would like to experience an ad free broadcast, then all you need to do is subscribe with your Twitch Prime, which is free, or with a $5 a month subscription. That's all you need to do, but a 60 second ad break is coming for you. There's also other means to avoid an ad, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you. And now we're going to be moving on to some other shite. We're going to do Donny O'Sullivan. Uh, the, this is from the Court of Appeals in the state of Michigan. Donald Trump's legal team cannot even file appeals the right way. They have reached shit show level of legal competency at this point. This is the most basic of tasks, filing an appeal accordingly. I regret to inform you that your submission is defective because it was not accompanied by the following. Mitch McConnell coughed several times through his Senate floor remarks. Now Chuck Schumer is up coughing. He just had to stop for several seconds to clear his throat. Nice. Uh, does anyone have the Mitch McConnell? Does anyone have the Mitch McConnell video, by the way? Uh, I, I want to see not him coughing, but. Oh, here, let's watch some copium. How are these dumbasses around for four years? Mitch McConnell's been around for a lot longer than that. Just thought you would want to know. Kamala Harris's family comes from a long line of Tamil Brahmins in India who have amassed generational wealth by exploiting lower caste Dalits for generations. The Indian left hates her. Really? I think that like, I mean, I don't know how much like that level of, of like intergenerational oppression uh, comes through when you're, when you're an immigrant living in America is like a first generation immigrant. I, I don't. Maybe it does, though, I, but I truly don't know. Oh, Fox News Jordan uploaded. News. Oh, here, I don't want the whole thing. Here it is. McConnell acknowledges the election led victories, GOP senators and House members, but for presidential races, he says no states have yet certified their election results. And President Trump is 100% within his right to. Yeah, this is, this is a concession. What he's doing is basically what uh, Mitt Romney did earlier. You're not going to get anything more than this. This is, not, this is not backing Donald Trump. So it's time. Let's talk about where we are now according to preliminary results voters across trying to cope because you come from international wealth you mean intergenerational wealth yeah i, I do uh, i come from a a long line of well not a long line but at least uh every generation in both pikers and yugers have amassed a fuckload of wealth and then literally all lost it every single time it is the piker curse which gives me a, a significant upper hand, a significant advantage and a significant upper hand. My affluence is, uh, my affluent beginnings are, are absolutely uh, something that I talk about very openly. The piker, I don't even think it's a curse, to be honest. I think it's, it's great. They, uh, my grandfather uh, made a fuckload of money and then lost it all. Literally just lost all of it before my father came of age. Uh, and then he made a lot of money and then he lost it all uh, by the time I was out of high school. It's something that I don't think, uh, it's something that I don't think I should uh, hide at all. Did he spend it on brothels? No, they like spend it really stupidly. Like they just, they were very wasteful and looked for and looked for shortcuts i think to like 
You're just like my Italian family. Lose money, make money. Same with on the other side. Same with uh, my, my grandfather and my mother's side. Fuck load of money. Commercial real estate loses it all. And the, uh, and the housing market crash. But not even directly related to... Like, he got duped in. He got like suckered into some fucking crazy... How do I describe? No, 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 not like yachts and shit. No, they, they were never that rich. What the fuck? The point is that rich Indians have the ability to immigrate to the U.S. Haha. -ha. There are exceptions, of course, with the wealth disparity between upper caste and lower caste Indians are very high. I would somewhat compare to the systemic racism in the U.S. Yes. I forget who wrote a book about this recently comparing the caste system to looking at our is that why you're so frugal no because one of the lessons instilled in me at an early age as probably a consequence of coming from uh, a, a relatively affluent beginnings was that um you should do what you love as long as it's in one of those important professions like a uh, golden bracelet professions like a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor but um but that message was instilled in me early on that uh, if you do what you love, you never, it won't ever feel like you're working. Uh, that kind of cliche. But, um, frugal, you wear expensive shoes. What? That's a meme, right? That guy's me that guy must be memeing, right? I wear vans. Like very famously, I only wear vans. Well, it doesn't even matter. Uh, th this notion that like this notion is that this notion that like leftists need to be living in uh living in dirt huts is idiotic. It's silly. Uh again, do you have a deed to the factory? You, you sit here and you defend capitalism, yet you have no factory and no deed for a factory, so uh, shut your fucking mouth. Okay, do you, do you own capital? No. The only, the only thing that you own that you could, be, you could even consider fucking capital is your hand-me-down Honda Civic from your older brother, and you're over here, like, defending, defending oil barons and shit. Factory reveal. <sighs> yeah. Sometimes leftists do that right wing uh, uh, communism meme. It's so dumb. The uh, nation elected. Oh, the book is Cast the Origins of Our Discontent by Isabel Wilkerson. Um, and also that book, I mean, there's a little bit of a problematic element to it with, uh, with its regard for Native Americans, as far as I understand, but overall, it's a pretty good. Oh, shit. Oh, I did get an Assassin's Creed code. Okay. I just got it. And reelected Republican senators to a degree that actually stunned prognosticators. Likewise, the American people seem to have reacted to House Democrats' radicalism and obstruction by shrinking the Speaker's majority and electing more Republicans. And then there's the presidential race. Obviously, no states have yet certified their election results. We have at least one or two states that are already on track for a recount. And I believe the president may have legal challenges underway in at least five states. The core principle here is not complicated. Hold on one second. Let me just open the you playing stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll plug the code away while I, I'll gear up for it on the background while we just keep doing it. Okay. Can this man just eat it already? Nope. Um, wait, why is it not turning on though? I don't get it. Oh, here it is. Dun, 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 dun. Come out, ye black and tans. 
No, nothing leaked. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always gotta do this shite. I always gotta do this fucking shite. Nothing. And I mean nothing. Leaked. So shut the fuck up. In the United States of America, all legal ballots must be counted. Any I illegal ballots must not be counted. The process should be transparent or observable by all sides, and the courts are here to work through concerns. Our institutions are actually built for this. We have the system in place to consider concerns, and President Trump is 100% within his rights to look into allegations of ir irregularities and weigh his legal options. Yeah, just like he did after he won. If you remember, if, if you remember, um, if you recall, uh, Donald Trump literally did this with um, the election in 2016, he won, and yet he still claimed, with zero evidence once again, that there were illegals that voted for Hillary Clinton, and that's why he actually uh, ended up, uh, that's why he actually ended up uh, losing the popular vote. So he wasn't just a sore loser, he was also a sore winner. So none of that is all that shocking if you know Donald Trump. And Mitch McConnell here isn't necessarily doing what you think he's doing. What you think he's doing is, you know, defending Donald Trump. But the fact that he's not defending Donald Trump unconditionally here is just, it's just bore, it's basic. It's a wrap. He's just saying like, oh, he's got every right to, he's got every right to, uh, you know, launch legal battles. Like that's, that's uh, regular Mitch McConnell shit. More Arco, Purdue, and Loeffler are calling. Yeah, we already talked about that earlier. Would you consider how the Green New Deal is imperialism because of how it would require to displace farmers and people from their homes in South America to install solar panels and stuff? Wait, what? It would require to displace farmers and people from their homes in South America to install solar panels? What? Are you saying that, like, offering jobs to... Offering jobs to people uh, from... South American countries is considered to be imperialism? What? Yeah, I can't do that. I, it, that one is so crazy. I don't know how to... I, I don't know where that is. There is a Trump press campaign happening soon with Kaylee McEnany. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that in a, in a second, but apparently this is... <laughs> Here is uh, I'm really Sarkak. It's, uh, no, I really look forward to it. Because I, I, I just genuinely think it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, right, I don't even have any cope prepared. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> like, I don't have anything. You know, if Trump doesn't win, then, okay, my powers of observation are terrible. No, they don't mean southern states. I think they're talking about mineral extraction from, like, countries like Bolivia and, and Chile. I think that's that's what they're saying. Um right? Because it requires it it literally requires like a fuckload of lithium production and in a, in order God damn it, everything fucking closed. Shit. I don't know how the fuck I did that. Which again, if done ethically, is something like the thing I don't understand, the, the thing I don't understand is like when people have this take, are they basically like anti-trade or are they basically like, what does this mean? Really? Like, are you, are you against fucking trade altogether? Like, are you against extracting minerals and extracting resources in general? Like, isn't that, isn't that kind of like an end prim take a little bit? That makes no sense to me. International cooperation has to occur no matter what. It's just about how you do that. Like, it's like, oh, well, there shouldn't be division of labor because, you know, some people are going to be doing less fulfilling jobs.
Like, of course, of course we're going to fucking extract uh, minerals from all around the planet. Doing that in a way that does not destroy, like, uh, the land that indigenous people hold sacred and, and doing that in an ethical way is, is what we should be looking uh, to focus on. That's what we should be focusing on, not just being against it. It's so silly. Like, it's like being upset at commodity production under capitalism does not mean you're upset at commodity production altogether. You're upset at the way that commodity production occurs and, and how, how your, your, uh, the surplus value of your labor is extracted and utilized. That's the issue there. Not necessarily commodity, produc commodity production itself. You can't be anti-production. Fucking insane. But that's almost impossible. Yeah, here's another thing that's also impossible. Fucking stopping extraction of natural resources or, or minerals altogether. Literally impossible. It's gonna happen no matter what. Oh, okay, bro. You don't get it. Bring me up. No, fuck off. I'm not gonna bring you up for your fucking random weirdo tanky take about, like, fucking lithium production in Bolivia. Like... Under the Green New Deal in front of fucking 50,000 people? Yeah, no, of course, random person. Let me just bring you up, dude. Let me beam you up, Scotty. No, I'm not going to do that. Here's what we're going to do instead. Watch this fucking MAGA copium. But before we do that, Judah is saying that uh, coping MAGA tweets are, be uh, are funny, but we need to move beyond 4chan culture. Oh, damn. Now it's the other side's glow. On the right, the images come to represent what conservatives and racist Trump supporters see as the Democratic Party's inability to face reality. They thought Hillary Clinton was inevitable. But it was the fact of the dawn of a reactionary age with no clear end in sight. More than anything, it was an easy way to twist the knife in the Trump era when people continue to resist policies. Now it's the other side's turn to gloat and twist the knife. No account captures the moment in a more satisfying way than coping MAGA tweets. Cope has become a ubiquitous term after the election to describe the reactions from Republicans. If you search for Cope compilation on YouTube, all the results are left-wing YouTubers collecting the reactions of far-righters, far-right-wingers who are devastated by Trump's loss. But Cope looks like varies. It's all about the outsized emotional reaction. Cops crying is Cope. Ben Shapiro, who owns his fame to YouTube videos of him owning liberals, saying that the left should be tolerant of him, is Cope. Rudy Giuliani impotently decrying the media outside of Four Seasons Total Landscaping is absolutely Cope. People on 4chan who are decrying that a degeneracy, that degeneracy won are Cope. QAnons who thought Trump would literally win all 50 states are coping right now, including Tim Pool, by the way. The image of democratic defeat is one the protesters are screaming no, and the image of MAGA humiliation is Pepe the Frog or Trump himself hooked up on an oxygen mask that is instead of him providing him with copium. We saw an opportunity to account, make an account to immortalize all of it like they did us in 2016 when Trump won. The two people behind the account told Motherboard. This morning, the account was suspended. In reality, the racist 4chan users who are currently coping never had the numbers to control our culture or chart its future. One of the biggest mistakes the media has ever made is continually highlighting these people and imagining their influence to be more powerful than it actually is. This is true. Trying at this moment to celebrate Trump's defeat by using their language with their memes is simply replacing a crying liberal with a crying conservative. Yeah, I'm, I still like it, though. I still like it. I'm, I'm probably going to keep doing it. Stop the immoral, immoral extraction of copium. Hashtag Green New Deal. I'm from Latin America. We tried the whole no trade thing with import substitution and we just don't have the resources or infrastructure to stop trade even if it's exploitative towards us. Yes, the Western world knows this and they rely on this uh, inappropriate balance of power that they have. You should win an Olympic gold medal for your mental gymnastics. Oh, an SJW Christmas is back. <laughs> I love this. You almost never have women on your stream to express their political opinion. You have 99% man. You are a patriarchal rape apologist. <laughs> this is, this is like a fucking, either this is one of you guys that 
I haven't been paying enough attention to, so you created a sock account. Or one of those, like, 4chan fucking trolls that makes, like, a SJW account. It's pretty funny. The hilarity is, I literally have more women than men on this stream. Like, they never talk about, like, Doo Doo Daphne or Adept or any number of different... Uh, people I play video games with regularly, Margo. Like, it's literally just, I mean, this is, is silly anyway. There's no reason to talk about it. But people who do think that or people do, who do get mad at that sort of shit in a serious capacity. And there are, there are people that um, get seriously upset about shit like that. Just regularly, regularly tell on themselves for not fucking watching the stream Anyway, stop with the blue Theracane, get an inversion table, it will get you... I will let you coom in my mom and dad fix your back? Jesus Christ. Alright, let's watch this. Copium. Trump is still your president! It's legal for them to count votes and... What do you have women speaking about political issues on? Um, because I don't like it. I don't want to hear it. No. I ask a bunch of people on. Some of them are female. Some of them are male. I'm not going to call them out, but some of them are busy and they don't want to come on. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Pennsylvania, two days after the election on November 3rd? Yes. You're wrong. Go. I don't even want to talk to you. I believe that Donald Trump... You, so you use the information... That's so messed up. Like, the fact that people prey on these delusional humans, that makes me kind of sad. I mean, it's still pretty funny that uh, you got to be really heavily motivated. And this happened, like, Look, I'll, I'll talk about it from my point of view. There was a person that I wanted to win the primaries. His name was Bernie Sanders. And there was a lot of people while I was covering the primaries that used to come in here. And I'm not talking about Iowa specifically because Iowa's fucking uh, caucus uh, process is so garbage that it made national news. But when we were talking about Massachusetts, for example, there was a lot of people that came in here during that time to say, well, the Massachusetts exit polls are so different. It's like an eight-point disparity between, like, uh, what, the, uh, what the actual elections look like. That's exactly what you're doing? The pega? No. And what did I tell those people? I said, no, you're being fucking ridiculous. And the reason for why I said, no, you're being fucking ridiculous is because... While I personally, of course, wanted Bernie Sanders to win, there are certain processes that you really can't rig in the United States of America that are, like, very difficult to, to rig. You realize this will allow them to rig the next election, right? What do you mean? What? Guys. Guys. America's elections... You can say maybe they're not fair and free by looking at, uh, by looking at like the media coverage or things like that. But as far as like the back end goes, it's pretty fucking transparent. Like I come from a country where it's not necessarily as transparent. And I can tell you the, the, the institutions that uh, deal with it outside of like actual voter suppression and electoral fraud before the elections like, that's one thing. That shit is also legalized to a certain degree. And they do it in front of your eyes, and that stuff is disgusting. But as far as counting votes and stuff, well, that, that stuff is pretty fucking transparent in comparison to the rest of the world. And, and I would even compare it to, like, the developed world. Not just, um... Not just, uh... 
uh, many different uh, countries that are not as developed. And, and, and what I mean by that is like, you don't have, they had fucking poll watchers in the rooms. They had journalists in the fucking rooms live streaming the entire process. Like when they do something that is corrupt, when they do something that's corrupt, they do it in front of your fucking eyes. Like we, we often look to, you know, Eastern countries here in America in our, in our endless uh, Western exceptionalist attitudes and say, wow, bribery, like you can do bribery in, in fucking India or, or Pakistan. Meanwhile, we have legalized bribery in the form of, of campaign contributions. So, and, and lobbyist jobs, right? So in America, our process of corruption is legal and in front of your eyes. And even with all of those hurdles that you put in front of people to go out and, and to make it harder for them to go out and vote, even with all of those hurdles, if you still can't win, and you're being a little ridiculous, okay? No, you're lying. How can you count a ballot with both hands without using one to count? It's all bullshit. Wait, what? ...of the election right? The video actually showed... But if you question everything, why don't you question Donald Trump? When people say, question everything, they just mean like, don't question my side, I'm gonna question everything on your side. This is what, what always tilted me about skeptics, right? Like the skeptic YouTubers that, that went from like being anti-Bush and, 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 and they're in all of their endless, like anti-theist takes turned all of their fucking, uh, interests onto Islam and Muslims. And now the Muslim hordes were coming in and they kept having this like approach where it's like, well, I'm just, I'm just questioning everything. Like, no, you're not. You're literally spoon feeding your audience state department propaganda that literally justifies endless warfare in these regions without looking at the underlying material consequences of, of never-ending bloodshed and destabilization. No, you're not questioning shit. You're just not questioning anything. Like, you're, you're, you're literally getting information spoon-fed from one side and, and regurgitating it immediately. Sample ballots, not real ballots. The video's assertion is false, but even the president's son tweeted it to his millions of followers. Election officials in Virginia, where the sample ballots were from, That's what AOC does, question everything Trump supporters do. Now she's trying to try to lock up anyone that supported Trump. That chick has lost her mind. How much LSD did she take when Trump lost? Man, you're talking about LSD when you think a fucking congresswoman in the United States of America? is actively trying to lock up every Trump supporter? Are you fucking insane, dude? Yo, what kind, what kind of drugs are you on, my guy? That's not a real thing, you fucking idiot. Who the hell lied to you that hard that you... What? ...told CNN they had spent days trying to... Tim Pool said that thing about AOC? No, really? No, dude, that's not a real thing, okay? Correct the online misinformation. If you're gonna lie, be be- My buddy, Steve Bannon. Ugh. Believable about it. Because you do not have 138,000 votes come in and 135,000 of them come in for Biden. This is what I think you guys might have been talking about on, on election night, Michigan, 138,000. This was from a website called Decision Desk HQ. They came out and they said, 
we messed up, there was an error in how votes came back and reported, yeah. and that's why there was this spike in the map. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the election officials uh, in Michigan then all confirmed to say, yes, there was this error, they are not real ballots, those ballots never existed. President Trump himself even shared a post about the Michigan error. Twitter labeled his post as misinformation. Are you concerned that just as how people on the left can fall for misinformation, that maybe sometimes you... Oh, I'm sure, yes. Uh, there Globalist NPC for president. Dude. Dude. When you dress up this way, you're literally not owning anybody but yourself, dude. I'm sorry to tell you this, brother, but like... Like, let's think about this for a second. Okay, he's... Like, my guy went on Amazon, okay, on mommy's credit card and purchase one of those like suits, uh, the, the green screen suits, but gray. He then fashioned a, a pyramid type, like, like a cosplayer. Like he went and he fucking made one of those like pyramid things that he could wear on top of his head. Then he maybe even went out and bought a suit, a gray suit. I think that's a lamp. Yeah. Okay. It's a lampshade, but he turned that into a hat basically. Okay. Like at some point in that process, you should have been like, when you're putting on the clown makeup, you should have been like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what am I, is it worth it? Is this fucking worth it? When you were just, when you're just putting the fucking suit on at some point when you were driving over to a, a Trump rally to demonstrate at some fucking point, you should have been like, what the fuck am I doing? When you looked in the rear view mirror and you caught a glimpse of what you look like, you should have said, perhaps this is not the best decision. You don't look normal when you do this. You don't look nihilistic and like edgy when you do this. You look like a fucking clown. And everybody around you knows you look like a clown. You're basically just saying, I am a clown. Look at how fucking clownish I am. Like he's like, oh dude, everyone is sheep. What the fuck are you, dude? Oh, no, I believe that Biden stole the election. And poor Donnie, dude. He just fucking keeps sending him out. Look at him. A winner. Look at how out of place he looks in this crowd. He's just like uncomfortable around these fucking hogs, dude. They're just like, go. Just go and, and stick a fucking camera and, and microphone in these people's faces. And put yourself at great risk for our content desires. To their belief that we're mailed in. Well, uh, why are we finding them laying? Wait, the Trump ballots were not mailed in because Donald Trump literally told his supporters, like, the question here is, did you mail your ballot in? And he's going to say, no. And he's like, well, there you go. That's your answer. Millions and millions of Trump supporters like yourself just did not take advantage of the early voting and the ease of access to voting because Donald Trump told you not to. As a matter of fact, there were people in the Republican Party at the time who kept saying to Donald Trump, don't do this because this is going to have a negative consequence. You're, you are basically stopping yourself. You are basically stopping your supporters from easily voting. No, there were people in the Republican Party who said this, like people at Utah, people in the Republican Party in Florida, people in Republicans in states where they already take advantage of mail-in ballots literally were the reason why uh, Donald Trump changed his rhetoric from all mail-in ballots are illegal to, okay, it's only illegal if Democrats do it. They kept telling him, like, you're, you're cocking yourself. And he did. Around. Okay, let's go to the Trump presser right now. Who has, is any, is any of the, are any the of the outlets covering it? We're senior research director for the president. Nope. Is it just right side broadcasting that has it? Uh, in, in a completely That's so unconstitutional silly. fashion. 
Perhaps it's because she has motive. In fact, she has shown her partisan hatred tweeting this. Using the title, quote, president before the word, quote, Trump, really just means the office of the presidency. We see where her motives stand. And finally, a mere survey of the facts shows that voters in blue counties like Philadelphia County were given certain privileges that voters in red counties were not afforded. The Constitution's Equal Protection Clause requires uniform standards, but Democrat election officials created disparities depending on where citizens lived and where they voted in the state. Some counties set up satellite offices for backdoor early voting, whereas other counties did not. Some counties allowed pre-canvassing where other counties did not. Voters in some counties were allowed to cure their ballots, whereas voters in other counties were not. What Pennsylvania has done is provide a case study into how to tip the scales of an election to functionally favor the Democrat Party. This has gone on nationwide. And I'll leave you with this. In DNC versus Wisconsin State Legislature, in another attempt to count late ballots that arrived after the election, Justice Gorsuch wrote, nothing in our founding document contemplates the kind of judicial intervention that took place here, nor is there precedent for it in 230 years of the court's decisions. He went on to say, no one doubts that conducting a national election amid a pandemic poses serious challenges. But none of that means individual judges may improvise with their own election rules in place of those the people's representatives have adopted. They have taken a global pandemic and turned it into a nationwide electoral epidemic. They have taken, uh, based on what they call a natural disaster, they have used that and turned this into a national disaster. And with wow. that, I'll turn it over to Matt Morgan, General Counsel for the Beautifully case. written, beautifully written. Thank you, Kaylee. That's eloquent as fuck, dude. They turned a natural disaster to a national disaster. Tabulation and canvassing continues across the United States. And today in the United States District Court for Bro, the- Bro, they are so, I'm sorry, but they're such broke boys, dude. Like, you can just smell the broke on them right now. Like, everything is fucking falling apart. Pretty much everything is falling. Wait, Fox cut away? Oh my God. Oh my God. Fox cut away. Fox News just cut away from the press sex saying the network could not in good conscience continue to air her false claims for which she has provided no supporting evidence. Oh my God, dude. That's so bad. Their moral is low. Now their morale is low. Now they have less flags. Oh yeah. Did you already talk about Trump fire secretary of defense, Mark Esper? Yeah, uh, briefly. God damn, dude. What, they're, what are they doing? Fox News is socialist now. Fox News is socialist. By the way, don't ever, 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 ever let this fool you into thinking that Fox News is your friend. Never forget the reason why this brain cancer is so successful in America, especially in the 70 million psychopaths that voted for Donald Trump is literally because of Fox News. Do not forget that. Don't fall into these, don't fall into the fucking trap that like we want this, this comfortable neoliberal center to come back with like, you know, Republicans just agitating to go further and further right and like Democrats conceding to them. That is the goal. That is the purpose. Do not believe any of that shit. Dragon Llama, thank you for the 50 big ones, Dragon Llama. My God. All right, let's keep watching this for a little bit. To certify the results before they were completely tabulated or canvassed so that we can obtain that meaningful review and discern within those 682,000 ballots at least, and there may be more throughout the state, whether or not there was disparate treatment for Republican voters and Democrat voters in the states uh, and whether Democrat voters were disproportionately allowed to cure or fix their ballots in some locations in the state and not others. And for example, even at a minute level here today, we are very close. Bro, this very guy's very got that Charlie Kirk face. Everything they're saying is a lie, by the way. This guy's got that Charlie Kirk face. You know what I'm saying? Like way too tiny for his dome. Like, it's just like mushed. What happened? So this is what did they do? Did they go like this? But I would also urge the press and those out there. Well, when he was first born, they went whoop, whoop. And they just mushed it in. Never underestimate the length the left will go to take control. But that being said, never underestimate the real Donald Trump. It's not over.
Small face versus little head fight. Where's your evidence that he's lying? Bro. He's the one who's making up the shit. He's the one who's supposed to give evidence, you idiot. Not me. He's the one making the claims. The fuck do you mean? Disprove his false uh, uh, claims. Like, he's the one making a claim, you idiot. You can't, okay. If you believe him without any evidence, then you must also believe me. There you go. Um, my take is that this election is completely legitimate. That's it. Evidence that he's the one making the claim? The fuck do you mean? Like, here, here is the, here is the evidence that you need in this circumstance. Numerous lawsuits have been launched about the things that they're talking about. Every single one of them has been dropped. Okay? That's it. What, what do you want? That's the evidence, okay? The American legal system that is literally padded, filled to the goddamn brim with Republican Ghostbuster judges is not able to do what the Trump administration needs because it's so fucking insane that even they're like, I want to do this for you, but I literally can't. no matter where you are on the political spectrum. Um, a, 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 in addition to that, we've heard hundreds of in instances of election workers who were verbally accosted, our, our poll they verbally accosted our poll watchers and refusals to let them challenge questionable ballots. Election workers were wearing Biden t-shirts and applauding when our poll watchers were kicked out. Uh, imagine volunteering and going and spending your night because you care so much about the integrity of the election and then to be kicked out and to be cheered as you are leaving this does not instill confidence yeah, in they're our democracy. Mad they, they... and these are good people i know most of these people uh, of the few ballots that democrat election workers did allow us to challenge our observers say those ballots were then moved back into the regular pile after our poll watchers were intimidated and pushed from the process there is a canvas for a reason. There is a certification process for a reason. And unlike Election Day, we need these processes to be transparent. Already in Detroit, we are hearing incidents, and we will have affidavits to this effect of people not being able to meaningfully canvas and discrepancies that we're seeing in Detroit specifically. So just after a week after the polls closed, hey, the Democrats and the media. Detroit specifically, where all the black people live, just by the way. And the certification and canvas process. We're hearing we need to unite. We need to come together. Well, for the thousands of people who spent time and hours going out to be part of this process, who feel disenfranchised, who don't feel like there was transparency, we can't do that unless we, ser we search out all these irregularities. Even one instance, even one instance of voter fraud should be too many for all of us. We intend to ensure that every lawful voter has their vote counted in accordance with the law, that observers are granted the access they are due under state law, and that any irregularities that have occurred, whether by malicious intent or incompetence, are investigated to the fullest extent allowed under the law. We will not give up on this process until every last issue has been uncovered. The RNC has deployed legal teams in multiple states to investigate clear irregularities with voting, counting, and tabulation. And we will work with state and local authorities to ensure that a legal count is conducted in accordance to each state's laws and that every vote is counted. If the shoe were on the other foot, if it were this close the other way, if President Trump was in the lead in all these states, and the media would be screaming, this isn't over, the race isn't over, we need more time to count and make sure it's right, but because it's Biden and a very slight lead, the media demands the race is over and there's nothing to see here. The American people need to have confidence in their elections. There are over 150 Americans who voted in this election and they deserve to know that their votes were counted accurately. Right now, and I can say this as I'm hearing calls there are 150 million Americans that voted, okay? And you're stressing about six votes. So what's up? Like, what, what, what is that? Like, how, how do you do that then? How do you do the math? Like, all of the legitimate claims that they've made is like six votes or five votes. There was one in Georgia where a fucking counting error 
actually ended up being corrected and offering Biden 6,000 extra votes. Or instead of 3,000, gave Biden a 6,000 uh, vote lead. Please visit so what's up? Fox cut away saying they needed more details to back up their claims. Vote well, 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 I, I just think we have to be very clear that she's charging uh, the other side is welcoming fraud and welcoming illegal voting. Unless she has more details to back that up, I can't in good countenance continue showing you this. I want to make sure that maybe they do have something to back that up. But that's an explosive charge to make that the other side is effectively rigging and cheating. Uh, if she does bring proof of that, of course, we'll take you back. So far, she has started saying right at the outset, welcoming fraud. Well, hey, remember when I... Remember when I said, like, where is the evidence? Well, turns out Fox News has the same opinion as well. Imagine having the same opinion as a fucking leftist Twitch streamer that you despise. Coming from the, the outlet that your parents have been brainwashed by has the same fucking take because the claims are so outrageous. They must be socialists now. I guess that's what it is, huh? No, I, I will I will watch the Boo Boo Poo Poo Bennett video, yes. Eastern District of Michigan. That is via affidavit. Um, if you look at the recent lawsuit, and Mike Reed can get you the information on this lit lawsuit, let me just share. An election employee with the city of Detroit working at a polling location for three weeks prior to the election, this city of Detroit employee directly observed on a daily basis other city of Detroit election workers and employees coaching voters to vote for Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. This employee witnessed these workers and employees encouraging voters to do straight Democrat ballot and witnessed these election workers and employees going over to the voting booths with voters in order to watch them vote and coach them who to vote for. During the last two weeks, while this same employee was working at the polling location, she was specifically instructed by her supervisors never to ask for a driver's license or any photo ID when a person was trying to vote. And as absentee ballots that existed were, all absentee ballots that existed were required to be input into the QVF system by 9 p.m. on November 3rd, 2020. This was required to be done in order to have a final list of absentee voters who returned their ballots prior to 8 p.m. on November 3rd, 2020. In order to have enough time to process the absentee ballot. Rahm Emanuel's brothers on the COVID task force? Ezekiel Emanuel, Rahm's brother who argued in his 2019 essay that life should end at 75 because life after that age is no longer productive and may involve disability, is joining the Biden-Harris team? I did not even know that there was another Emanuel brother. I knew that there was an Emanuel brother, Ari. Specifically, uh, you might know him from the popular television show Entourage's Ari Gold. That one is my favorite Emmanuel, of course, uh, who happens to own the agency that I am represented by. Uh, full, discro full disclosure. In the interest of full disclosure. Um, I think you guys understand that that has not necessarily guided my um my criticisms or my perspective on Rahm Emanuel who I believe should be pushed away from the political arena with a big stick just like literally just go away or maybe with like a with like a like a water bottle just spraying him with water whenever he comes near uh, uh politics that that's my opinion on it uh, despite that other fact that I just uh, mentioned Dr. Emanuel is my pediatrician, really? I voted for Trump, but these people were crazy. It wasn't rigged, and I don't care that Biden is president and all these Trump supporters are crazy. Ari Gold is your agent? No, he's not my personal agent. You're a liar and voter fraud is happening. Didn't you see Crowder's video of the ballots? You're in denial if you believe that you finished ES3. Oh, come on! Why do I read these takes? I'm done. I'm done, dude. I'm fucking done. It's English, Peter, what the Lord. It's top of the earth. And every 
It's seven the hour. Every hour is a time for a 60 second ad break. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going back to the presser. But if you would like to watch an ad free broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe with a tier one subscription for $5 or with your Twitch Prime for free. How could you do it for free with your Twitch Prime? Well, all you need to do is connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and you get one free Prime subscription once a month. Here's the ad, ladies and gentlemen. It's running now. Somehow, the city of Philadelphia knew, knew which ballots had inner secrecy envelopes and did not, and were telling voters ahead of time, hey, you may not have included your inner secrecy envelope. You need to get in here and vote a provisional ballot and, and get that fixed. But that was only happening in Philadelphia, but not in, that was not happening in the rest of the state because the state law discourages that. So as Democrats were disproportionately voting by mail, they were disproportionately picking up those added votes in the city of Philadelphia. Let me say one final thing. There were 682,479 ballots counted in Philadelphia, in Allegheny County, that there were no poll, poll watchers allowed to watch. It's the job of the media to ask the question why, because all we are asking for is truth, transparency, and sunlight here. That is. Yeah. Okay. Shut the fuck up. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Of course. By the way. By the way. Um, this presser is over, and guess what? I have a fucking awesome, spectacular guest coming on right now, back by popular demand. Um, Osita, ladies and gentlemen, he's here. You've asked for it. Your calls have been answered. What's up? What's up, Osita? Hold on. Let me just turn on your camera right here. Why is it not working? There it is. What's going on? Can you hear me? I can. How are you? Can you hear me? All right. Yes, you, I can hear you perfectly. Awesome. Osita, you awesome. recently wrote an article for the New Republic, uh, and uh, I assume you're going to want to talk about that, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, it, it dropped while I was still streaming, so I, I'm not even fully familiar with what you wrote in the article, but um, I, I assume it's good because you only have good takes. Yeah, 99.9% .9 of my takes are good. I'm still working on that 0.1%. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, the article I just ran, I don't know if we talked actually before I wrote the, the one I wrote last week too, just is my, my take on the election overall. But the one that went up today was about protest um, and how protest kind of figures into what we should be doing moving forward. I don't really have all the answers on this front, but I just sort of have this idea very strongly in my head that if Democrats don't actually take the Senate um, in January with these two Georgia runoffs, we're kind of screwed from a legislative politics perspective. Um, people can have sort of high expectations about the Biden cabinet. I, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to get decent people through a Republican Senate, even if he wants to. Um, so I think, you know, we ultimately have to be looking for other avenues for change uh, with over the next couple of years. We already needed to be doing this and thinking about this um, before, even when it looked like Biden would win and sweep the Senate. Um, it was always going to be the case that people on the ground would need to organize, um, agitate on climate, on healthcare, on immigration. Um, but that, all of those things, all of that is doubly true in, in a situation where we don't think we're going to be able to get very many laws actually passed. Um, so that's what that piece is about, just sort of trying to rouse people's spirits maybe a little bit to say that there's stuff that we can actually do on the ground, not just in federal politics either, but <clears> at the state and local level to really achieve change on, on a variety of policy issues. And we've seen that happen over the course of the decade on a lot of fronts, five for 15, you know, uh, labor strikes, teacher strikes that got material gains won for, for people, for working people uh, all over the country. You know, there are things that can be done even with things look bleak on the federal level. Um, uh, one thing that I'm, I'm looking at, I'm like uh, skimming through it currently, but you talk about the Occupy Wall Street on the left and the Tea Party on the right. I would even go so far as to say the Tea Party as a consequence of being astroturfed and not necessarily uh, challenging pre-existing uh, the, the pre-existing economic uh, order 
it was a little bit more successful. It created the uh, the Freedom Caucus in the House, uh, uh, a, a viable, uh, it's a, a viable enough uh, number of Republicans who who consider themselves to be like Tea Party loyalists, I guess. A um, little bit more than Occupy Wall Street there, but another thing, another testament to the Obama administration, or not a testament, but like another testament to uh, organizing uh, in the Obama era was, uh, I guess, Obama for America, right? Obama for America was a grassroots uh, organization for uh, that that was created specifically to fight for health care and to get Obama elected. And once Obama was president, um, and this is something that AOC has talked about as well, uh, alluded to a little bit. Um, once Obama was elected, he changed it to Organizing for America, and then he basically shuttered it under the DNC. He put that organization under the DNC and, and closed it. And that was um, that was a terrible move, in my opinion, personally. Um, yeah, and I totally agree with that. I mean, I, that's that's not the model we should be looking towards. I remember, you know, I think in 2012, getting a lot of emails from uh, organize or Obama for America, as it was back then, and sort of wondering what it was all about. That I wasn't really sure what the organization was supposed to be doing. Uh, but you're right that in like 2008, and you know, very early on in Obama's whole deal. There was a recognition on his part, at least in his rhetoric, that it was going to take more than just him being elected to actually implement change, that he recognized that he tapped into something really special with enthusiasm of the voters and new voters, and all of that could be marshaled during his administration uh, you know, to, to really push the issues forward behind him as he was working formally within the institutions in Washington. There would be people behind him, below him, also agitating. Uh, that was what the rhetoric was all about, but that obviously didn't come to fruition. You saw Bernie Sanders deliver a version of that message in his primary campaign, not me, us, right? Not just electing a president, but actually building a self-sustaining movement outside of formal electoral politics that will continue to do the work and help Bernie push things across the finish line. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one way to think about organizing. Um, but but I, I really do think that given the absence of people in formal position of power right now um, who we can be relied upon to push for progressive initiatives. I think we should be looking for fully independent modes and, and avenues of organizing. I mean, Joe Biden did not say any of this. Joe Biden at no point in his political career has, has, has demonstrated an understanding um, that organizing really matters and mass movements really matters. Uh, he, he hasn't said that over the course of this campaign. So, you know, I think, this, this is up to us now. We're kind of on our own here. Um, and there, a lot of good work has been done. You know, DSA, uh, people who worked on the Sanders campaign, uh, groups that have been working uh, for a very long time at the state and local level without much national attention or fanfare. All of that infrastructure has been kind of built up over a long time and, and needs to continue to be built up. So we're not starting from scratch exactly, but there is a lot of hard work we have to do, I think, independently. Uh, to develop an independent source of power outside of politics or attachment to a particular political figure. Absolutely. Um, one thing, if I'm going to be charitable to Joe Biden, and this is probably still like the, the election high, uh, the one thing I'll say is that uh, Joe Biden has talked about at least labor power, not necessarily uh, from the point of view of organizing, but at least ease of access to unionization. Uh, this is something that he's talked about I think that the Democratic Party kind of understands that they need a uh, labor union still to win, especially in the Rust Belt and places like that, uh, that are slowly but surely becoming kind of uh, more and more reactionary. The, the rural uh, white voters uh, in areas that we've just completely long, long forgotten about, like West Virginia, you don't want the rest of the country to turn into that pretty much. You don't want the rest of the Rust Belt to turn into West Virginia. And if you don't want to do that, if you don't want that to happen, what you have to do is still, I think, focus on unionization and labor unions in general. Um, so maybe that could be an opportunity uh, within the Democratic Party for organizing. But of course, labor unions uh, still do have uh, a lot of neoliberal adjacent uh, union leadership. Uh, we see this with uh, some of the biggest unions in the some of the biggest unions in the country. Uh, putting support behind Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders or putting support behind, or maybe not coming out and directly 
supporting one candidate over the other, like the Culinary Union in Nevada, but, um, but basically doing everything but that and attacking Bernie Sanders, for example. Now, that was unsuccessful, but still, it's something to be acknowledged. And, and even then, the unions are not the uh, end-all, be-all, but, but it's still an important way to, to at least build uh, momentum in the, in the working class and, and organize. But, but they could still technically be considered within the Democratic Party machine. And I think what you're advocating for is here, at least, is like outside of that. Um, do you remember? <laughs> oh, sorry. The, the question I was going to ask you is, do you remember um, the, the pact that the DNC forced everyone to sign in the primaries the pact where they said that um if you worked for a progressive campaign uh oh, you would be blacklisted no no, no not not the DCCC blacklist no but that's that's a good one too okay. obviously which was uh, uh terrible um no the the pact <laughs> i'm talking about is uh when the the dnc wanted every candidate to sign uh, mm -hmm. that they would sign away every single grassroots movement that they have. Uh, they would oh, okay. put under the DNC. This was something that they made everyone, including Bernie Sanders, I believe, sign. Um, mm -hmm. DNC signs. Act. And I, this was a direct... Um, this was a direct counter to... I think they made this because of, uh, because of uh, Obama for America. They didn't want a repeat of that, right. basically, or... Basically, they wanted that to be repeated if Bernie Sanders wanted to use like our revolution against uh, uh, against the wishes of the DNC. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, again, that, that just illustrates the, the kind of weakness of. I'm not saying that having um, our revolution is bad, or that if a progressive candidate like AOC or somebody like that, like Ilhan Omar, creates an organization. Um, to support the movement, that'll be bad. I, I, I don't want to give people that idea, but I do think that the fact that the DNC has this kind of capacity to sever it ties candidates built to the, with these organizations, um, again, suggests the need for independent capacity um, and independent groups and independent organizing that isn't really tied to a particular campaign or a particular politician. I, I think that bringing up labor organizing is extremely important. You know, I think it's true that labor unions are not as uniformly progressive as people might expect, uh, and they might have been, as they might have been in the past on, on certain issues. Um, I think that one of the big battles to, to watch moving forward is, is the battle for the leadership of the AFL-CIO within the next couple of years, um, and to see what, what happens there. Um, but still, I mean, labor unions I, I, were the backbone of democratic politics in a lot of ways and the attacks on them through policy, through right to work and all of that have really atrophied a lot of the democratic parties organizing capacity. Um, and so it really falls to, to us and you know, to, to rebuild that. The democratic party, even if they're supporting good labor policy, even if they're talking about things like card check and, and Biden appoint somebody who's decent to the department of labor, all of that's good, but the, the actual work of rebuilding unions as a political force has to come from on the ground organizing, getting getting into workplaces and, and signing people up. That, that, that's what it fundamentally comes down to, and it's really hard. And you know, the, the, the fact that we transition to a different kind of economy where you know the people we're organizing are often people in the service industry that you know creates kind of new challenges and new things to think about um, when you're thinking about. Uh, the industrial unions of the past. We're, we're in a different kind of economy now, um, an economy where people are much more fractured. We've seen that obviously over the course of the pandemic, right? It's it's what what is a workplace in this moment right now, and, and how do you bring people together within one? Um, so you know, all of those are different questions that that are going to have to be answered and 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 responded to, um, and actively fought against with real concrete on the ground efforts to, to bring people together in the workplaces, also outside the workplaces, just any way we can, um, as long as it's sort of a, an effort to build an independent power base that can, can really influence politics without coming inside or coming from the inside of politics. Um, Joe Biden and Senate Democrats have also announced that the right to work laws are on the chopping block. This is basically a part of his uh, plan for strengthening worker organizing, collective bargaining and unions. But that's why I said, like, uh, Joe Biden does 
Joe Biden seemingly does uh, side on on labor power or the side of labor. We don't know how much he will follow through on that. If you recall, Obama uh, back in the day made some bold claims about union organizing as well and then didn't necessarily follow through with it. So we shall see what happens on that front. And plus, none of this matters if we don't have on the ground organizing, as you also mentioned. And I think this is an area, I think this is perhaps the first area that uh, on the like actual outside organizing efforts could work side by side with uh, party politics uh, to build a a base of support for the for the uh, outside organizing efforts and also to to legitimize their initiatives a little bit if this is truly something that the democrats are interested in and this is truly something that is um a popular policy this is something that Republicans would have a very hard time uh, uh, lying about, basically. It, it won't stop them from lying about it, but it would be hard for Republicans to come across as, uh, uh, as anti-labor in this way when they try to fancy themselves, when they have successfully portrayed themselves to some degree as the working class party and the Democrats are the bi-coastal elites. It, they'd be hard-pressed to attack, like, unionization efforts. So I personally think if... Uh, outside like if if uh, grassroots organization uh, focused on this alongside the democratic party they could apply pressure to even republicans uh to to make amends uh, on this subject and we could pass legislation now it's kind of a dream world but um but at the at the worst in the worst case scenario you could at least launch attack ads against Mitch McConnell and be like you don't have unions and you don't have, uh, you, you, we can't destroy right to work laws that prevent unions from occurring in this country because Mitch McConnell won't uh, allow it. And that right. I think harms uh, Republicans in areas, but that requires an endless sea of messaging nonstop and like making sure that Republicans can't capture the framing on this issue and pump out millions and millions uh, of dollars worth of ads. And it requires on the ground organizing and door knocking to be able to go against uh, these these uh, terrible reactionary uh, messages that you see all over AM radio from conservative talk show hosts and, and even legitimized by mainstream media that is also oftentimes on the side of capital over the side of workers. Yeah, I think all of that is right. I mean, we've talked a little bit here about, you know, what we can do independently and, you know, organizing apart from politics. But if you want to talk about electoral politics for a little bit, this is something I've been thinking about. You know, if, if you are a political candidate and you're watching these debates we're having right now about, well, what should the Democrats run on? What shouldn't they run on? What's popular? What's not popular? And, and what why didn't they win the Senate? And why did people lose in the House and so on? I think that one thing you should really consider is that labor policy and policies about empowering workers are extremely popular. They are more popular than anything else people talk about. Um, the closer you get to what is actually democratic socialism, when you're talking about uh, allowing workers uh, ownership of the businesses they work at, giving them control or, or seats on corporate boards, all of that stuff is extremely popular given the data that we, we have. And it's, it's stuff that doesn't really get centered even in left-wing campaigns. But if you had candidates going out and saying, look, we need to empower you guys at the workplace. You can't just let your boss push you around. You deserve a greater share of the profits uh, because you're the people doing the actual work here, not some guy in, in New York City. You know, like if, if we started talking about that, I think we might see some results. Um, and, and I think that, you know, th this to me is one of the skeleton keys of this election that sort of explains why things worked out where they did. People have been wondering why Trump uh, didn't do as poorly as, as people thought he might, why Republicans came back. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the coronavirus response. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people got $1,200 into their bank accounts, which was good and something that should have happened more. And it wasn't enough. And we hope that we're going to see another stimulus plan uh, in the months ahead. But the reality is that when you ask people to think about the economy in American politics. The first things they're gonna think about are, how much money do I have to cover my expenses this week? Am I having an easy time paying the bills? Am I paying my medical bills? You know, very immediate questions about their own financial stability. And all of those things are very, very important. But people don't tend to think about the structural economy. How much power do I have at work? Um, 
does my can my boss just fire me arbitrarily tomorrow or even if i did nothing wrong what does that mean for my insurance um, what does that mean for my insurance exactly these, these questions about the actual experience of work and how much power people have in their workplaces in the economy beyond just the question of you know do you have enough money right now those are the questions that i think it's really hard to get people to think about and i think the the future of the left rests in large part on whether or not we get people to think about the economy in that kind of more fundamental structural way if that makes sense right if we're always fighting on this ground of you know immediate finances you can pass a tax cut and people will say well i have more money today that's that's great you know and, and things have been solved we haven't encouraged people to think more deeply about how they might be empowered by a different kind of economy um and so i think that's that's the approach to try these labor issues promoting unions and promoting worker ownership and promoting uh, co-determination all of that is sort of un traveled ground and i think all of it's going to be very very important for the future of the progressive movement the problem of course is the outsized influence uh, that that uh those backing the interests of capital have in this conversation and uh and there is no viable way to push back against that kind of messaging unless you have like you said on the ground organizing people knocking on doors and literally being like oh you heard that like um you know right to work laws are good well here is why they're bad and here's why we are working to uh, push back against it. Um, and I think that's pretty much the only uh, successful way to go against that or go be, uh, fight back against that. Um, there aren't that many pro-labor... Uh, you're not going to find a lot of pro-labor coverage inside of these uh, media companies where they themselves are struggling uh, to unionize in some of these newsrooms, right? So... I just, I don't know. I don't have any, um, I don't think that they would cover this sort of thing fairly outside of a, a couple of different outlets that are historically pro-labor or, or right. side with, uh, you know, labor movements rather than the side of capital. But who knows? We shall see what happens. Um, we have to try. That's the main thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. A absolutely. This is, but this is one area that like, there is a groundwork, I mean, uh, not groundwork, sorry, a framework for it. And it has worked historically in the past. And uh, I, I think it's, it's something that people can understand. It's, it's something that people can understand when you tell them like, no, 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 it's good. You will have more power. Uh, and, and any number of uh, different videos that you see at your training when you on your first day on the job that tells you like, well, union dues are bad and you can buy a PlayStation instead is not going to be able to make up for like, uh, salting and, and people actually uh, talking to you directly if uh, about these sorts of initiatives, especially if it's yeah. backed by the National Democratic Party. This is a policy that's popular and it will reframe the conversation away from socialism. Um, it, it will reframe the conversation away from socialism to like actual policy positions because the moment you talk about socialism, the conversation is between good and bad and socialism is automatically bad it's very difficult to like, it's they're very difficult to penetrate, unfortunately. So that's why you have to substitute that conversation always to policy. And these people successfully make Nancy Pelosi uh, into a socialist in the eyes of their base. Um, or at the very least, very unfavorable regardless. So enough of this conversation about socialism and more about initiatives that will uh, build labor power, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, so um, I, I'm seeing in the chat, people are asking, you know, are, are unions unproven ground? I wasn't saying unions are unproven ground. What I was referring to was things like the Bernie Sanders plan uh, for worker ownership, uh, which came out during the primary. And this speaks directly to your question, Hassan, because this was something that did eventually come up in a debate, uh, a primary debate. But the press didn't really know how to handle it. The other candidates didn't really know how to handle it because it wasn't an issue that had been raised uh, on a large stage in American politics before. In fact, Pete Buttigieg, when he was asked to respond to Sanders bringing this idea up, was like, oh yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea and sort of moved on very quickly. But it's a very radical idea. What Sanders proposed was, and I'm going to get the numbers wrong probably, but if you sense I can remember it. If your company is worth $100 million or more, you'll be required over time to transfer 20% of the shares of your company to 
the people who work at that company. That means not only that they're going to get dividends from the stock, but that means that they have voting rights and they can make uh, participate in the process of making decisions uh, on the corporate level, right? So that's something that puts money in your pocket and also gives you a lot more power as a worker um, at work. If you work at a, at a major corporation that qualifies or was subject to these criteria. And it would have been a, a massive change to the economy. It would have applied to a lot of different companies and very powerful companies. But the press didn't really cover it as, as a huge, massive change because it was just something people weren't used to hearing before. And it what did, I don't know that it explicitly registered as, as socialism. It's right? the German when people model. Talk about so, it's it, the German it, model, that's right. Yeah. I mean, in other countries, I think it might be other countries where the, you, know, you, can, you can look at too. But the thing is, people, socialism right now in the mind of the average American voter is, the government comes in and spends a lot of money on poor people or minorities or people who I don't know if I'm a middle class American who's doing okay. Um, it's stuff like Medicare for all. It's stuff like the Green New Deal. Like it, it's the government spending money. But fundamentally, that's not what socialism is. Socialism fundamentally is have you restructured the economy so that workers control the means of production, right? That, that's the fundamental question. And it turns out that somebody, uh, Peter Gowen, uh, the Democracy Collaborative is somebody who's done a lot of the, the research and, and polling on this. If you ask people whether workers should have more rights in their workplace, whether they should be given shares, just a model similar to Sanders' plan, they're all for it. And it doesn't register ideologically. It just sounds like a good idea to people. Yes. Of course, if I'm building this company, why wouldn't I deserve more? Uh, of course, I should have more rights. You know, I don't like my boss. Like these, these are the ideas that people have. Um, before you know, you enter this question of is it socialism and, and what does it mean sort of in, a, in broad ideological terms? I think if you ask people, a common sense impulse is to say, yes, I think that I deserve more at work. I work really hard and, and me and my coworkers need more power and, and we need to be getting more for the work that we're doing. Um, so that that is what I was referring to as the unproven ground. And, and again, to speak to your question of, of the way the media frames this, we saw in the primary that the media didn't really know how to talk about this question, uh, in part because Sanders didn't make a really big deal out of it, but also it, it, because it was a, a new kind of thing in American politics for people to consider. And so I think we have an opportunity now, before it becomes like a, a big thing that people can fight about, to sort of start pushing this and, and encouraging people to think about it before it takes on a lot of ne me negative messaging. Because right now it doesn't really have it. Right now, if you ask people about these issues, their common sense knee-jerk response is, yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty good. That's what Pete Buttigieg said for Christ's sakes before he <laughs> before he gave himself more than more than a couple of minutes to to think it through. Yeah, because on its face, it's a great idea. In theory, it's a great idea. In practice, it's a great idea. It's been proven to work in, uh, like I said, it is called co-determination in Germany. Uh, is what you were talking about with like corporate boards having a percentage of of. Uh, corporate boards having a percentage of say uh, attributed to trade union representatives and and people representing the workers and it's it's really interesting i think richard wolf does a pretty good job of describing this in like really simplified terms but um it, it's basically democracy it's just that's what it is it's democratizing the workplace and using those terms is i think more successful as a strategy to sell this as a concept to the American people than anything else, because it's kind of like this. It's you, you expect your government to be run in a democratic capacity. You expect, you love that we have a democracy here in this country. And yet you spend 80% of your lives, 80% of your adult lives working inside of corporate structures where uh, it's authoritarian and you have absolutely zero say over what happens in your company. You spend 80% of your lives locked away, slaving away inside of authoritarian corporations, and you don't even expect that to be democratic. You never, ever, ever consider your corporate structure to be democratic at all. You know that you have no say, and you think that that's normal. Well, it's not normal. You should be able to have at least somewhat of a say in what the company does, and People are so far removed from this concept that whenever I used to talk about this, I used to talk about this a lot more back in the day, but um, whenever I talk about this, people say, well, does that mean the janitor gets to be the CEO? It's like, no, you're still thinking about it with a top-down hierarchy. You're still thinking about it in an un undemocratic hierarchy where you can't remove uh, that antiquated way of thinking. That doesn't mean the janitor has uh, like 
the janitor is like singularly making decisions about the company. It's just that they have a vote or at least a say in what happens, or at least a say in electing a representative that will represent his interests at the board. Um, it's just democracy. Yeah. That's all it is. And then the, then the janitor goes out and, and votes, right? Because the janitor says to himself, if, if I go and vote for a democratic candidate at work in my own personal life, I'm going to have power at this company, some, some small share of power where I'm just pushed around and taken, uh, taken for granted, you know, day in and day out. Like it, it's something that people can really think about in a very concrete way. Um, democracy, you, you saw how powerful the idea of democracy, politically speaking, was in this election where you had people go and participate. They told themselves democracy itself was at stake. Um, you know, it was a very emotional pitch. And I think it was a pitch that worked in a lot of places. Take all of that energy and take all of those associations people have with political democracy and say exactly what you just said. At work, at the place we spend most of our lives, we have absolutely no real power. We're not making decisions unless we're actually managers or actually people at the top of a corporation. We don't have a lot of rights uh, unless there are unions and even where there are unions, you know, companies, policymakers have done a lot of work to try to restrict and constrain those rights. We need to build ourselves an economy where all of the things that we tell ourselves are necessary and good about democracy, politically speaking, also apply. We transfer those values to the places where we're spending most of our lives, where we're getting the things that we need to live. That 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 has to be the pitch, you know. You, socialism, whether or not people accept the label of socialism, you know, I, the important thing is that they grasp the fundamental idea. And I think that democracy is something that that doesn't have any kind of negative associations for most people. It's something that people can intuitively understand. It's something that makes sense. Uh, to the art, or average person doesn't really think about politics all that deeply or ideologically. I think I think that's that's the way we have to talk about it and the way that we have to to sell it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm fully in agreement with that. It's part of the reason why I say I'm a leftist, or whenever people are, are trying to pin me down, like uh, with democratic socialism, like I don't care. You can call me whatever you want. You can call me communist, socialist, democratic socialist, social democrat. I don't give a shit. I, I just want, in the short term, uh, for for us to have uh, social democratic reforms that are an absolute necessity in this country and uh, work our way up from them, uh, work our way up from that by building labor power in this country back slowly but surely um, so that we have uh, organizing and we have actual influence over uh, what happens uh, in the country itself because we have a very undemocratic process at this point. Um, but moving back to the election unless you want to talk about this a little bit further um i i would like to go back to the election or post-election cycle uh, if you want to talk about that a little bit where everyone immediately in unison after that caucus call in the democratic party rushed to blame socialism and the democrats and and defund the police and i wanted to just pick your brain a little bit on that what do you what do you think is happening i feel like there's a power grab occurring within the democratic party um, and, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we should have expected it. Right. I mean, I think that Biden winning was always going to be something that would create a victory lap for the party's moderates and centrists. Hey, we nominated the moderate guy and not Bernie Sanders and he actually won. And this, this demonstrates X, Y, and Z, you know? Um, so none of that is really a surprise to me. Um, frankly, I think that a lot of it is going to be humbled by the early months of the Biden administration, once people see that Mitch McConnell is not going to hold hands and skip down the lane with, with Joe Biden on, on all of these policies. And we're already seeing that, we're already seeing McConnell. I think there was a story uh, an hour or so ago about McConnell not referring to Biden as a president elect or something that, you know, Republicans are already signaling that they're not going to be that into Joe Biden, the, the famous bipartisan miracle worker. So once that happens, I think that people are going to say to themselves, well, you know, maybe maybe the left has a point here. Not not Democratic Party elites, but any voters who are looking uh, at Biden, hoping for him to sort of break through here. I think it's me very obvious that he's going to face more challenges than he's told the American people he's he's set to face. Um, so I'm I'm not too worried about the backlash. I do think it's important though to sort of set the record straight to the, as best as we can. We don't really have firm evidence that defund the police uh, actually cost Democrats this thing. Um, to the extent that we do have data about the impact of the protest this 
last year, uh, the New York Times did a piece a few months ago showing that between May and June, in states like Minneapolis, uh, states like Minnesota, and states like Michigan, the protests seem to have spiked Democratic voter registration by a lot, by a ton. Uh, they increased political participation that might have mattered in a state like Michigan, where the margin ended up being pretty close. Um, so you know, I think there's, there's a story you can tell where you can say, look, like Black Lives Matter in places that actually matter to the election may have encouraged people to go out there and, and really participate in the political process. There's a paper that I read uh, a couple of years ago, I think, that I brought up again when the protests started happening about the Los Angeles riots in 1992, which was seen as a terrible thing by most of the American press and, and widely condemned. Um, but there was a paper, a uh, political science paper, I think, I'm not gonna try to remember who actually wrote it, but it was in the, one of the major political science journals that showed that in the months and years after the LA riots, you saw in those communities an increase in voter registration and higher participation uh, in politics and, and more support for progressive policy initiatives, uh, just because the sort of outpouring of protest and outrage really encouraged people to be, become a part of the process, you know, in, in a productive way. Um, and it seems to be the story that, that's happening right now in the aftermath of the, the Floyd protests and all of that. Um, so, you know, the fund of police, it, I, I don't really think we have evidence that it was it was wholly a negative thing. Um, in 2018, it should be said that Republicans were trying out all kinds of culture war attacks on Democrats and and calling them extreme and talking about the caravan and talking about MS-13 and how Democrats wanted to let MS-13 flow into the country and start killing people left and right. Um, I covered the can't race, tell if you're talking but, about Claire McCaskill or uh, or the Republicans there, but. Yeah, yeah, she she was saying that as well. But look, I, in twenty in twenty eighteen, I was covering uh, Abigail Spanberger's race in Virginia, um, where she was trying to win that seat uh, in the middle of the caravan and all that nonsense, and and she she won, and you know it, it she won again this time, I think by by a larger margin. Um, so it is possible to prevail against Republican attacks, and it happens all the time. It's just a question of what happened this year that made Democrats vulnerable what happened this year with their messaging that, that didn't work what happened this year is AOC with uh, as aoc is brought up with digital um and the investment campaigns we're making in that those are the kinds of questions we should be asking not you know seeing that republicans made an attack and immediately assuming well that's what decided the election that's 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 what we can sort of attribute the result to because they're always making attacks and they're always saying stuff about the culture wars and they're always trying to uh paint democrats as people who are going to let criminals and and undocumented immigrants come in and, and wreak havoc and, and kill people left and right that's that's what's always gets set but democrats don't always lose in the ways that they've lost this particular year one other thing I, I'll, I'll say about this and it ties into the point that i was making earlier um a very large number of people if you look at gallup polling said this year that they felt that they were better off this year than they were four years ago. 56%, yes. I think, of the American electorate. And that's I don't know consistent. if you brought this up in your That is before. consistent yeah. across the board, even pre-COVID, post-COVID. That has always been a remarkable fact that I, I have talked about before. Yeah, it's really weird, uh, but go on, sorry. Yeah, I think that, I mean, you know, it's become, it used to be that political common sense and, you know, the smart take was it's the economy, stupid, right? That's what people would always say, you know, back in the 90s and the 2000s, determined politics. It was the economic fundamentals. That's what people think about all the time. That's at the top of their list, the, the bread and butter issues and, and all that. It seems to me that we've, we've started to encourage ourselves that that's not really, into thinking that that's not really true, right? That it's, it's Trump's bigotry and it's culture war stuff and identity political stuff. And, and we think to ourselves that that's what really determines politics. I still think, that, the economy is the central thing. Certainly if you ask voters um, what the most important issues are, the economy is usually at or near the top of the list. I think even this year with the Trump campaign's effort to make crime into a big issue, Trump supporters said the economy was at the top of their list of, of priorities that they thought were important. Um, so I don't think it should be brushed aside that the majority of the American public evidently felt that they were better off this year than they were four years ago, that we saw huge spikes in 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 income in the middle of the year that Trump, uh, I guess, got credit for. I mean, that, that's the, that's a that's a weird thing, right? Like, <laughs> if you are not paying attention to politics, like you and I uh, do, and you just sort of casually watch things on TV, what was the story of this year? Coronavirus happened. 
you would turn on your television and you'd see that Democrats and Republicans were arguing about how to respond to it and what kind of stimulus package that they're going to put together. But then they reached an agreement, they reached a compromise, and then a little while later, later you got $1,200. When has that happened? Like, what? <laughs> how often does that kind of outcome? How often does that produce in our politics? Like, this. This seems to me. I think if you're somebody who doesn't really pay attention, this seems to me to be like the ideal of what how the political system is supposed to work, right? I I know, and you know that it should have been more. But that you know, people uh, all over the country are not doing well, and we've seen hundred thousand people fall into poverty, and those aren't. Those aren't the people who are you know, in the center of our political discourse. But if you are sort yeah. of like a, a generic middle class person who votes and you watch CNN and that's how you understand politics, the story this year was Congress did something productive and gave you money. Um, and so why are you going to throw out your congressperson? You know, in this year where it seems like they've responded to a political situation in a good way. You know, that's, that's, that certainly seems to explain the Senate situation in part to me. The House situation where Democrats, it, it's a little bit more complicated, but I, I don't think that there was something happening this year that to a, a generic middle-class person would have suggested, I, I need to make some kind of, I don't know, I, 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 this is going to be a wave year where we need to throw everybody out if, if that makes sense, right? Like it seems like Congress fulfilled more than people usually expect Congress to do in response to this situation. And because people don't really know how to expect more from their politics, because they have very minimal expectations already, apparently that was kind of enough uh, to well, put Republicans or keep Republicans in place. It's, it's perfect though. It's perfect because like you said, first of all, people love bipartisanship in this country. When, they, when Congress gets stuff done, Everybody loves it. Like the average voter loves that shit. But not only that, but also on top of that, you got money directly in your in your pocket. So it's a that that's like you mentioned already. It's like the best thing that could have ever happened. The the part of which that I, the the part of this conversation that I hyper focus on and really frustrates me is that they literally didn't even want to add the six hundred dollars in unemployment insurance. Uh, that that was a huge huge deal like that was international uh internationally like on the higher end of of i would say payouts uh, as far as like relief bills goes all around the world like that was by oecd standards that was still really fucking good and that was the reason why uh retail uh spending went up by 17 percent, and that's the reason why people started buying cars and shit and like you know people actually had purchasing power in the middle of a pandemic yeah and of course and this is the larger point I want to make here. Republicans fought that tooth and nail. They, they thought that that was completely inappropriate. The only condition that they would even offer that was because they were giving gigantic... Uh, they were basically buying out ExxonMobil debt with taxpayer money and uh, numerous other uh, stimulus uh, packages they offered to massive corporations, right? That was the only condition that they would do it. They fought a tooth and nail regardless. And then finally... When, when it came down to signing the fucking bill, none of the Democrats are allowed to be in the room even. And this is a symbolic gesture, certainly, but like, it says something about how Republicans operate. They fight it, they cripple it, they undermine every single progressive legislation, and then they fucking take credit for it. Donald Trump called it Trump bucks, pretty much. Like, his name was all yeah. over. His name was plastered on the checks. Like, I got, yeah. a I got in the mail uh, a, a letter from Donald Trump basically expecting me to thank him when he's only paid $750 in fucking federal taxes for like the past, uh, at least the two years that we know of. So yeah, it's not that's even his also money. A, that's also an issue with democratic complacency though, right? Like even if you're not invited to the bill signing, there's nothing preventing you from like throwing a press conference saying, look, like we were the people who did this. We were the people who wanted to give you a lot more than this. Uh, yes. And if Republicans don't give you a lot more and, you know, a lot of people in the economy are going to be screwed, like put out a platform that is literally just shooting for the moon. Understand that you're not going to get all of it. But then when you don't, you can say, look, this is what we wanted to give you. And they didn't want to do it. Right. So it's not it doesn't look like Trump is generously 
giving you this check. It's Trump is being a miser and didn't do all the things that could have conceivably been done, right? It, it's Democrats need to develop a capacity if they want to. I don't know if they do. Absolutely. But to sort of get in front of the messaging and, and actively take credit for things and also say to the American people, look, like we want a lot more than you're getting and we're going to push for it, but you have to get these Republicans out of office. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. They didn't do that this year. Yeah, their their messaging is horrible. And and again, the reason why I keep going back to the story about like Republicans fighting back against these uh, the, this relief efforts, these relief efforts, and then taking credit for it um, is because the conversation around defund the police or Medicare for all is whatever you make it. Because when you talk about defund the police, if you work off of reactionary framing that is completely overtaken, uh, even mainstream outlets, but more importantly, uh, local news uh, broadcasting, which a lot people trust a lot more than mainstream media, unless we're talking about Fox News, and of course Fox News as well, and uh, their AM radio and their commentators and Facebook. Like this concept of defund the police comes along with imagery of burning buildings and, and black people, scary black people coming into your neighborhood, right? What it should be about if Democrats actually were, weren't such feckless cowards and so fucking incompetent, that conversation should be about why do you want tanks rolling down your street if you live in a fucking Iowa, like rural uh, town in Iowa? Like, why, why does your police department need a massive fucking tank? You don't need that. We need to demilitarize the police and we need to stop paying uh, these massively inflated police budgets because they keep just buying more guns with that and they don't actually train it. Since the 1960s, community policing has been an initiative that has never been established. It's just never been established. We keep saying we're going to do it. They don't do it. We give them more money to buy body cameras. They don't buy the body cameras. Or if they buy the body cameras, they don't turn on the body cameras. The problem isn't just about funding the police. It's about accountability. And the issue is, the issue is like, you need to reframe that narrative around defund the police. You can't control what happens on the streets. You don't have any say. As Joe Biden like, Joe Biden doesn't control whether some some crusty anarchists uh, want to fucking throw a brick through a window or not, okay? He can say, like, oh, don't riot, Jack, all he wants, but that's not going to change the people that have legitimate grievances that feel like they are, they're, they're forced uh, into a corner and they have absolutely uh, nothing. Like, no one is listening to them. Their elected representatives, even Democrats, are not listening to them. So what he has to do and what the National Democratic Party should have done is reframe that conversation to say, we hear you. Of course, there's no need for violence because when we are in power, we are going to do everything to demilitarize a police force. Even if, even if you don't want to talk about the police force in, negative, in a negative way, what they should have done is instead of scolding the, the rioters or whatever, what they should have done instead is be like, this conversation around defund the police is, is crazy, but what we, what we mean when we say defund the police is take money from... Um, Take money from these incredibly expansive, inflated police budgets and put it back into social safety nets and social workers that could better deal with these problems at hand. Um, and I think that that was, a, that was a big miss. And that was one area where there was a big miss, but that occurs in almost every single area. Um, Democrat, the Democrats have popular progressive policies that the overwhelming majority of Americans believe in. Okay? Abortion. Like, abortion criminalization is deeply unpopular. It's 25% of the country max that believes that abortion should be criminalized, right? But Republicans run on that no matter what. They run on it as though it's something that every single American wants. It's bullshit. They don't care, though. They don't give a shit. They just lie about it and act like everyone does care about it. Democrats, on the other hand, have popular policies that they can't even put some backbone behind. And, and that is something that's endlessly frustrating to me. Uh, and that, of course, includes... Uh, the Green New Deal, if if you parse through it and talk about it as a jobs program, I think it's a brilliant strategy to talk about tackling climate change. And yet they don't do that. Or Medicare for all, like expanding uh, uh, social safety nets. These are these are things that would be these are things that are broadly popular, but Democrats oftentimes act like these uh, policies are are losers in in like red districts or or swing districts. When it's not, it's only a loser because you're not putting some backbone and you're not putting enough money behind correctly framing these issues and talking about how they impact people's lives in a positive capacity.
that's at the heart of the matter yeah. here, and I hate it. I think I think all of that is right. I mean, I think it. You know, the Republican Party has to do this too, right? Like, so the Republican Party, I think one of the things that it succeeded at and is doing less well at now, especially under Trump, is taking all of the crazy stuff, you know, all the stuff that was like at the far end of the party and then translating it in a way that made it seem less scary to people closer to the center of politics. So you're not talking about, we're going to throw everybody who's, uh, had an abortion in jail or we're, we're, every gay person is going to go to hell. No, that's not what they say if you're like a mainstream Republican politician, or at least back in the day. What you would say is we care about family values, right? And there are certain values you want to uphold uh, in, in middle-class American families and the Democrats are against it. And, you know, it became this kind of wholesome thing and, and, and a, a way of talking about politics that was would would get you to a different place than if you were just sort of either beating down on the extreme fringe or uh, taking up their recommendations um, without amendment, right? They, they, they were able to translate those politics in a way that were, allowed them to be successful. Ultimately, that is the responsibility of the Democratic Party now when it comes to defund the police, which I think is still a, a fundamentally good and legitimate position, right? These police budgets in a lot of places are out of control, the police are too militarized, and there are things that the police should not really be doing, that we should be giving to other kinds of policy, uh, people um, who are working as first responders, people who are working in mental health, like there are things that we were asking the police to be doing that they shouldn't be doing, right? Understandably, that is scary to a lot of people in middle America. Your response should not be, well, yeah, this might be a legitimate political issue, but shut up, don't talk about it, right? If you actually care about creating positive change, what you do instead is say, okay, they're not gonna go for this the way it's being framed in Minneapolis by people in that community, um, by the activists there. But there has to be a way that I can talk about this issue that gets people in middle America to understand where they're coming from and to think about it in a different way. So it's it could be like you said, Hassan, talking about the tanks that are ridiculous rolling down the streets and uh, you know, knocking down and, and going after peaceful protesters. You can also be saying to people, look, most of what the police do is like traffic stops. Is there a particular reason why traffic stops should be done by an armed person with a gun who could kill you? As we've seen time and time again with these traffic stops that involve African-American people. Um, just somebody gets killed for no reason because the person who's responding to this you know, traffic violation, or that was at least the excuse for it, had a gun and a situation that did not necessarily need somebody to be armed. I think that's something we can go to people in middle of America about. Like if you, everybody's been stopped before in their car, did, was it really that safe for you to be stopped by a person who could have killed you at any moment? Is that, is that a role that we need the police to be playing? Or is there a way we can reconfigure that role and think about it in a different way uh, that, that ensures a peaceful outcome? You know, I think that it, it's hard and, you know, it's an issue that we haven't really gotten all the ins and outs of figured out yet. And, and um, we don't necessarily know how to translate it quite yet. But, but ultimately, that, that work has to be done because, as you said, these activists are not going away. The concerns that they're mad about, those aren't going to go away. Um, and the Democratic Party has to represent these people, right? Um, it, can we take it for granted that, like, Abigail Spanberger or Connor Lamb or somebody else is, is supposed to, um, they're, they're given pride of place and everybody else who's representing an urban district should, should tamp down the rhetoric so that people in these middle districts, in middle America and rural districts can get reelected, right? But AOC is not doing her job and Ilhan Omar is not doing her job. Rashida Tlaib is not doing her job if she is not representing her constituents and their yeah. demands, right? So it can't, you can't just work one way. Like it, if everybody's representing a particular constituency and the role of a party is to reconcile all of those things while addressing the substantive concerns of each particular constituency as best as they can. And that's not what the Democratic Party does and, and thinks it has to do. What it tells itself it has to do instead is to tell everybody who's aggressive to shut up because their constituents don't matter as much as the, the sort of 
the marginal constituents who who actually you know swing districts and and determine the majority and that's that's very important to figure out and those those districts are very important and they decide elections um but like the, the democratic party has a responsibility to represent everybody in the coalition and so the actual work is getting the party as a whole to a place where you can talk about an issue like the police and criminal justice in a way that works everywhere in a unifying message right and and that's not going to come from you just telling people to shut up and that the police are, you know shouldn't be defunded and, and by the, ridiculous thing to, to think about and talk about by the way i don't know if you saw this but that was precisely the argument that representative jim clyburn made earlier today on on i think it was on abc where he said i'm the most progressive person in the democratic party i fought for uh, you know i fought during the the uh, civil rights movement he even invoked the name of uh john lewis as well and then he literally wrapped up his argument i shit you not by saying things that work in my district you know he, he was talking about defund the police and then he ended up uh, the conversation with things that work in my district don't necessarily work in others districts so you know we gotta we gotta tan we gotta uh, we gotta stop this rhetoric basically he was arguing that like Things that his constituents might want and things that might work with his constituents are not going to work on other districts in like purple districts. So we need to like not talk about them and temper expectations. That's crazy to me, especially. And it's like, that's a really weird level of selfishness uh, where, where you're basically admitting that like, no, 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 we can take black people for granted. Uh, despite the fact that they are the backbone of the Democratic Party. Like, we could just take them for granted. They're going to vote anyway. Like, I, I don't understand. Or brown people and, like, working class people in general. And I think yeah. that that is a part of the reason why we're losing. The Democratic Party is losing uh, support from these uh, specific communities. That, that, like, this notion, like, Donald Trump got a higher share of black and brown votes than previous uh republican administrations had like i think since ronald uh since not ronald uh since richard nixon uh donald trump got the largest share of the black vote uh he got more of the hispanic vote than than uh previous uh Repo previous republican presidents did and that's that is absolutely i mean that's a cause for concern are you saying wrong w did better in 04 is that true I thought he did. Maybe. I mean, some of this information is, is still coming in at this point, but maybe I'm wrong. But that is that is truly concerning. It's truly concerning. And just saying it's religion is not enough. It means that the Democratic Party is basically taking these communities for granted that they are willing and able to go um, to a dude who's who's basically running on racial agitation for the most part, but also running on policies. MAGA is a, or build the wall is a policy. This is something I say all the time. Build the wall is the best from a, from a functionality point of view, from a, from a policy point of view, and from a politics point of view. It, of course, piggybacks off of years and years of racial agitation and white supremacy and, and a lot of falsehoods and, and red herrings, uh, like immigrants are responsible for crime when they're not, or immigrants are stealing your jobs and responsible for your economic anxiety or your economic situation when they're not um but those are falsehoods that are uh well accepted in republican circles especially so when donald trump says build the wall that's policy he's basically saying um it, it's it's white nativist policy but it's still fucking policy that's uh economic policy because he's saying we're going to secure your jobs because uh, you know undocumented immigrants depress your wages and he's basically saying uh, national security. That's national security policy because immigrants are responsible for crime, even though they're not. They're not responsible. F uh, they, they are less likely to uh, do violent crimes than natural born U.S. citizens are, at least according to the available, limited, but available data on the subject. So, so this is something that Democrats need to do as well, is what I mean. And there's a lot of work and we can't be running. We can't operate like there's a... There's uh, only an election every four years because Republicans certainly don't do that. They run nonstop. They are constantly building on messaging. They're constantly doing their very best to at least build the foundation 
which they launched their policy or proposals off of. Uh, the, the racial agitation, um, the, the economic anxiety, like attributing that to immigration. This is all stuff that they do year round throughout the four years. Democrats, unfortunately, do not do that. They, they're more reactive uh, than, than the Republicans are, even though the Republicans are reactionary in their politics. And that's really frustrating. You feel me on this? I don't know if you agree with me. I do. I do. I do. And, you know, and I've got it bounce, unfortunately, after, uh, yeah, absolutely. after this point, probably. But, but this goes back to the very first thing we were talking about, the organization and the action, right? You can't do the work that people expect to be done in shifting the electorate and changing people's minds over the course of a political campaign, right? Or even two major political campaigns, as we saw with Bernie Sanders, right? You, this, this is an effort that needs to happen around the clock and it takes a very long time and it involves getting really, really integrated in communities um, and, and, and changing minds gradually. This is how the conservative movement got to where it is. I mean, back in the 1960s, uh, conservatism was not like a major force in American politics the way that it is now. Barry Goldwater gets destroyed in 1964 and people say to themselves not, well, this means that this fringe of our party that, you know, it should be disregarded and we're not going to, we're not going to uh, engage with it and take it seriously. I mean, some people did say that, but, but what conservatives actually did was say to themselves, okay, how do we build an infrastructure where we can actually convert people to our ideology, where we can get them to agree with us, or we can, we can persuade people. Um, the sort of backlash to what happened in the late 1960s helped them somewhat, but they also had to do the work of building think tanks and uh, local organizations and all different kinds of groups uh, aimed at communicating to people consistently whether or not a campaign was happening. Uh, and so by the time 1980 rolls around, you have the conditions that are necessary to get Ronald Reagan in there. But that took a, a lot of effort and, and took a lot of money. And one of the big challenges is that progressives don't have this money fountain that the corporate world <laughs> does yes. and that's important to conservative causes. Right? But we got to figure that out. I mean, we no, that's, can. That, that's directly a consequence pour... of capital accumulation. Like that's that's like yeah. those who own capital build the institutions. Uh, that's. That's the foundation of a, a, a liberal capitalist democracy is that like our colleges churn out these results, yeah. our, our media churns out, our media fits in the comfortable liberal uh, ideological framing and everything outside of it is completely inappropriate, with the exception yeah. of right wing reactionary rhetoric. But that oftentimes, again, is on the side of capital. So it's not seen as an aberration yeah. that needs to be excised immediately out, whereas anti-capitalist rhetoric is, unfortunately. And and that is a huge issue. You're yeah. right. What do you what do you foresee then? Well, I, I want to say on the money issue and the resource issue, it's true that we're out finance and they have more money than us. But also, it's true that we have to be smarter about the ways we spend our money. Like maybe that 100 million we sent to Amy McGrath uh, to defeat Mitch McConnell could have been invested in some kind of effort aimed at gradually shifting people's perceptions or some kind of long term organizing effort. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, we have resources and we have the capacity to raise a lot of money. Um, maybe it's not as much as the corporate world does, but we have, we have the capacity to, to, to invest a lot in the campaigns and the efforts that we choose to invest in. It's just a matter of creating and choosing the right ones with the intention of creating more significant shifts in the electorate that can be achieved over the course of one campaign. That's, that's the key thing. So it all comes down to, again, organizing, organizing, organizing. The media question you just brought up, it's, it's true that we're uh, outnumbered in the media and we don't have access to the, you know, the big networks and um, all of that. You know, I'm talking with you in, on an independent channel right now or semi-independent. It's a corporation. But look, we've, we've created this space where we can have a conversation about progressive politics and what needs to be done. I mean, I'm definitely independent. Other... I'm, beholden yeah, I'm, talking... to, I'm beholden to Amazon and there's like definitely contractual right. obligations. Like right. the 60 second ad break that I'm going to run after this conversation. Yeah. But... Then Twitch, Anders. unfortunately, is not. Twitch is a, is a you know is a big company, but, the, but within that space, we've created something, or you've created something that allows us to, to sort of talk about what ought to be done and, and to, to educate people and and to talk about things that they're not getting talked about in the mainstream media. Taking every opportunity like that, every space like that that we can find, and using it to our ends, is is going to be important. We can't just tell ourselves that we we don't have a big TV channel and that that means. That that's the end of things. Like we have to do the work over the next couple of years 
to take advantage of as much as possible to move us forward without you know, feeling that we're defeated and that Biden's not going to get anything done and that means everything is over. We, we have an independent capacity to change things in this country as long as we tell ourselves that we do and, and, and as long as we're doing the work of actually building our power and, and reaching more people. And, and that's what politics is all about. And that's what politics has always been about. The key thing that keeps me up at night is not, you know, our capacity to, to change things. It's just the amount of time that we have. That's the thing I think about a lot when it comes to climate change. The fact that we've been told that this next uh, 10 years, now less than 10 years, I guess, is going to be critical. What are we actually going to be able to do to, to shift things on that front? That That's what worries me more than anything else. It's just the amount of time it takes to build movements and the amount of time it seems to me that we have to actually implement change in this country. And the conservative movement from 1964 to 1980, that's that's a long stretch of time, right? Yeah. Um, what what can we do with with what we've been given? I don't know, but it's incumbent upon all of us to try as hard as we can, try through as many avenues as we can to really get to the American public, reach them, bring people over to our side, convert them, whatever messaging effort needs to be done on certain issues to make them more palatable to the middle Americans without actually uh, conceding on the substance or actually retreating from the substance. Let's be creative. Let's let's think about how to get it done and, and try our hardest to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on, Osita. This was incredible as always. You you uh, blew everyone away. And uh, we hope to have you back on as quickly as possible. Uh, wh where can people find you? I'm already linking your article and stuff, and it's being shown here. But You can find me at the New Republic. Actually, now that you remind me, I'm going to make a pitch now. Uh, so the New Republic is a magazine. It's a magazine you can subscribe to, actually, uh, either digitally or you can get a print subscription. I think $20 for a digital subscription, $30 for a print and digital subscription. If you want to support a good progressive outlet, like we were just talking about, that's going to bring these issues to the people, try to convert people, um, subscribe to the New Republic. It's very important, I think, to support as many independent journalistic organizations on the progressive side as you can. So I'm going to send you a link, Hassan, uh, after I get off here and you can share it with uh, with people and, and hopefully we see some subscriptions. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Awesome. All, All right, man. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Osita. Bye. Right. Bye. All right. That was Osita Nuanebu. Uh, he is a staff. He's a writer for the New Republic. I will be spamming the link he sends me in a brief moment, but um, you can find him also at um, you can find his work at the New Republic in the link that is being spammed here. You can also find... Wait, what is this? Link? What is this? He just, oh, here. He wants me to spam this uh, subscription link if you guys want to go subscribe to the New Republic as well. There it is. If you would like to do that. Um nice of him that he's uh promoting uh, his uh, promoting his magazine that he works for rather than himself but all right um now we are gonna get to a couple more a little bit more fun stuff there's some more magacopium coming up in a brief moment but before we get there ladies and gentlemen you already know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. You already know what it is. It's top of the hour every hour. A 60-second ad break time, ladies and gentlemen. Contractual obligation. If you'd like to experience an ad-free broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe with your Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account. It's free, ladies and gentlemen. Free. The Twitch Prime is, of course, free. Free 99. Also, with a tier one subscription, you can avoid it as well. There's other measures too, but without further ado, here's the 60 second ad break. Um, let's do it. Yeah, please. Okay. You playing games today? Absolutely, brother. I already downloaded uh, Valhalla. Yeah, no, Osita is brilliant. I, I love him. He's great. BBC, I'm British, Jack. All right, let's get into it. Let's watch this. 
Let's watch this Dave Rubin mega cope. How about that? It's looking real good. Stage party, and I just want to say, it's looking good. It's looking it is a shame. It is an absolute... It is absolute insanity to me that anyone who consider the, considers themselves to be a political commentator, anyone who considers themselves to be a political commentator could look at the red mirage and literally jump on it and think that this is indicative of a Trump victory. Like, it just shows, it just shows your clear lack of understanding how this stuff works. It's basically the most transparent representation that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like a real good. Oh my god, he did the Virginia projection. Oh my god, he knows... Okay, dude. Dave Rubin is so fucking dumb. He's such a fucking brain-dead person, dude. This is hilarious. This is like... Chat. This is you guys on... Like, this is basically half the chat on election night. Like, you guys were freaking the fuck out. You're like, come on, bro. Look at Virginia. Look at Virginia. I kept telling you, no, that's not how projections work. That's not how projections work. That's nuts, dude. Like a person who is... Now, I don't fault you. I don't fault you for not knowing because you're an observer. You're watching. This is not your life. This is not your... This is not your fucking employment. Like, this dude, this is his job. He's supposed to know how this works. New York Times Needle, Florida. I didn't bring my abacus. Can someone explain? Wait. I didn't bring my abacus. Can someone explain how this makes any sense? 2,000 retweets. Dude, yo, I I I'm sorry. Dave Rubin, in many ways, is like... He's not exactly the most successful person. He just, like, piggybacks off of others, like Jordan Peterson and shit. But the hilarity, the absolute hilarity is that, like, he's only got the monicum of success he has because of how fucking pathetically stupid his audience is. That's it. Like, the reason why this is getting 2,000 retweets is because, like, the people that watch Dave Rubin are dumb. Like, they don't know. I'm not a professional poster, but in retrospect, maybe running a man. Live with Glenn Beck in a minute. Producer just put this under my desk. Put this on my desk. Oh my God. He literally thought he, yo, when he tweeted this, yo, when Dave Rubin tweeted this, so assuming they drag out PA, even though Trump is up by 700,000 votes. There were 2.2 million votes with the votes looking to favor Joe Biden by a 70 to 80%. There were like 2 million votes remaining at that point. He thought Pennsylvania was going to... Like he thought that this was enough? This was enough votes? Oh God, he's so... I mean, he's so stupid. Seems Trump is up by 700,000 votes in PA. Biden has to win the remaining votes by two to one to win the state. That's going to be tough. No, what the fuck? It's not. He ended up getting like 70% of the remaining vote. Oh, God, these guys are so dumb. Oh, they're so stupid.
Every single Martian that Biden needed to be closer magically got closer overnight, and now but back to the bigger problem I've been talking about for months. We don't have an honest media to analyze this for us. On today's episode of Twitter, watch election experts who always get everything wrong, argue with anonymous genderless furry avatars about mail and ballots. That plus big tech censorship, depressed pundits, and partisan hackery. All in today's very episode, special episode of Twitter. How about everyone just pretend they're guy one and we go back to fighting about which 80s sitcom to get? Oh! The heel turn, boys! November 4th! As the heel turn comes, as the turn comes in. Ooh! 180! Oh, uh, how about we just, how about we just decide that our guy won and we just go back to 80s sitcoms? Come on! Come on, please! I'm pathetic! Biden declaring a win, but no Twitter safety. Here's some seemingly vitally important stuff you won't see on CNN. Turns out 118-year-old William Bradley won an absentee ballot. He died in 1984. There's only one William Bradley. Can we all admit that the pandemic is over now? Like, at least give that as a pedal with the rest of this. Not Oh. It's not partisan to say Dems can't get away with anything at this point. Because they have mainstream media and big tech, it doesn't matter what happens in these states. Only matters what the narrative is. Saying that, saying that doesn't make you a Republican. It makes you uh, awake. Then you should take this. Wait, I missed it. Then you should take this even more to heart. You're helping spread disinformation and a lethal pandemic and a presidential election at the same time. I'm an adult unlike you, CDM. Some people want to live free and some people don't. That's pretty much it. The exact same people who said the Russia hacked our election last time are now telling us there's a zero chance of voter fraud this time around. Regardless of who wins, I'm going to do my best to be one of the few people who tries to heal some of this lunacy. I've been trying for a while and sometimes I'm pretty good at it and sometimes I'm not. I promise to try. Oh, that's good. That's the good stuff. Is there any more? I need to see more. Here in Los Angeles that secretly voted for Trump. And as I've been saying for weeks, I didn't know anyone that was a Trump. I'm feeling pretty good about things. Is that no matter what happens right now, I know that I did what I thought was right. Like, I really did. Wait, hold on. Person last time that voted for Biden this time. And I hear so many versions of that story from you guys literally across the country and yet here we are in, in these numbers that that we're supposed to believe but okay that that's just fine there's a feeling in the mainstream media and from the twitterati that it's like it could happen at any moment they're just going to announce biden and it wouldn't i wouldn't put it past these people to just announce biden and then have to go from there and, and the biden campaign released a statement today saying something like if if trump doesn't leave the white house in 70 days, you know, will the law enforcement will escort him out or something. So that type of tweets allowed on there, but you know, not the other tweets. Okay. Okay. Fine. You know, I don't know. Can the Republicans actually stand up to anything without Trump or are they just like a bunch of impotent losers? I don't know. And again, this is why I've never considered myself a Republican in all of this, right? Like I absolutely supported Trump, especially in the last couple of weeks, because I thought he was the best vehicle to just keep breaking this thing so we could try to rebuild something good. Um, but I never have once said that I'm a Republican because these guys are pretty unimpressive as, as a as a group of people. Of impotent losers, I don't know. And again, this is why I've never considered myself a Republican in all of this, right? Oh my God, dude. He said he doesn't consider himself a fucking Republican and all of this. Oh, is he going to go back? Is he going to be a liberal now? Dude, he's such a fucking rat, dude. He's such a rat. The difference, of course, is that rats... Rats don't cause the ship to sink. The rats just know when the ship is sinking and they try to evacuate. And fail.
Oh, he said he will continue to be a fascist. Sorry, I was peeing. Um, the dude went from I used to be a liberal, but they were too left for me to I used to be a conservative, but the Republicans are too left for me. No, we haven't watched uh, John Oliver yet. We're going to do it right now, actually. Oh, there's a Ben Shibibo Media Network's declared Joe Biden the winner. Ben Shibibo Biden calls for unity as other Democrats call for revenge. Dems think Biden is president now from Caitlin Boo Boo Bennett. Oh my God, Boo Boo. Oh, Boo Boo. Oh, boo-boo. Oh, God. Oh, boo-boo. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Okay, this list is trash. Ultra potato gaming. Sorry. Oh, boo-boo. Should I do boo-boo Bennett first, or should I do... Should I do poo-poo Bennett first, or should I do John Oliver? Nah, let's do John Oliver. Let's do John... Let's do John Oliver, dude. Let's do John Oliver. Oh, wow. A lot of people want me to do boo-boo. Okay, I'll do poo-poo. Decency in the office, and I'm so glad that Biden is president. All right, dude, let's fucking let's fucking go, dude. Woo! Woo! Oh, it's poo poo, stinky, uh oh, duty. It's boo boo Bennett time. Hold on, it's Boo Bennett copium time directly injecting into my veins. I gotta, I gotta, I don't want people to miss out on this. Okay, I'm gonna tweet out that this is happening. Boo! Ooh, stinky, 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 stinky. Okay, let's do it. I want civility, humanity, decency in the office, and I'm so glad that Biden is president. And he's, and he's, he's not the president yet. He's the president. No. Okay, well, by the time this airs, then he'll be the president. So that's he was right. Oh, she was right. She was wrong. President-elect. Unless she, like, literally means, like, oh, he's not the president. He's president-elect. Is that, is that it? Air, probably tonight. Okay. Have you seen saying his he can actual butthole to know that that's really his butthole? I don't think so. so Would you like to see? That's really silly argument. Is that decent? This is part of the discourse. This is it decent? That is that decent? decent by asking that what do you mean, decency? What decency? You can't, you can't turn around and, 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 hit, and hit the decency button, dude. Everything you do is indecent. You can't literally turn around after so much racial agitation, talking about like, like begging on the Liberty Hangout uh, Twitter account, begging for fascism, to turn around and just be like, hey, why are you being decent? No. Fuck you. You don't deserve decency, okay? Also, you shit yourself. If you poop yourself, and then you run, uh, if you poop yourself, and then you run along and bring back a gun to a, a famous college campus uh, where, where students were shot in protest, then you're not a decent person, okay? You don't, res you don't get the respect you don't deserve. So much for the tolerant left. Oh, absolutely. There is no tolerance. No. No, there is no tolerance to the intolerant, motherfucker. If you expected me to be one of these like, Ooh, I need to do civility. I need to do... I need to do civility. Oh, no. Like, if you thought I was going to be one of those people, well, guess what? I'm not, bitch. I'm here to fucking make fun of Republicans, dude. All day, every goddamn day. Okay? Woo! Where's my copium? Hold on. Hold on, guys. Oh, hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, I need it. I need it, brother. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, I need it. Oh, uh, uh, Donald Trump is still president for more years. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't take pictures of my butthole and upload them online. Oh. Oh, We're here in Clearwater where we are asking people what the heck they think is going on with this 2020 election. And do they really think Joe Biden got more votes than Barack Obama did in 2008? Okay. Wait, what? Wait, did Donald Trump then?
Did Donald Trump get more votes than Barack Obama did? Because because he did too. <laughs> Confederate flag is your on son smoking crap? Dude, hold on. This is great. Watch, 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 watch. I love this because this is just all the losing flags. My man posted up with all of his fucking participation trophies. Listen up, brother. Ladies and gentlemen. Listen the fuck up. You already know, ladies and gentlemen, I hate losers. I'm a goddamn American. Why in the hell are these Americans not conceding? What the hell is this? This is a secession terroristic flag, ladies and gentlemen. Real Americans don't celebrate losers. Pack your bags, bucko. You lost. Is your son smoking? The irony, of course, is that the Confederacy lasted just as long as the Trump administration did. Oh! Oh, the fucking hammer! and taking selfies of his butthole decency. Here we have a Pennsylvania native ballot counter looking for more Joe Biden ballots. Uh, any, any luck? Yeah. <laughs> if you could describe your feelings about the election and we're into Saturday, they just declared, or the media did, declare Joe Biden the president. What is your initial reaction to everything going on? Well, I heard that Trump's trying to have all the states recount everything. I think he's just being a sore loser mm -hmm. because Biden would be a great president. And plus, we need somebody else right now with everything that's been going on for the past year. Yeah. With Corona. and Is this person unaware of who Boo Boo Bennett is? Like, cause she's having like a normal conversation with a person who is not a normal person. Everything. Trump really hasn't done anything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And... I really think Biden would be a good president. I don't go with either of their political views, but I'd rather have somebody else in the office. Right. So what would you want Biden to do that Trump hasn't? Um, that's a hard question. I don't know, really. So you think he'd handle it better? Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? What? How do you not know? There's like 7 million things you can point to. It's not even like what Joe Biden is going to go uh, and, and do better. It's what you want him to do better. Like, it's not even what he's going to be capable of doing. Just say anything. Literally just anything. Just be like, deal with COVID better. She's going to say how. You're going to say, deal with it better. I don't know. He's got enough professionals. Like, it's the easiest question to ask. I mean, it's the easiest question to answer. Like, this is a wish list for you. This is not necessarily what he is able to do, okay? But there is a multitude of things that you can point to, like immigration policy. Immigration reform is broadly popular, and I think that Joe Biden is going to do a decent job with it, specifically utilizing the uh, ever-expanding executive orders that the Trump administration has tried to take advantage of as well in regards to immigration policy. Yeah. Do you I know what Trump has done so far? Nothing, like... Yes, he's had everybody do the masks and everything, and I, I don't really go much into politics. I'm not really a political person. Oh. Who'd you vote for? Oh, Joe Biden. You voted for Joe Biden. Uh, ask me why. Why? Decency. Decency. And ask me why again. Why again? Leadership. Leadership. That's all. I God, libs are so ridiculous, dude. This is ugh. Ugh, liberals are just so whack. I mean. What? Like, <laughs> to restore the soul of the nation, Jack. <laughs> I voted for decency. What the fuck are you saying, man? Oh, Jesus Christ. She's probably going to be like, what about Hunter Biden? Is showing your ass crack decent? It's like, you know, what people do in the privacy, uh, in, their, in their private correspondence, is not up to you. Okay, what about leaving the government out of your bedroom. What's indecent is stealing that information and then revealing it to the entire fucking population. That's inappropriate, illegal, and also indecent. So if you're going to talk about Hunter Biden's dick, first of all, one, admit that it's a nice dick, okay? We, we have to do that. This is, a, like, in, the, in an effort 
to increase bipartisanship in this country, I think both sides can come together and say, look, Hunter Biden's got a nice cock. Okay? Got a good old looking dick. And he very clearly fucks. That's, that's where I'm at, as far as like uh, bipartisan compromise. That's, that's where we're at here. Yes, I love the guy. I love- Mom, is it kind of like what Biden did to Clarence Thomas? First of all, Biden literally supported Clarence Thomas and was inappropriate in the way that he dealt with Anita Hill. That's one. And number two is a Supreme Court justice's personal dealings of sexual misconduct with people that work under him are entirely different than a person running for president and what his son, completely unrelated to him, his son may or may not have done in the privacy of his own bedroom space, okay? This comparison is psychotic. It's not like, it's not like fucking Clarence Thomas was, uh, was, was, you know, sending dick pics to random people. He was being sexually inappropriate with Anita Hill. A, cl a clerk of his. Sucks to suck. Hunter fucks. That's all I'm gonna say. You're just mad that your fucking first son sucks dog shit, okay? You're just mad that that chinless fuck Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump, if even put together, would not be 25% as cool as Hunter Biden. That's just the truth, okay? Sorry. Keep coping, conservatives. Um, you know what's decent? I love it when decency comes through. Is your son smoking crack decency? Is, but that's the is, thing. Is your, son, is your son smoking crack and taking selfies of his butthole decency? I mean, again, that's not Joe Biden. And secondly, he does what he wants, motherfucker. He does what he wants. Yeah, he's cool as fuck. Fuck off. Is 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 is, 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 is also this dude is on crack? I think currently, like, what is this? I mean, he is in Florida, and most people on floor, most people sucking on Florida air just automatically seem like they're doing PCP. So I just assume that that's just him, Florida. Right? They're in Florida currently, right? President, stop. You said stop. This is the first time I know of a, of, of a president's son who smoked crack and takes selfies of his butthole. Hey, guys. Eh. Again, there's definitely been some presidential children. I mean, one of the presidential children that was a fucking freak literally ended up becoming president himself. So... I think your argument is a little shitty on that one. George W. Bush is notoriously a party animal, okay? So, he literally became president. Like, your party elected him uh, into office. So, guys, we're looking for more Joe Biden ballots. Are there any more? Also, also. Don Jr. is literally always on coke. There is never a media appearance where Don, Don Jr. is not properly coked out. Out there, uh, check underneath the- Also, Donald Trump fucked a porn star. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That was like probably one of the few instances where he, he consensually had sex, but he literally fucked a porn star while his, while his wife- while, while his wife was pregnant. <laughs> like- Oh, the these people Checking are so dumb. Tents. There might be more Joe Biden ballots out there. Uh, we keep finding them everywhere. We're just looking for more, guys. We're missing about 5 million more Joe Biden ballots. Check check, in, check underneath your seat. Thank you, guys. Joe Biden in 2020. Yes, check the ocean. They're in there. Do we honestly believe that Joe Biden got 5 million <laughs> more votes than Barack Obama did? No chance. It's pretty cool that Biden came through, though. He came through? Yeah. You think that's cool? Yeah. How so? Um, because I feel like he can do a lot for this country, mm -hmm. you know. Um, raising taxes will help, like, rebuild everything, you know. Re re rebuild what? Um. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking no, about. No, I know what I'm talking shit about. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Um. So you are not denying that Joe Biden wants to raise taxes? No, I'm not denying that, no. And you think that that's a good thing? 
Yeah. I think it's situational. It can be good for multiple different things. Raising taxes can also mean lowering something else, but uh, if he doesn't lower something else, why raising taxes or something like that? What would he lower? What's something else he would lower to like raise taxes? Like maybe health care benefits or something like that. That's the only reason why it would be beneficial. All right. All right, we'll make sense of that. So, okay, I have a question for you guys. What do you guys think of Trump's supporters as people? They're toxic. How old are you guys? 106. 104, so you voted for Joe Biden? No, I'm not from this country. I don't vote. Yes, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I would check. I would double check. You sound like the perfect someone that would vote for Joe Biden. You know, that this really is a beautiful... What? Sorry, I was I was uh, texting uh, a friend of mine uh, on something that was uh, timely. Chat, how many times have I been banned? This is important. Hey, what is it? Four? Dan Crenshaw. There's one the the driving incident. Then there was also Michael Moore. Was it four? I feel like it was four. Oh, and then the DMCA ban. Four. Yeah, it is four. It was four. How was she this unfunny? Can you get another ban for the emo thing? No. Please don't make us watch 15 minutes more of this cringe. It's so good. Are you crazy? <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful sight to see. There's more people here on this beach than uh, had a Joe Biden rally. But duh, he got 74 million votes. So, of course, who would question that? Is it decent to be sold out to the Ukrainian? Oh, she's losing it. Like she's like straight up losing it. Uh, it oh, that's so good. This is so delicious. Look at that face. This is a face of... This is the face of someone who knows what's up. This is the face of someone who is like, yeah, I'm, I'm coping with the reality well, okay? Go back to pooping, dude. You can go back and, and uh, hit the fetish market hard as fuck. You know what I mean? This is not going to work out for you. Of course, who would question that? Is it decent to be sold out to the Ukrainian government with your son? That's not true. This is That's the problem. This is conspiracy theories. How is that not true? The FBI God. has confirmed that these no, things are not. true. No, they have not. They absolutely have I not. I guess the Seriously. pictures of Hunter Biden's butthole aren't true either. I've not seen that, and that would be made up conspiracy theories. That's you don't think that's true? No, not at all. So there's no pictures of his butthole that he that took. Trump saying, the way you're looking at that. And you, well, I didn't look at it. Have you Trump seen his actual can grab butthole pussy. to know that that's really his butthole? I don't think so. so would you like to see? That's really silly argument. Is that decent? This is part of the discourse. Is it again, again, this is not part of the discourse. This is only part of the discourse because Republicans tried to make it unsuccessfully part of the discourse this has nothing to do with the discourse it's as a matter of fact a line that some people usually would not cross like trying to find um trying to find opposition research on family members that that make them look this way it's kind of like even the mafia doesn't do this you know the mafia doesn't kill your family they only kill the mobster right like when you when you cross that line, that a line that even the fucking mafia won't cross, like you've gone beyond the pale. But again, <laughs> she's talking about decency, and there's a picture of her shitting herself. This is true. Wait, what do you mean, Hassan? Don't disrespect the family. Not necessarily. Going after a family is in is a war crime. Pretty sure the mafia has killed people's families. Okay, maybe it's collateral damage, but I'm just saying you don't like target the family members like this. We call that fallacy moving the butthole post. Is it decent? 
decent. That's a decent. By asking that question. I, didn't, I don't take pictures of my butthole and upload them online. There's a lot that I want to say. But he didn't upload them online, you fucking psycho. It's a revenge porn. There's a reason why it wasn't uploaded anywhere except for some fucking weirdo Chinese oligarch and, and his website. And that's because it's revenge porn. Because he didn't upload them. What the fuck? Also, the president's wife, the first lady, literally did. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, the first lady, straight the fuck up, has nudes of her widely available on the internet. I know. I know from personal experience. Now, I I've looked them up. And guess what? They're great. Okay? They're awesome. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, would, I wouldn't use that as an example to be like, this is so indecent. Like, who gives a shit? Listen, I'm an investigative reporter. And that's research. Okay? That's research purposes. About the election that Facebook would fact check me for saying. If you want to see my raw, uncensored opinion and behind the scenes footage from here at the beach. Oh God, if this is her censored opinion, I don't want to know what her fucking uncensored opinion is, dude. Like, if you want to see, if you want to see the first lady's nipples, like, they're out there on the internet and she looks great. Like, She did one for GQ in January 2000. Those porno sites are so disgusting. Tell me which one you found Melania on so I can avoid it. It's not a porno site. It's not even a porno site. It's a GQ magazine shoot. Like, it's not like anything wrong with it, dude. Your uncensored opinion is, ha is her naked interviewing? I'm just, all I'm saying is if you Google Melania Trump nude, it literally comes up, okay? It's not even that hard to be an investigative reporter. You understand? You too can be an investigative reporter. I'm saying this so that you can avoid it, okay? I'm saying this so you can avoid where where you can see it and and it's not it's just something you should not google because actually that's not even true you can literally legally google it like me saying you can go somewhere to find hunter biden's dick pics or something is actually illegal because one is revenge porn that i'm directing you to the other one is a perfectly normal fucking photo shoot that the first lady did and it's great it's it, delicious it's a great photo shoot that uh she did 18 plus of course I, is it even 18 plus? I mean, it's GQ magazine. I don't fucking know, but it doesn't matter. It's like, you can't make this argument. How is it that a woman is funnier and has better content? <laughs> Shitty's back, guys. Our, our Republican pet is back. And he's, first of all, a woman. There are plenty of women that are funnier than me. What the fuck is wrong with you, you idiot? It's just there are no conservatives that are funnier than me. That's a fact. Because conservatives are just inherently unfunny. Except for conservatives like yourself, shitty. Conservatives are only funny when you, when you find them in their natural habitat conserving. Okay? Doing conservative shit. Go to libertyhangout.tv. It helps support my work. And it helps you watch my content even if big tech takes me off. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I still... Regardless of who goes in the White House, I still have to get up and go to work every day. That's true. I have to go to work. So it doesn't matter to me. Now, if I was rich, it'd be a different conversation. If I was poor, it'd be a different conversation. But because I have to work every day, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Does it does it matter that um, Biden has supported national lockdowns that might, you know, lock the state down and make your job maybe not as open? Maybe, might have to cut costs or cut workers. Is that, okay. you're not worried about it? I'm not. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, coming over to you is your next. Huh. Owned. Absolutely owned. Next. Okay. All right. What do you think? This election cycle has just been crazy. We're now on Saturday. The votes are still, the, the things are still not counted all the way. What do you I think? I think things are counted enough. 
I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. I want civility, humanity, decency in the office, and I'm so glad that Biden is president. And, he, and he he's is. not the president yet. He's the president. No. Okay, well, by the time this airs, then he'll be the president. So this will air probably tonight. Okay. Where would it air? On YouTube. Okay. But well, you, you know he's not the president because he has to be inaugurated. I do know that. Okay, yeah. so he's not the president. Yeah, I know that. Okay. But right. I'm saying. What channel is it going to be on? It's just a YouTube channel, Liberty Hangout. Yeah, there's, we don't hide it. It's Liberty Hangout right here. Okay. What Thank has you. Trump done so wrong in the past four years that I you mean, think I he don't, should? I don't. I just don't care to really talk to you anymore about it. Why? Because I, I didn't do anything support. rude. I didn't say you did, but I'm like walking. We're going. We're here on vacation. So what did what did Trump do that was so wrong in the past four years that he should be voted out? Did you hear me say that? You said you don't want him in the office anymore. I'm just wondering if he did anything wrong. She said that's the end because we see where you stand. So that's the end. Where do I? Oh, this is my favorite, dude. Yo, this like, this like, I don't have no time for you attitude is so fucking good. It's like, it's basically just the best way. To, uh, we're going to run that back. It Sorry. It's just a YouTube channel. Liberty Hang. Yeah, there's, we don't hide it. It's Liberty Hangout right here. Okay. What Thank has you. Trump done so wrong in the past four years that I you mean, think he I should? Don't. I don't, I just don't care to really talk to you anymore about it. Why? Because I, I didn't do anything support. rude. I didn't say you did, but I'm like walking. We're going. We're here on vacation. So what did, what did Trump do that was so wrong in the past four years that he should be voted out? Did you hear me say that? You said you don't want him in the office anymore. Well, I'm just wondering if he did anything end, wrong. She said that's yeah. the end because we see where you stand. So that's the end. Where do I stand? I it doesn't matter. I'm just it's asking good. general right. questions to you guys. I thought you didn't care either way though. No, she cared about me. Punching you. That's what she cares. She just cares about you punching me? She just said she cares about me punching you. Aww. 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 Womp womp. Oh no. Oh no. I'm just being like a really annoying person with a camera and a microphone and trying to harass people who don't want to be interviewed. And they have a negative reaction to it. Oh, why are liberals so mean? Meanie bobinis. This is interesting. See is it? If you're a, a fucking horrifically unlikable person annoying the shit out of people, of course they're going to be annoyed and, and clap back. As a matter of fact, I think they were really cordial, if you ask me. I think they were a lot nicer than what most people would do. And uh, you should not expect people to be nice to you if you're going to do this. They want civility and a decency in the office, though. That's what they want. <laughs> you know, you're walking away from me because it's disgusting, but you voted for a guy whose son did that. But why? Like, wh how is this a problem? Yo, I'm beginning to recognize why Donald Trump lost. Like, aside from COVID, I think this was really, like, this is really what did it. Like, this was their October surprise. Like, this was their last, this was their last shot. And it fucking sucked, dude. Everyone's like, yeah, I don't care. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. Okay, Hunter Biden has his asshole out there. Nice. Like, it's so good. Look at how sad she is. Like, why won't you notice this? It's like, first of all, I mean, I've already... I've already pushed back against the talking point like three times. So I, there's no decency reason. Decency wins, honey. I, I see that. I see you know, decency. Uh, man, if your standards of uh, decent or is your son taking pictures of their butthole because they got $3.5 million from the UK government and sold out to Joe. Wait, he didn't. Now she's just, <laughs> she's just making so many different things up. Like, like he took pictures of his butthole because the Ukrainian government wanted it. First of all, if that's true. It's not, but let's imagine that's true for a second. That's fucking tight, dude. It's not even corruption. It's just that he's got the nicest bussy in the entire fucking Eastern block, motherfucker. What do you mean? My man's bussy is worth millions? What? You can't even, you, you can't even hate on that if that was the case. 3.5 million dollar hole, dude? Jesus Christ. Joe Biden? The thing is, I just wanted to... Imagine being so excited about colluding with Ukraine, you take a picture of your butthole. No matter who the president is, my work here will not stop. To defend the... To my... Secure...
Oh yeah, yeah. I just uh, all the chaos and all. President Trump. Happy about Joe Biden. <laughs> Where? Why does she keep finding like, like black and brown lesbian couples everywhere? Well, what's going? I feel like she's got a magnet or something. Like how does she, how does she do it? How does she do it? I mean they they often have no time for her, so it's great content. But <laughs> like. Biden. Yeah, yeah. Slash Caitlin Bennett. Thank you for help keeping me safe. Got a radar, you guys are dude. happy about Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was wrong in the four years of President Trump that you didn't want four more years? I just, uh, all the chaos and all the fights, all the violence and not really just his much. responses to things that, you know, that... instead of making peace with it, he made, I felt like. It... They're insanely dripped out. I'm just going to point this out really quickly. My God. It got worse. Yeah. Just res his response made the people kind of like, you know, arrogant or whatever. So. so you said the violence and everything yeah, going just, on. Just just like not nothing really much being done. Yeah, they're just high as hell, dude. They're just trying to have fun. They're down by the beach. You know, they're just trying to have a they're just trying to have their nice little day at at the beach. And Boo Boo Bennett's coming over, boulder and over. With her fucking Cameras and her and her security and shit. And I mean, it's been going on forever. There's always been violence. There's always been crap out, you know, between people. But well, you're you specifically know, talking about well, it is the Democrats who are doing that in the streets, rioting, looting, shooting cops. No, well, no, not only that though. Anytime anything happened, like as a president, I felt like he should have came back and tried to like unite the people and try to stop the violence, whether it was the left or the right. But I don't feel like any of that was done. So that's the only part I didn't think was cool about it. I mean, like I said, it could go from either side, but just the fact that. He but it hasn't. Yeah. It's specifically been one side that's been causing the violence within 2020. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's any instances of. You know, giant groups of Trump supporters going out there, burning things on fire and lighting things on fire, looting and shooting cops. I'd love to hear about it, though. Oh, that? I, yeah, that? I wasn't talking about that. Oh, I not that. The, that, that yeah. the other stuff. No, just if that, that, but along with everything else, with the mm -hmm. people, you know, just the people not being happy with Trump. He never did anything to try to, like, try to, like, bring both sides together and yeah. try to try to stop it, try to bring peace, try to say, you know. How do you bring peace that? when 90% of media coverage is against you and lies about what you say? Yeah, that, I don't know. That should be a question for somebody else. I <laughs> yeah. just, I'm just happy of how we came out, yes. Mm -hmm. Bringing up conspiracy theories, I honey. Okay? I know, so I, don't I know. There's like Russia, right? Russia's conspiracy theories. So no Russian collusion? Yes, Russian collusion. Okay. Yes. It's, it's clearly in front of, it's, it's what you see. You know, if it's fake, then why did Joe Biden's lawyer, why did he ask for the laptop? No, I'm staying. I had no problem. Thank you. I don't want to talk to this. If it's, if it's a conspiracy theory, why did Joe Biden's lawyer ask for the laptop back? Joe Biden and Hunter Biden's lawyer asked for the laptop back. If it's fake, then they wouldn't need his laptop back, right? Well, I don't discuss politics. My mother said, you don't discuss politics and religion. No, we should. It was a very good reason. I mean, he's, I mean, he was so excited to tell me why he supported Joe Biden, but he can't back it up. Every, you know, okay, you know, since we're here, since I'm sitting down with all y'all today, watching at home, the only thing... Sorry, I just got a, I, I just got a, a, a package delivered from Twitch. Uh, I don't know what is in it. That's why I was like, what the fuck's going on? Um, but I, I don't have any, I don't know what's in it. Hold on. I just cut the top part of it so that it's like, I just cut the top part of it really quickly. Oh, we sh Wish we could have seen you IRL this year, but luckily there's a place where glitches are good. Here's a gift to help you celebrate GlitchCon with us from Twitch Partnerships. Oh, it's the ballots! <laughs> Folks, no, it's not a PS5. Dude, I saw... I saw Twitch. Like, I saw the, the, the... I saw that Twitch had sent me a package, and I was like, Oh my god, is it a PS5? I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. No. It's the missing ballots, folks! <laughs> It's them Joe Biden ballots, Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos, harvesting the American ballot. Um, no, it's for. All 
All right, I'll, I'll open this in a second. Ruining the YouTube video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. First of all, I got editors, okay? I got editors. They will take care of it. They will cut it. They got the best. I got the best editors, all right? It's the Hunter Biden laptop. I'll, I'll take a look at that after the video, but before we continue with the video, actually, I'll put this in the editor. I'll, I'll do this for the editor. Everybody, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, and I think there's a... There's a bell there to ring that for more YouTube content. Okay. There you go. If you don't do that. I'm going to keep my editors uh, kidnapped. Demand a PS5 in your next, in you led next contract. Yeah. Good luck with that. So the thing I was going to fucking lose my mind over is like, if the, if the, uh, if the, if the laptop isn't real, like, why did the Biden campaign want it? I don't know. I don't know, Boo Boo Bennett. Maybe, just maybe, because the laptop has a fuckload of revenge porn in it. Have you considered that? That could be a good reason for why they might want to secure this laptop full of personal information that was clearly hacked. And... Suspiciously put in this hard drive. If it's if it's a conspiracy theory, why did Joe Biden's lawyer ask for the laptop back? And Biden's lawyer, I mean, he was so excited for here since I'm sitting down with all y'all today, watching at home. The only thing anybody has been able to tell me why they support Joe Biden is decency. It's almost as if they have been prepped to say that. That's the only. Yeah, people have been prepped to say that. They're, they don't even have good answers. Like, they literally don't even have good answers. They're just like, you're so dumb that you're asking them questions about shit that they don't care about or know about, so they don't care. They're like, yeah, who gives a fuck? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Hunter Biden, who cares? Anything. It's not, oh, his, his, his position on the Second Amendment. Oh, his position on women's rights. His positions with the LGBTQ. His positions with tax. Tax policies. Immigration policies. Yeah. You know what that says? First of all, you know what that's funny? You know what that says? That says that that's how fucking horrifically disliked and universally disliked Donald Trump was that motherfuckers are out on the streets like, I don't know, I just like Joe Biden more. Donald Trump sucks. What are you going to do? That's the American electorate, okay? This is how it is. This is why I try to do my best to like educate people on why you should vote a certain way or what politicians should do. But there are a million compilations of Republicans just completely oblivious of the realities. I think if we're going to do a, an actual, if we're going to do an actual analysis here though, and that is that at least Republicans know what the talking points are. Like every single Republican is basically armed with the talking points, like what kind of policies that they're voting for or whatever. It doesn't matter if the, if the outcomes are, are completely different than what the actual policies are, but at least they know they say school choice. It's like, okay, do you know what school choice is? Like, do you know what the intentions for school choice is? Like, no, it doesn't matter, but at least they know to say school choice and that is a testament to how much harder the Republican media machine works than the Democratic one. And that's something that we should probably change. It's none of that. It's simply decency. And it's the same thing. By the way, um, again, it's decency on the ballot, character on the ballot. That sort of shit was like really stupid. But um, guess what? It fucking worked because your, par your president was so indecent. That, like, it was enough for people to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to vote for the other guy. Over and over and over again. If you vote for somebody based on if they make you How happy, did Hunter Biden do in the election? There's all this coverage of his butthole, but I haven't seen anything about the vote. Did he win? Yeah, Hunter Biden won. Or sad, and not if they save you money or grant you your right, acknowledge your right to defend yourself and protect the unborn in the womb. I don't think you should be voting. First of all, like, we got... Doctors at ICE facilities giving forced hysterectomies to women and shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, 
we have the Trump administration that has separated more than 500 kids, 547 kids that will never be able to see their parents. Like, what, what, you have no business having this conversation. Eh, what are we going to do about this? Like, shut the fuck up. You have no business. We're going to talk about, like, the Trump administration versus the Biden administration. At least, like, there are areas where the Biden administration excels or claims that they're going to do a better job. Okay? <coughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Nothing at all. The little things go a long way. Like, you know? your entire argument... Sorry, I just keep pausing, but... Your entire argument revolves around Hunter Biden's asshole. It's not like you're coming at it from the point of view of policy either. Oh, Hunter Biden's asshole! Over and over again. Like, that has nothing to do with Joe Biden. And also, Donald Trump personally, we look at Joe Biden versus Donald Trump as far as, like, personal decency. Joe Biden, low-key kind of excels there. It's just the reality. That's how fucking bad Donald Trump is. You know, like, when I, I just we went through natural disasters, he put little effort, you know what I mean? Like, versus... It's not only that, I just, I never liked the guy even before that. I'm Did you guys like his tax cuts? 2,000 more dollars to the average American family through his tax cuts? Nah. Yeah, that, I'm going to walk away from yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you. You guys don't care about that? Joe Biden said he's getting rid of that. He's going he's gonna to raise your taxes. That's fine. We, either way, we got to pay taxes, whether it's more or less. So. Owned! Yes. Not, a, not a deal breaker, fucking, huh? Fucking owned, dude. Oh, get wrecked. Get wrecked, you absolute dog shit person. Oh, that makes me so happy. Whenever I hear shit like this, oh my God. Oh my God, dude. Oh, oh, it, it's so good. Fuck. It's more peace in the world. Yeah, just more peace. peace in the world to elect the party to the highest office in the country that has been burning everything to the ground, looting and killing police officers and Trump supporters. Killing police officers and Trump supporters? I'm sorry, what? Again, just complete fabrication. I, 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 she's just, yo, notice how like with the first side of pushback, when a question answer session doesn't go her way, her dialogue tree just glitches. Like, they really need to patch Boo Boo Bennett. They, they need to update. Like, they, they need a server reset. They need to wipe out the cache. Okay, they need to clear it so that they can do a, a, a new firmware update because she glitches entirely and just starts saying unhinged shit like, Oh, well, what about the fact that Hunter Biden murdered a child and ate him? That would be crazy if he did that, right? Would you vote for Donald? Would you vote for Biden then? <laughs> who, who are these supporters that are murdering cops? The last guy that murdered a cop is literally a fucking boogaloo boy. So very weird. Both sides. I didn't think I, it's not both this sides. Conversation was gonna go this way, but thank yeah, you. It's not both sides, guys. If you have proof of uh, Trump support. Owned. Absolutely on uh, guys. killing people for their opinions. Uh, uh, guys, it's not both sides, I promise. No, come back. No, no, no proof. All right. Is this a fair election? Uh, I think so. You think I it's think a fair so. election? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think Joe Biden deserves four years? Yeah. Yep. What did Trump do that warrants him no longer being the president? I don't know that anything warranted him, but I think it's time for change. Time for change? Time for change. Yeah. What yeah. are you sick of with the... Donald Trump presidency that he's responsible for the divisiveness of the world of the country actually of the world yeah Donald Trump's responsible for that I think a lot of people are responsible not just him okay. but yeah his supporters maybe uh a, a lot of people on each side okay yep so yeah thank you did you did you guys participate in the election yes yes are you comfortable with telling me who you voted for no 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 well I I can give you some questions. I guess I could figure it out. Do you support? But he doesn't want to. Like, why are you annoying this person? Like, <laughs> yo, I, I swear I do a better job than this. Like when I did the QAnon rally, which you can find out on my YouTube. I, I swear, at least like I was a, to those people in that circumstance, like I was, I was a, a pleasant person to be around. They thought I was on their side. You know what I mean? I think that's much better than, like, what she's doing, which is just, like, fucking being annoying and, like, literally prodding people with a microphone. For Trump's tax plan. No. 
No. I think you voted for Joe Biden. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Did he vote for Joe Biden? Am I on the right as track? A middle, as a middle class person, his tax plan did nothing for me. Did nothing for you? No. Okay. What do you think Joe Biden can offer you? I'm going to have to wait and see on that. What has Trump done in the past four years that warts him? Not surprising that uh, Dudu Bennett doesn't understand no means no, of course. You know, consent laws and all. Uh, probably something that uh, she is unfamiliar with or does not want to think about. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hate to do this in the middle of a fucking uh, content bonanza, but it's a uh, top of the hour every hour. 60 second outbreak coming to you. If you'd like the uninterrupted broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe. After this, we're going to look at what Bill Barr is trying to do with the, the DOJ. With no evidence whatsoever, Bill Barr is trying to use the Department of Justice. But uh, for the time being, Hassan, how do I avoid the ads? Great question, other Hassan. Well, all you need to do is subscribe with your Twitch Prime for free. Oh, we're also going to do the John Oliver, John Oliver video too. But all you need to do is subscribe for free with your Twitch Prime. Or with a regular $5 subscription. Time for the six second outbreak, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Not to be president the next four. Well, I don't think Hold on, he... I'm gonna give her a chance to talk. Um, I don't like the fact that he kept saying that the coronavirus hoax and everything when it's killed hundreds of thousands of people. Did he say it was a hoax or was it Nancy Pelosi that was in Chinatown telling people not to listen to it? Come on down, shake hands, give... Nancy Pelosi never said it was a hoax. She just said, don't be racist against the Chinese. That's, that's... Nancy Pelosi literally never said it was a hoax. That's a complete fabrication. Again, can't believe I'm doing this. Remind people to follow too. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> also, even if Nancy Pelosi said it was a hoax, that still doesn't make it right that Donald Trump did. You know what I mean? Like, is that your counter? Is it, just, well, Nancy Pelosi said it's a hoax. Okay, well, fuck her too then. If she did, which she didn't. So. So weird. Like, Nancy Pelosi's not the president. Didn't say it was a hoax. Even if she did, Donald Trump is the president and did say it. So what the fuck is your argument here? Pugs in China. Like last time I checked, I just I get so tilted on this one, dude. It just tilts me to no end. Is Chinatown in fucking Wuhan? I wish it was. I wish Chinatown was in Wuhan because that would mean that it's done a better job with spread mitigation than the United States of America, motherfucker. People out in Wuhan are fucking going to raves and shit now because China has done a much better job than we have with dealing with this goddamn virus. We're still like, oh, Nancy Pelosi said this Chinatown in San Francisco is not a hot zone. <laughs> Idiot. Shit. So dumb. So dumb. So dumb. The amount of fucking cope. The amount of cope you have is just, is unmanageable it's incredible it's absolutely incredible dude we are so fucking stupid dude we're so goddamn stupid we're, we're such hogs we're like china still talking about fucking chinatown the town there's nothing going on here well, it was both of them both of them yeah, yeah i okay. agree with her yeah i would he didn't do anything wrong in my opinion but it was more or less he got impeached so he shouldn't get another try that's that's the way that I even in, if the impeachment was bogus, it's yeah. just a just a I, political ploy. Yeah, I, I think that it just being impeached in general should mean that you shouldn't be able to go again. Based, I agree. He already had his first try, I think, right? His first four years, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we had an election. Yeah. Even in all this stupidity, there's still a there's still a interesting take there. Like I love I love Americans and their fucking insane all over the place political ideas like it's just so great yeah. <laughs> he makes a lot of claims which i feel like 
don't necessarily have the substance to back them up, which I think is uh, not a great thing to see in a president. Do you think his words are more important than the lowest ever unemployment for any demographic in America? Not true. Again, literally not true. Okay, Barack Obama had fucking low, lower levels of unemployment in with respect to the Bush administration. Are you going to say that like Barack Obama did a better job? Say that Barack Obama did a better job than George W. Bush right now. Say it. Like, this is a terrible, idiotic, dumb fucking argument, okay? First of all, Donald Trump no longer has the lowest uh, unemployment. He's actually, as a consequence of COVID, and the way that he did not deal with it appropriately, he now has at least one impact. He's one of the few presidents where we've lost a million jobs. Donald Trump is one of the historic presidents in that way where under his administration, we've lost jobs rather than added more jobs to the economy. Again, doesn't matter because ultimately unemployment isn't a problem in this country. Well, it can be. But the real indication that the economy is not healthy cannot be tied to unemployment. Especially at a time when unemployment isn't the real problem. The real problem is wages and benefits. Wages being stagnant and benefits being uh, basically non-existent. The real problem is economic inequality in this country. The real problem is underemployment in this country. So, missing with this bullshit about unemployment numbers are so low. Again, Republicans do, however, do a good job of, like, force-feeding their fucking talking points. Uh, protecting our right to defend ourselves, lower taxes, lower regulations for any demographic in America to have a really good growing business, more money in their pockets. He supports free speech on college campuses. Is that, is that worse? Is, is that something we should get rid of because he's mean or doesn't say everything truthfully? Um, well, so one thing I think is taxes are very important because taxes are how we fund education, how we fund the highways, roads, uh, a lot of public services are funded with taxes. So lowest taxes isn't necessarily the best thing. I do agree. That Based. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I love this guy. Oh, oh, God. This is extremely my shit. When I hear people say stuff like this, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. That I'm sorry, you said lower taxes isn't the best thing? Not necessarily. For who? Uh, well, I think for, the, for people who make uh, less money, I think lower taxes is definitely beneficial for them because taxes are a very large impact in their lives. But for people who are more wealthier, I think they definitely should pay a larger share since they're uh, getting more. Similarly for businesses, I think businesses shouldn't necessarily have as many loopholes and stuff and should be paying more taxes as they're making more money. The average American under Trump's tax plan saved an average of $2,000. Biden said that he is going to... Okay, first of all, that's not what he's talking about though, is it? He's saying it's good for the lower class, which that's fine. We can have a conversation around that as well, but he's not saying that. He's saying, what about the corporate tax rate? What about the tax rate for the wealthy? Like, like deleting uh, the estate tax. These are insane things that the Trump administration did. I mean, it's nuts. It's totally nuts that she's just avoiding that. To get rid of that specific tax plan. Uh, I can't speak much about that as I'm not uh, really familiar with the specifics okay. of either plan. What has Trump done that's so bad that he can't continue to lead us? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, God. It's just like... Ay, ay, ay. It's the fucking... Uh, think. Um, 404, answer not found on the dialogue tree. Look at how happy she is. She's like, I finally fucking got one that doesn't know what she's talking about at all. <clears throat> what was the question? It was like, your people? Dude, you literally, you're swine. Like, your people? First of all, how the fuck do you think this is my people? I don't know what the fuck her political opinion is. That's a ridiculous assumption to say your people. Like, I'm sure she's not a fucking democratic socialist, okay? So that's one. Two, your people are literally fucking swine, okay? They're hogs. Like, the amount of fucking MAGA crying companies we've watched in the past fucking 48 hours should show that. They literally think that the, this election was stolen. They don't even understand that, like, they don't understand how this shit works. What do you mean, your people? I don't really know. I don't really follow politics. 
I try not to because of all of the craziness. Yeah, there. exactly. How is this my people? I literally am a political commentator who fucking covers the news every goddamn day. You think my community would answer in a similar capacity to questions like this? Brings your. But you people. still think he doesn't deserve another four years? I mean, it'd be okay if he was for another four years. I I don't mind Trump. He, he's a good person. He he's trying to deal with the riots and everything that's going on as best as he can because people are crazy out there. Yeah. And should, should the party that performs the riots and commits all this looting and violence be the party the party that performs the riots again white nationalist militias have more of a connection to the republican party and they have more kills under their belt than the otherwise not deadly left-wing activism and what kind of connection it has to the democratic party the democratic party literally avoids any relationship with people that Democratic Party avoids any relationship with people on the ground, with activists on the ground. Like, they just don't have it. It's crazy. It's nuts. But even if it was the case, even if the Democratic Party was, like, directly fucking doing the rioting itself, again, one would be damage to capital. The other is literal fucking murder. Like, premeditated hate crimes, okay? Get the fuck out of here. If you had the opportunity to have your family business burned down or have your fucking parents get executed, I think you'd probably take the business being burned down. Right? So even in the idiotic point of view that she's trying to fucking create here, like, if we were to make a one-to-one -one comparison in a circumstance where you don't even need to because there is no fucking, there is no, like, connection with, like, Antifa in the Democratic Party in the same way that in the same way that there is a connection between like white nationalist paramilitaries and the fucking Republican Party. It's not. The party that's the highest office in the world for the next four years, that, that's Joe Biden's party. Uh, Makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So some Republicans are saying that it's rigged or there might be some fraud. Do you believe them? Do you think there's evidence for that? No. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I don't one think, of those, yeah. I don't think there's any fraud going no, on. No, no fraud at all. No. <laughs> you, have you heard any claims of fraud from them? They're just like wonderful couples having going about their day, and this fucking, this worm is just like ruining their day. Do you know the examples? No. No. I'm sure Trump uh, will have something to to say about that. He does. He does. The Supreme Court actually had to get involved and separate ballots in Pennsylvania because What's the best answer to why Trump is bad? Cuz his bussy is fat and it's not right in front of me for the eating. That's what you have to say when people say why Trump is bad. Okay? Num 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 num. There's no reason to have like a legitimate conversation with someone like fucking Boo Boo Bennett, but if you were to have one I mean, I don't even know where to fucking begin. 260,000 Americans dead as a consequence of his mishandling of a fucking deadly pandemic. The economy in a state of disrepair also as a consequence of his mishandling of the pandemic. Emboldening white supremacists from the bully pulpit. Executing a foreign leader. Uh, executing a fucking foreign head of state with a drone strike. Qasem Soleimani specifically. Destroying the signature accomplishment of the Obama administration in regards to denuclear, denuclearizing Iran. And it, uh, uh, a deal that took years and years to put together. Pulling out of the Paris Accord is like not as consequential as any of that other stuff because it's largely symbolic anyway. But sure, you can point to that. Constantly lying about fucking how, uh, how, how uh, climate change is not real and is totally made up at a time when literally we have insane amounts of, of extreme... Uh, extreme weather conditions, extreme weather events uh, at a frequency that we've never experienced before. Family separation as a deterrence policy. Incredibly cruel. Incredibly cruel. But perhaps worst of all, it's going to have the longest consequence on America is the tax cuts for the wealthy and corporations that Donald Trump pushed through at a time when corporations were showing record high profits. Record high profits. And Donald Trump still gave him fat tax cuts. Now we're going to have to suffer for the next fucking decade 
with austerity measures as a consequence of like balancing the budget or some other meaningless, stupid thing that Democrats are going to push forward. He also spear dicked a third uh, Supreme Court justice in there at the last second when people had already started voting. So that's another incredibly indecent thing that he did. Uh, that's a permanent conservative supermajority there in the Supreme Court that's going to dismantle any sort of fucking right that you had. Uh, what else? Um, deregulating key industries, gutting the EPA, and also the education department from within with uh, lobbyist psychos. Like, ooh, what is this? Oh, nice. Thank you. Um, this is fine. Sauce is all, all good. Uh, Diet Cola. Thank you. Diet Cola. Video management control is the optimum. Okay. Um, undermining um, the integrity of American elections, which is like a bedrock that holds this fucking entire process together. What else? Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. He did so much. He really did a horrible, horrible number of things. Yeah. Undermining LGBT rights by uh, couching it or hiding it under like the the concerted effort of undermining trans rights. Trans rights specifically, though, the trans military ban, the Muslim ban. Yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's pretty bad overall. Um, yeah. 400% increase in drone strikes, um, rolling back the Obama era policy that at least calculated the civilian casualties of said drone strikes, uh, giving more and more weapons to the Saudi Arabian kingdom uh, while those weapons were being used to do genocide in Yemen. What else? What else? What else? There's a lot. He's done a lot of horrible shit. It's too much to immediately think about. Making the Middle East, of course, less safe. Uh, I already talked about the environmental rollback of environmental protection laws, of course. So, Donald Trump is pretty horrible. You could simply just say he successfully instituted conservative policies. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. there was some fishy business going on. I think I did, actually. They were talking about they were taking a lot longer to, uh, to count the votes. What? They magically found them overnight. What? That is interesting, though. Mm -hmm. and the Supreme People in the chat are saying sabotaging NATO or the Russian bounty ship don't understand my position at all. I don't personally really give a shit about sabotaging nato like <laughs> i would even put that in the good category like the good things that donald trump did the good things that donald trump did were directly directly related to how his admin was incompetent as shit Posied up to dictators like Kim Jong-un? No, that's not bad. What the fuck is wrong with you? No, you're crazy. The, some of the good things that he did was actually, like, have better relations with North Korea. It's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. At the behest of the South Korean leadership, by the way. So, no, I don't, I don't think that was a bad thing. None of that was, none of that was bad. Um... Failing to do a coup d'etat in Venezuela, good. So, so those things I don't have an issue with. Uh. Yeah, 
Taxpayer funded trips to Mar a Lago. That was a really Supreme Court had to get involved. Too. Supreme Court of the United States had to get involved and say, set those ballots aside, or we're going to have to decide what to do with those. It came out of nowhere. So are they going to re redo it? There are probably going to be many states that have a recount. What? Yeah. That would be interesting to see right there. Yeah. That's, the That's not going to happen. She's just lying to these poor people. Time consuming tasks. Who you voted for? Who you, yeah. I voted for Donald Trump. Oh, oh hell no, <laughs> See, I just. <laughs> that <laughs> mean. <laughs> Oh my God, we're gonna be famous. What is she doing? She's running it. Go, go. I just feel like people voted for Biden because they didn't want Trump inside of office. Yeah. But I don't. To be honest, it's the same thing either way. Like I just feel like we're gonna be. We can say curse words on here. I'm sorry. We, we can say curse words on here. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just feel like either way we're gonna be because like. Vote for who you vote for. Just don't hate each other. I don't have a problem with who y'all vote for, but like, can y'all stop arguing about politics? Like, oh my God. Come on. Come on. They're going to look for more ballots. All right, but you have to give us your poster. Have you ever uh, taken a picture of your butthole after getting $3.5 million from Ukraine? Well, there was that one time. I got to admit, yeah. So no decency from you. Oh, this isn't about decency. I just, I just want to tax the rich. <laughs> and eat them. Yeah, I hear that. I hear they taste good. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to the show. That was terrible. What an absolutely terrible video. I'm sorry to have put you through that. Apparently there's some TOS shit on this one, huh? Why did you make me watch it? I'm immeasurably depressed. Thanks, so, Bobby. What the fuck is this link? Dude, what are you doing, dude? Just sending some wild ass links in here. Dragged on. Bro, don't do this. Don't do this. Not you. Don't do this. Okay? Here's a one day ban for you. When we're watching a video that's on something completely unrelated, stop spamming the same question over and over again in the chat. Just don't do it. Okay? It was clear. Painting, which stood at nearly. These people look as evil as they actually are, which is kind of funny, I guess. A million volt is absolutely wrong. Yikes. Come on, dude. That's so lame, John. You're motherfucking Big John Fetterman, dude. because this is being used like conservatives constantly complain about like social media censorship but honestly they should be censored like this is exactly the type of shit that you need to censor like these homies are running around just lying just straight up lying dude like you can't do that like if you are if you are a legitimate influential entity that has institutional legitimacy, you can't be running around and fucking lying to all of your subjects and your followers and shit. Very frustrating stuff. With this moment, capture just...
Wait, isn't there a part here that's like... Minutes earlier. Hi, everyone. If anyone has any personal example of where they've witnessed election fraud here in Arizona... Is it at 15? Apparently, there's a rat dick hentai image at 1545. That may be TOS. Wait, let me just look really quickly. Sorry. What? There's no dicks. Bro, you guys are crazy. There's not even a penis. Like... It's nothing. It's just like two rats caressing one another. I mean, I won't show it, but... Kind of weird that he even did this, but whatever. The Trump camp was trying to drum them up. Take Arizona. I was worried, like, that it was going to be... I want to coom together with you, man. Yo, are y'all actually sad that you couldn't see it? What the fuck? There's something wrong with some of you. Like, my man literally said, I wanted to coom together with you, man. Sag. There is something just fundamentally broken in, in some of your brains. We wanted to share the moment with you. Nothing wrong with us. <laughs> Show us it, please. The video is not available in my country. I love how fucking stupid and degenerate this community is. Jesus Christ. When he made them watch him do this dance, which looks like he's... How dare you, dude? Okay. That's disgusting. Wait, real clear politics rescinded Pennsylvania? What are they, just like full-blown going reactionary or something? It doesn't matter. It could be a glitch or it could literally just be uh, them making a reactionary turn, but none of it matters. It's over. Achieve, but before we get into anything negative at all. I cleaned up brains. Please show rap porn. Oh my God, it's Baby Pimp 666. That's the dude who uh, cleaned his stepfather's brains. Uh, after his, his uh, stepdad, who was abusive, committed suicide. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm still not going to show you the like RIP to your stepdad, but it's not happening, you know? What do you guys not know? What happened? He he talked about it on r slash rant. <laughs> Listen, he made the joke first, so I'm just like. It was yesterday. You guys were all in here. <laughs> oh, anyway, show rap porn. No. Is it true or a joke? I, I think it was true. There is no... Dude, we talked about it yesterday. It's, uh, it was on r slash rant. He was scrubbing brains off a wall when Biden was declared the winner. And he like randomly... <laughs> he randomly uh, gave me a shout out in it. He said, thank God for a Swiss Biker stream that got me through the process. I wish I could personally thank him. You're welcome, by the way. You're the man. Check my logs. What is this? It's important. Hold on. Check my logs. You probably don't remember me, but a couple months ago, you banned me for being a chud. And then I hate watched you after that. But after a while, I started to agree with you. And I realized that I was just ignorant and stupid. You switched me from a conservative that voted for Trump for, to a liberal that helped Biden won recently. I made an account to tell you this after like four months. Hustle. My banned account is Von Vampy. Please don't read logs on stream. I am embarrassed of my pet racist pat. Okay, dude, you can't say that. Oh, now we got to look, dude. Come on. You're really going to... Like, you really... I mean... Okay, okay. I'll look at it on this. I'll look at it on the other stream. Uh, on the other side, okay? Is everyone white a Nazi to you? Like the guy that got punched by the black guy? Aw, listen, man. Hey, hey. Listen, listen. 
this is what we this is what we do here okay no i'm not i'm gonna celebrate him i'm gonna celebrate no it is it is literally him i think look he, he's got like a he's got his old account right here my man was my man was like full chuttified You know what? I'm gonna fucking unban you, dude. All right, I'll unban your I'll un, I'll unban your original account if you want to use it. So to keep banned for more sus logs in their Gestapo comments. We'll see what happens, but he's a Trump supporter, man. It's not just that he's a Trump supporter. He was talking about, he was doing Nazi conspiracies, but Hey, I breed rats for a living. I'd like to compare techniques. Please show rap porn. Okay, you guys really got to dial back the fucking psychotic shit. Please. Like, it's not. You know what? I'm going to show you the rap porn. I'm going to show you. It's 1845. Where is it? I'm going to show you the rap porn. Just so you understand how silly it is. That you wanted to see it. Okay? And the part that's like kind of suspicious. I'm just going to cover. I think that's correct. Hold on. Did I cover? There you go, dude. Here. Okay, here. You wanted to see it? Like, I'm only showing it to you because of how laughable it is. Okay? That's it. And there's like maybe a rat penis there. Okay. There's maybe a rat penis there. And like, not really though. It could not, it could be a rat pee pee. It could not be a rat pee pee. We don't even know it, but it is so laughably innocent that like the fact that I, maybe it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a dick. That's why I said maybe. So, it's like the most innocent hentai I've ever fucking seen in my entire life. Which is why it's laughable that I was like, oh yeah, like I shouldn't show it. But you guys made such a big deal out of it that I, got, I had to show it to you. Like, if my mom saw this, she's sitting behind me. If my mom saw this, I wouldn't find this to be like embarrassing. Okay? This is not Kurt Eichenwald style rat penis is what I'm saying. It's like, he was jerking off to some weird shit every american's life and that is it that's it that's it that, that was time that by the way speaking of time we got no time so i'm just gonna say it quickly it's top of the hour every hour six second ad break if you want to avoid the odds all you need to do is subscribe with a tier one subscription which is five dollars or a T twitch prime subscription which is you it's free the twitch prime is free all you need to do is connect your amazon prime to your twitch prime but the 60 second ad break, the contractual obligation is upon us right now. And I will continue the video, sorry. All right. That was uncomplicated because it is still too early to draw. Chat, make it seem like you're seeing the rat porn in the chat for all the people who are not seeing, who aren't able to be like, oh my God. Just right quick before the ads ends. Oh my God, I can't believe you're showing the rat porn.
Uh, I have the dumbest community. I swear to God. Did anyone even get an ad? Did anyone even get an ad, dude? Okay, well, the ad break is over in seven seconds. Did anyone even get an ad? <laughs> the ad break is over. Hey, I'm back. Thank you for the unban and also thank you for your chat and everything. You literally changed my life for the better. All right, I'm proud of you, Vaughn Vampy. Did you really show the rat dick? Dan's game. I got the ad, you asshole. Charisma and drive. She's kind of right. Like, from a Republican point of view, she is right. Like, Donald Trump is, whether we like to admit it or not, uh, a, a charismatic figure for Republicans. And as I've said already, he is kind of the Obama of racism. Part of the reason why he did get those numbers. Can you guys stop adding AOC? As I've said before, she's not here, but even if she was... That would be really fucking creepy that you guys are like constantly adding AOC. And now that I said that, you're going to do it. Let's just keep going. Putting aside yeah, nuke inbound. the wildly important not to deny that reality. And just a final... It is kind of... That is true. But you can say... You can say their politics are... Uh, bad or whatever. But like, we literally went from being the country that was built on slavery and genocide to literally having uh, to literally having a, a black president to then turning around with a tremendous white supremacist backlash electing Donald Trump who didn't even do the decency thing that uh, Republicans at least used to do with the dog whistles, who took the, who took the fucking Atwater strategy and was like, nah, fuck that. Back to, I guess, old white guy, but uh, with a black VP, female VP, who might be P. Quick point. Wait. Is he tweeting? What's he doing? He's still tweeting, dude? Fox News, Quinnipiac, ABC, WAPO, NBC, Wall Street Journal were so inaccurate with the polls on me that it really is tampering with an election. They were so far off in their polling and in their attempt to suppress that should be called out for election interference. ABC, WAPO had me down 17 points in Wisconsin the day before the election, and I won. Wait, what? But he didn't win in Wisconsin. What? But he lost Wisconsin. Wait, why did he say he won Wisconsin? And I won. He's saying, like, he won Wisconsin. In Iowa, the polls had us down four points, and I won by 8.2. Fox News, Quinnipiac were wrong and everything. <laughs> Wait, it's so funny because, like, I mean, time for the fucking Twitter flag. Twitter flag incoming. But it's funny that he's saying, like, oh, these people had it so wrong. Meanwhile, he's literally, like, wrong in the tweet itself. So if false information could be considered election interference, then you're kind of doing that right now. Pfizer vaccine was invented in BioNTech in Mainz, Germany. Pfizer is partner for manufacturing and distribution in the U.S. The cooperation with Pfizer started after the vaccine was invented. Definitely low, no link to Mr. Trump. Oh, here, I, I got to show you this too, yeah. Democrats are being sore losers. They refuse to acknowledge they lost the election. So what do they do? They cry malfeasance, wrongdoing, criminality. 
reality fraud. Democrats, more so than Republicans, seem to have a problem conceding defeat. Either the election system broke down or some mystery votes are hiding somewhere. You have a whole series of Democrats who've just said bluntly, if our candidates... By the way, in this election process, Democrats weren't even saying that the vote counting was falsified. They were saying that the insane voter suppression methods applied by Brian Kemp, who was running against Stacey Abrams at the time, were unacceptable. Which is hilarious because it is true. The guy who was controlling the elections was running against the person that he was running against. Like the guy who was running for a seat was literally also at the time responsible for controlling the elections. And he absolutely did interfere. He purged like thousands. I mean, he, he was, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, Brian Kemp was doing that even before he was running for governor. Like, to be fair, that's kind of what he does. He is a Republican Secretary of State. Of course he's going to do election uh, of voter suppression. Like, that's, that's a constant. So, it's literally his job to do so. But this time he did it in an election that he was also a part of. That he was participating in. That he was competing in. So, you know, that's what the Democrats correctly pointed to. And guess what? Stacey Abrams was so fucking pissed that she literally went back, got like $10 million from Michael Bloomberg, and just got out 800,000 people to register to vote. Half of those numbers being people of color. So don't fuck with Stacey Abrams. Like, you might disagree with her. I certainly do for some of the actions that she took. But goddamn, was she fucking pissed. I mean, it's, it's basically, I mean, it's an incredible story, really. Like, she was like, oh, yeah? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fucking purge people from the registrations? Uh, you're going to purge people's names from their voter registration rolls? Guess what, motherfucker? 800,000 extra voters. President wins attacking the sanctity. Oh, Brian Kemp says, oh, God, what is this face? You ugly motherfucker. Georgia's election results will include legally cast ballots and only legally cast ballots, period. Remember, Brian Kemp? Why did he put this, like, angry face? He's like, hmm, this is the face I'm making while I say this. I just find it really funny. Um... Oh, gee. I find it so funny because Brian Kemp was so out there. He was so fucking outrageous with his coronavirus response that the Trump team literally had to throw him under the bus. Donald Trump himself was like, no. Like, you, you're going too far. If you guys recall. He looks like a 1960s segregationist piss watching a black person vote. He probably was. He probably was watching a black person vote in the background. That's why he's making this face. There are way more Trump tweets. What is he doing? He's just blasting tweets. <clears throat> oh. oh, he's going to Newsmax what? now, dude. That's sad. That's sad. He's got nothing. He can't even post Fox News clips anymore. So he's posting Newsmax, dude. That's great. That's fucking great, dude. That's hilarious. Uh. Yeah, 
Who cares? Na 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 boo boo. Fuck you. You lost, bitch. I don't care. Let's move back to this. Hey, black man. Doubting time. I'm not going to miss. Steve Mnuchin's wife holding up those, like, uh, those money, like the, the fucking prints. Like the first prints of money with those fucking sexy driver's gloves is an image that I'll never be able to get out of my mind. It was so powerful. The sheet prints, yeah, where she was just like holding up the fucking sheet prints and she had those driver gloves on. Pull that, yo, Jamie, pull that shit up. You feel me? Like real Bond villain shit, dude. It's one of the more powerful images of this election cycle. Like I, I just, or not election cycle, this is just entire administration. This guy funds all your fucking Marvel movies, by the way. The reason, the reason why you get the same cape shit over and over again is this dipshit. For the record, if for those of you who don't know, <laughs> God damn, dude, this is a powerful image. It, it really speaks to me. What's that? That was a very, that was a very, very, very mid, very mid. John Oliver video like like kind of after the Boo Boo Bennett shit like after the Boo Boo Bennett stuff it's kind of hard here uh maybe not Marvel but he he did he Lego Ninja Go Disaster Artist King Arthur Legend of the Sword Fist Fight Lego Batman movie Collateral Beauty Rules don't apply. The accountant, the midnight man, Storks, Sully, up, oh, not Marvel, sorry, Suicide Squad, The Legend of Tarzan, Central Intelligence, Lights Out, The Conjuring 2, Keanu, what the fuck is Keanu? Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, Midnight Special, How to Be Single, In the Heart of the Sea. Pan, the intern, our brand is crisis, black mask, the man from uncle. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Just dog shit. Keanu is about a gangster cat. Oh, sick. That sounds very cool. Keanu is Key and Peel, you idiot. Oh, no way, dude. It's Key and Peel. Oh, you did Edge of Tomorrow? Okay. Edge of Tomorrow is good. Also, um, as, as far as... Dude, I think it's video game time, but I want to see if I can play Valhalla now. Let me see if I can even tur throw, throw it up. Throw it up. I'm trying to see all Warner Brothers films. It's installing V credits. What? What the fuck? Hello? Hello? What the fuck just happened? Am I still live? Oh, thank God I'm still live. What is happening? Bro. Bro, this is crazy. 
everything shut down. Like everything shut down. I I don't even know how this happened. Boy, can you can hear me, right? Yeah, okay. Like it, it almost shut down the entire computer. Discord was about to turn off. It shut down all my programs. No, no, no. There will be gaming tonight. Hold on. I'm just trying to... Dude, why would this happen? Like, why would this happen? Let's see if it works. Hold up. Please work. Your motherboard might be failing. I don't think so. Let's see if it works. <laughs> audio is cutting out. What do you mean audio is cutting out? Wait. Is the audio really loud or something? I think this like force restart or something. It like fucked up everything. Hold on. Cause like it, it turned off my G hub, my mouse. Read before playing. A very small percentage of individuals may experience a very small percentage of individuals might experience a problem. I am the reason, which is what I have, so I hope. Inspired by historical characters, this work of fiction was designed. It saves all data automatically. Uh oh. World premiere, I'm from Norway. Hold Get the triangle ready. to enable menu narration. Pr Brightness HDR helps improve dark colors. Colorblind mode, no. Okay, that's fine. Assassination sequence, blood, dismemberment, nudity. Aim action hold. Very good. Very good. Oh, this is very good. Interface language, text size small. Menu navigation cursor. Voice language. Nerdic. Oh my god. Wait. Explore. What is this? More icons will guide you towards your rewards. Feedback on world map opportunities for regular information. Minimal HUD. Okay. Skeld Vikinger. Berserker and Dranger. Gonna do Vikinger. I will be doing this. Default. Apprentice guards perception reduced. Regular guard perception master. Okay, assassin. Wait, should I turn off nudity? Should I have turned off nudity? It's in game nudity. Silence. Children of gods, and heed my tale of time's beginning. I'm so excited. All was dark. There was no sand. There was no sea. No earth. Nor sky. No grass. Nor wind. From this green came the giant Ymir, first of all beings. 
Proud Emir, cruelly killed. Yet from whose bones and blood and brains the world was made. The world you walk and war upon. Wait, is it little is it is it a little laggy? Hold on, I'm gonna turn on the game capture. Very good. It's time for the game capture. It's like we're playing Son of Boy, a God of War. Who's ready for God of War? Do you guys remember the God of War streams? It was fucking epic, dude. This is gonna be fucking awesome. Is this Atreus? Ooh, let's do it. Very good. I'm from Norway. I just changed it. Bird milk. Oh, that's so good! These guys sound like me! That's so good! Are the frames dropping? Oh, there you are, my little drinker! Go! So, you see our king? Yes, good. Come here. Uh, did you find the, the ring? Hold on, I'm gonna fix it after this cut cutscene. Quiet as a wood mouse. And surprise him with our gift. You hold it out like this. You look him in the eyes and you say, Stebjorn King. May our clans be forever bonded in friendship and in love. I think you can do that for me. Mm -hmm. Cut. Tonight, you will be the court that unite our people. Get up, Olaf. Stay lucid, friend. My sword is grown great. Okay, hold on. You are too bright. Turn the lights off. Okay, shut up. Fucking. Why is it that, like, every time I start playing games, everybody fucking loses their goddamn mind, dude? Just chill for a second, okay? Like, okay, I'm gonna fucking turn off some of the lights, okay? Just can you fucking calm down? Can you cool it? There it is. Uh, do you like it? It's not even spooky, but it's okay. It's time for some cozy gameplay. I want to maybe lower the graphics, you know? Or limit the FPS. Why does it say driver four four one six six? 
Oh, it's because my drivers are super outdated, huh? My drivers are so outdated. I'm ready to fight. So nice having all of these hearty folk in our home. I'm dancing, I'm dancing, I'm dancing like a kid. Your accent is a weird East Norwegian. Why are you being mean about the Norwegian accent? Okay, I'm done dancing. Maybe I'll dance some more. I shoot the heads of joyless hill dogs. I am by Odin's crew. And I snip the scraggle. Oh, no drink in your fist? Come on, I'll find you something. I, I have a tribute for your father. I'm too. Oh, I'm too young. Piece. That must be worth two sturdy long chips. Give it here. I'll pass it on. My father asked me, Sigurd. Suit yourself. But you're not getting any meat. Like a satyr works through my hammer. <laughs> What is this, sir? Uh, I will play with this. It's so big. In a battle on the northern way. Mother. Yes. Can we show Sigurd the can stones his dad gets the day? That's a good idea. That's in the morning. First light. Oh, that's it. She's she burly. <laughs> she's like she's a shield maiden. What is this? Is this Horizon Zero Dawn, dude? She looks like from Horizon Zero Dawn, a very political game. Unlike this game, which is not political. With hey, a male wait. protagonist. To stop you, the true king of Brugafolga. Tonight, we all made a new goal. King, may our clans be forever bonded in friendship and love. <gasps> Thank you, Eivor. Now and forever, I am pledged to you. <laughs> Hearken well in Hall of Kings. What the fuck? On ocean steed, my words gain wings. <laughs> what? Oh, then speed up. Some horrible shit's bring. about to happen, dude. <laughs> For noble deeds, I gotta sing. <laughs> the brave men slain, Valkyria waves. Rewards for strain to Valkyria. And horns resound the mighty horns. For those who fight, for those who fight. Ready to fight, Everybody knows them. They 
Those are the bad guys. Not very good. Not you, Paper. Not just yet. What Why is this one guy chilling? The curtains are raised. Nothing is true until it is severed from the branches of Yggdrasil. The last Assassin's Creed I played was the first one, so... Wait, let the Animus choose female Eivor? 
Default the animals will represent a stronger female or male memory stream. Play the male Eivor memory stream. I'm playing male. All right, I'll lock it in and push ahead to a time where these streams are more synchronized. Don't worry, no politics in this game. I chose male. Ragnar Lothbrok. Okay, this is How sick. This is literally Viking. The wolf kissed. Seventeen winters. Eighteen. Do I now haunt your dreams? Do I warm your loins? <laughs> You remember this? Oh, your father's axe. The weapon of a coward. A scorn snake. Ah, few things would please me more than to kill with this blade. I will kill I you. You would defy me to the death. No matter fighting what they do. Fighting for a glorious end. That I will not allow. You will live your final days enthralled as a slave, humiliated. Your death will be a lonely one. <laughs> Kill the rest of his crew! Make them suffer! Eivor Wolfkiss is no more! That name is dead to this world! You will be worth your weight in silver. <laughs> Uh. Ragnar Lothbrok Nate Silver <laughs> Nate you Silver move. And I take your eyes, you hear me? Norwegians be like, Hassan, you can't make fun of us, Luke. Wind's we also were sold into slavery. We can tack north, then cut west. Why don't you do a black person accent? Now, what did I just tell you? Am I gonna ever play the game or is it just cutscenes like? Jotwe <laughs> will skin you alive! Yeah, this is a no real Kajimbo moment, right? No fits for you. You must be my eyes. Slideshow frame rate? Wait, is the frame rate dropping again? Not great, okay, all done, all done, I'm gonna fix it. What? No, I don't wanna... Wait, why did it take me to the store? Bro, what the fuck? Upgrade drivers? Okay, well, I can't right now, so I just have to do... This is ultra high, really? Shadows, I will do high. Water is high, volumetric clouds, I'm gonna put high. Hey, what up? Canute is in here, dude. Listen, this is like this accent is is pretty much dedicated to to him. I have him to thank for. And also, wait, what? Oh, come on, bro. It fucking it 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 turned off. I got to turn it on again.
Canute and um, Norseman. Or was it Norseman? I'm not going to update drivers right now. The, the comedy show. It's a really good one. And on Netflix, Norseman, yeah. Knut and Norseman are the reason why I know how to make this accent. No, I don't want no benefits. Rations and arrows in your inventory menu. I think it's good now, right? It's good now, right? My crew is in danger. I need to reach them. Is this still choppy? It's worse, lol. Hold in sight. Dude. Better. I will eat their food. And I will loot their... I will take their loot. I'm a loot goblin. Oh, Even their berries Stop. is mine. Ever been to Norway? No. It's because I am from Norway. I know the accent is very convincing. So you believe that I'm actually from Norway, but I'm not. Oops. Wait, oh, I can focus. Well, too late on that, huh? Nice camera, dude. Birds are your friends? Okay, good to know. Good to know. Birds are my friends. So, how does this Assassin's Creed work? Usually, Assassin's Creed's are supposed to be in, like, cities and shit. And I, I feel like this is going to be... Whoa. Oh, okay. Basically, think of it like a... Like a blind playthrough for me. I, I haven't played an Assassin's Creed since the first one, so. like it's gonna kill me if I jump right how do I jump oh god oh no okay oh my god he's gonna be so cold he just got out of the water uh, that's it uh, that's it hypothermia 
I mean, that's just hypothermia. Like, that's waiting to happen. Best not to draw attention here. Wait, why don't I do it? R2. Wait, why didn't I? Why didn't it assassinate him? Oh, I don't have the hidden blade yet. Yeah, my arms are bare. I like that the crosshair is just a little baby, little baby snowball in the middle of my screen. Kind of. The raven allows for a greater view. Survey oh, wow. Area, okay. God damn, far as hell, dude. There's a lot of land to traverse. This is just like a Bobby. I'm going to drone strike you. That's a big, that's a lot of mileage. I got to go now. All right, let's go. It hasn't come out yet. Should stay out of sight. This place is heavily guarded. Where are they? My favorite thing when I'm playing a new game is people going. My favorite thing is when I'm playing a new game and people go. So what's up? Is it worthy of a buy? Dude, we just started. Like we literally... We just started, man. Like, I, I don't know. A clash of iron. There's fighting nearby. Thank you, old hound. You live. I do. Slipped away in the sword clash. And what of you? Kyotve tried to sell me off. A mistake he will regret. Not today he won't. I saw him board a ship at Aval's Nest not long ago. Sailed east, leaving our crew behind. There must still be time to save our men. I will find them. You ready the longship? You glory hound. You would take the rescue for yourself, so the victory song is written about you. I could storm the beach then. Slay two dozen men, seize our dragon boat, and hoist the sail in triumph. Up to you. You glory no, hound, no, you! I will take the beach. A far more dangerous path. You search the longhouse for our crew. Oh, and here. This corpse will not have need of it. Go. I will meet you by the ship. This doesn't look that good so far. It's good if you like fucking Vikings. I haven't really played any like Assassin's Creed games uh, in a while, but the combat looks great so far. 
it's ghost of tsushima uh, vikings edition like what's not to like about that i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of complexities to it that i'm unfamiliar with so far because whoa it's dark as hell in here you trail me like a lovesick lad go save our crew I will save our crew. Like a love sick lad. Should this warriors crawl through Avil's nest like lice? If I use the main gate, I may attract attention. They have an attack on sight here. Stretch your wings, Sunan. I mean, how big is this? Turn around, brother. Come on. Oh, I can mark him with the raven? Nope. Shit. How do I mark him? L2 while on bird. Wait, how do I, uh, I can't do that. I can't mark him, huh? Okay. Well, this drone is kind of scuffed, dude. Can I even attack with this drone? Get closer with the bird. I feel like they'll spot me, no? Pressing X doesn't mark, chat. But, like, you can't mark the enemies. I think I need to find a, a, a spot. Like, to infiltrate. You know what I mean? The blue arrow. Okay, I located it. Must have been the wind. You can only attack when Middle East, otherwise illegal. I'm not gonna do the ad right now. Damn, it's gotta hurt. All those pine combs, dude. Oh, very good. Very good. That's a headshot.
One tab, baby. Oh, I can I I can carry and hide bodies, right? Wait, can I disguise myself as that? No, right? No, okay. I don't know, man. Why are you guys yelling at me? Like, you're being fucking lame, dude. Chill. Oh, freaking no, dude. The long house. The crew should be inside. Oh, he fell right in there, so he's good. Okay, this is the big house. Very good. Time for the apple. Okay, there very. Should be an opening in the roof. This is a. There's a whole lot of open area here with no, no dudes in sight. will miss your neck unpleasant for both of us time to die i want to make a mess of it back out Silly bitch. He's by himself here. an axe in my hand i owe you nothing raven shit yours is a clan of thralls and peasants you lay that axe aside or die by mine you should be on a slave ship to ireland wolfkist to ireland but if you oh, wish to be top my of the first hour, every hour, six second advert coming to you oh, right now ladies and gentlemen and happy to receive you you just killed yourself, Erki. That's a top of the hour, every hour, six second hour break coming to you. And I gotta pee anyway, so there you go. Stop it in between a cut scene because he said Ireland. There it is. Ireland and the Norwegian accent. Hold on, I gotta pee pee real quick. Hold on. Hold the fuck on.
All right, then. Go on, you cunt. It's time. It's time to get back to the game. How dare you? Blood! I will sell you to hell herself! Wait, how do I dodge? Oh shit, I don't know what the buttons are. Kneel, wolf kissed, and I will spare your life. Shut your hole and fight! Wait, 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 how do I dodge? How do I dodge? How do I dodge? Oh shit, now I know. Okay, Die, got it. Sack of shit! Stamina is consuming, dodging and missing an attack. But now with stamina, you can't dodge or block until it's fully replenished. Stamina is restored over time and when landing a right attack. Oh, shit! What? Oh! Honor bound! Honor bound! What's your opinion of this game so far? Mother, Pretty good. You should have held on to this until the bitter end. If I give my life, will you spare my clan? Pick up your axe! Kill them all! I'm not playing on easy, no. I'm playing on very easy, not just easy. Underbound, run! I'm playing on extra journalist difficulty. Avon, are you bewitched? Unbind us. What? Oh, yes, of course. I got the Raven Clan armor. Unbind us. Ah, my friend, you have my thoughts. Even if your wits were somewhat rattled. Listen here. If you can breathe, you can fight. Now come. We take back our ship. You do not need to tell us twice. Honor bound. Inventory weapons, main hand. Secondary hand, two handed weapons, bows. Damn, I have a happy trail. Should I go naked? <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. I got some. I'm getting drippy with it. Oh, look at that! I got those like arrow thingies, dude. A helmet? No helmet for me yet. I'll wear the Raven Clan. Is this two handed? A fine bearded axe. Die from Norway! 
That's what I thought. You will all die for what you did to my parents and to my clan. I'm from Norway. You're dead now. Let's continue. Is that the woman's? Where is he from, guys? I missed it. I'm from Norway. Weak woman's. What? Assassin's Creed always been this like the combat is a little crazy like it's just kind of kind of hack and slashy right now I don't know if it's um die Hey, didn't it used to be a stealth game and stuff? All right, let's go. Oh, damn. Wait, which way do we go? I don't think that's the right way. Oh God. Uh oh. Oh no. Rather silent, Eivor. Anything to say for the mess you led us to? We suffered no losses in this fight, and the men who humiliated us are dead. What is that to say? Am I going the right? What is this gold? Like, what was that? I just missed some gold, huh? Okay, where am I supposed to be going? All the way down to Fernberg. Like Sing you bastard. Selfish, reckless, blind, boneheaded, and I smell like blood and shit. I like my version better. Oh Here shit, no, 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 open sail. Here Sorry. Someone is setting up an outpost on that island. Shot of his men, gnawing at any piece of open land like dogs worrying a bone. Even with you half in the grave, we could easily take them. Trail down. Let's do it. Are you coming? Should I not? This is like Minecraft, dude. I must be careful now. I have to dock? Did I damage the ship? Oh no. Your 
Moskva will come for us now, harder and stronger than before. No surprise there. This war has spun on for three generations. I hardly expected. Your hatred for that man burns bright wolf kissed. Wait. I could warm my balls on it. Would you not prefer? Oh, it's just not letting me dock. Okay, well. I don't want to go following the coast. Just I want to. All right, I'll just go to the map. I'll, I'll just. hatred can make you careless. What he did to your father, he did to all of us. You are not in this fight alone. Bro, this thing, this thing's got some gas, dude. Got some gas. will scold you for setting out against his wishes of course he will is that not something you worry over i worry only that our king will not see that i'm right until it's too late what about sigurd what would he say if sigurd were here he would be sitting beside you wiping the blood from his axe and smiling into the breeze i'm pressing right and left on the d-pad is not letting me it's not letting me make them sing a song and what will you tell our king about this misadventure? Only the truth. He attacked you at this fortress, killed his men, and weakened his control of this land. Will you mention the part where you lost your crew and were nearly sold as a troll? Will that be part of your saga? If there's a skald who dares sing that verse, it will be his last song. Use horn, torch, cloak, me. Whoa! This is crazy. Oh shit, shit, shit! Oh, no, the sail! Oh, oh. oh my god, I can't believe they oh, stopped so quickly. I was like, that's over. Like, I, I thought we were gonna hit the. Thank God, dude. Thank God. All right, well, you're all good now. You can leave. Well, well, if we thought we had lost you, Eivor, for good this time. A warm welcome as always, Landry. You look like red and shit. What happened? Nothing to crow about, except to say the men who delayed us are dead. And how are you? Well enough, though I have spent many tiresome days calming the rages of our king. He is not happy with you. I expected as much. And what of Sigurd? Has he returned from his raids? My husband should be home today. The last we heard, he was approaching Stavanger. Good to hear. We have need of his courage. Sigurd will not save you from his father's wrath, Eivor. You should know that by now. Did your raid not go as planned? They rarely go as planned. But we killed many of Kyoto's warriors. And there was this. My father's axe among the dead. Ah. After so many years. You should take it to Gunnar. He will give it back to Gunnar! <laughs> A good idea. After I see our king. That I do not advise. No, she has He's a husband. A from the north. I can wait. This displeases me. A cloud hangs over you. Is something wrong? Seeing my father's axe after 17 winters, it stirred something in me. A feeling I've not had since the day he was killed. Since the day I got this. Memories of past agonies. Of sadness and pain. I should speak with Valka. She could help me make sense of my feelings. Take your time getting set. Twenty. I will see you at the longest. No. I think you have lost your edge, Eivor. Just like that axe. 
Maybe Gunnar can help you with both. I will let you know. I think I spoiled you guys. Eivor, looking rough you are. Welcome home. I think I've spoiled Eivor, you with my did you accent. Bring us any treasure? I returned with a boat and a full crew. That is worth more than silver. So that no treasure count. then? You need silver and jewels. He's like, so you broke, <laughs> bitch. You got no Not treasures. Anything. Not today. The fish aren't biting. Too many passing boats churning the water. I lack the patience for pole fishing. I would have better luck with my bow. Shooting fish with a bow. That could work. Shut up, bro. How do you know? You never went on a raid. You shut up. Skill tree notes types spending skill points global power equip notes and increase the power. New beginning. I can just go melee. I can go stealth. Or I can go range. I will go melee first. LSD is poggers. <laughs> what the fuck? Nice name, dude. Very good name. Quest log. Territories, quest and trekking. I don't care. Speak to Gunnar the blacksmith. Reach Valka's hut. Hey, what is this? Well, look who it is. This guy's Practicing up to no good. Practicing your wordplay, Albus. <laughs> ah, Eivor. <laughs> the only mouth in Midgard from which I fear mockery. You taught me the art of writing poetry, old friend. It is only natural that I surpass you. Oh, Vinky? Yeah, no, this guy's up to no good, I can tell. Quick flight. Right Scuff here, John right Snow. Now. What do you say? Wait, what does he want to do? Let's Fuck it, try I'll try flight. it. I always put a few coins down as a wager. Most of those who enjoy flighting have an equal fondness for betting. Wait. But today, we'll abstain. Let me he's, begin. He's I'm a ready. bard with the name Elvis? In flighting, it's key oh. to match cadence and rhyme. It's as much about sound as it is about time. So be careful in choosing the words that you say. With your teaching, I'm sure my next challenger I will slay. Mm, no. The rhyme is good. No, I fucked it up. Many words upsets the rhythm. Now, let us examine meaning. <clears throat> I'm In flighting, deeply. you'll need I'm to be cutting deeply. and keen. I'm it's deeply. about wielding wit more than venting your spleen. If I tell you you're foolish and stupid and dull... Then I'll make a fine goblet from out of your skull. Then I will make a fine goblet from out of your skull. Not bad, not bad. The rhyme is there, the sound is good, but... Consider that I said you were silly, and you told me you would kill me. At times, it might be best to remain on theme. Something to consider. Last one. So go, then, and conquer the world with your wit. Go be clever, be quick, show your spirit and grit. I look eagerly forward to seeing how you fare. I will fly without birds. I will make you regret what you talk. I will fly you with flourish and best you with... I will fly you with flourish and best you with flair. Perfect, yes. <laughs> you could destroy me with such a line. I did There's it. There's still much for you to learn about flighting, but I'm confident you'll pick it up. Happy to help you learn if you'd like Hop to come back again. Hop in the Discord. Again. Perhaps I will. Thank you, Aldous. I'm gonna split you like a split core. My man's still pausing. Everybody is bored. Eivor, come. Wolf kissed. Gunnar. Welcome back. 
Wolf Luna, Kiss is pretty badass. I have something here you might like to see. Thunderclap of Thor! Is that your father's axe? I have not seen this beauty since, well, for some time. I forged this weapon long ago. Still looks good. So, one of my fine. What's up with I the think. homies? Like, is it everyone in Norway just plate, fucked up? But it swings well. They got no fucking health care back I then? Is that what's going on? Everybody's hand. got scars everywhere. And as luck would have it, I have one ingot left for the job. Are you sure? The they got sick pads, though. But in future, bring your own metal ingots. I cannot forge them from empty air. Norway was Republican back then? That's true, didn't didn't they rape and pillage pretty hardcore too? Enhanced quality. Yeah, and slavery. Actually, Norway can't be Republican back then because Vikings had like pretty decent uh, women's rights, no? Like kind of, at least in their own villages. That should do it. <clears throat> Anything else? That's all for now. Return any time. Women could get a divorce? Okay, well, that's pretty poggers, dude. That's like... That is a lot that's very political. Hi. Can you point me to some good hunting grounds? I could. But I don't want every iron foot with a bow scaring away the game. Bring me three deer antlers to prove your skills, and I might just have a story for you. A worthy challenge. I will see you soon. What? A mild hunt? Just give me the rounds, woman. What are you doing? I just want to do the main quests there. Family matters. Let's go. I'm not doing a fetch quest. What is this? Assassin's Creed 1? It must be finished now. If you have any other business, it may be wise to do it now. Let him cool down. I could speak to Volker first. Get this weight off my mind. The king is not going anywhere. Why are we playing video games when there's a contested election? Because I'm not your fucking new slave, dude. Okay? That's why. Come back tomorrow when I'm covering the news, bitch. This fucking guy. A contested election. What the fuck is contested? We're learning about the Norwegian healthcare right now. Meanwhile, you're over here fucking complaining, dude. I'm covering the news in Farnberg! I'm covering the news in Farnberg. You do not understand me. Oh, Berserker armor. Wait, this is literally better. Damn, I'm getting hella good. No. Forty five, forty five, ten, fifty four, fifty five, twelve, speed forty eight, forty seven. How do I make the bear helm visible? Is it like no? No, he went. 
How do I do that? How do I? R3 on the head slot. Oh, there we go. Okay, the seer lives in the mountains of North Farnberg. The clan is happy to see Ava returning. <laughs> Equip the other hack, axe on main hand. Which one's my main hand? That's the main hand, right? Okay, where the fuck is that main mission now? Yeah, I don't really care about the codex. Here's popular for gamer shroud. You can ask him if he can hook you up and get you on C9. I think they would do it. Pog. Wait, does this mean I'm a furry now? No, I'm not. Shut up. Okay. Family matters. There's like a bunch of people I got to go to, huh? Okay, got it. Use the gods. All right, Tekla. I'll outdrink you. Hey, Tekla. What is brewing? Alvis tells me this brew is too strong. Think you can handle a few rounds? Ha! Not like waving an axe around, is it? Yes, you're right. Drinking takes a strong gut. Your, your fursona is kissed by a wolf true this is true my fursona is kissed by a wolf why do you have to be mad Swain have you designed any new tattoos a few worth looking at Show me the tattoos. Let me have a look. Go ahead. Combed beard, exotic beard, original beard, fancy beard, classic beard. I look like shit without the beard. Damn, I'm hot, dude. I look like Hunter Biden, dude. <laughs> yeah, hair is fine. Maybe the beard I will do exotic. Or fancy. Should I do fancy? I'll do fancy beard. A hell sign? Oh my god, dude. This is so sick. Okay, the Yorman Sagder is not as good as the Hell one. Raven Watch. <gasps> the eye stuff. Yo. Techno Viking. True. Okay, this is sick. Good. Need anything else? I'll be See going. You later, sure. Yo, what's up with these? What's up with Vikings? Like, were they just this into? 
Were Vikings this into tattoos? Didn't they also put some fucking cool ass runes on their weapons and shit too? And you guys were making fun of me. And you were saying that's not true. All right, where's the fucking the seer lives in the mountains north of Fjernberg? Toby, trading a needle for an arrow, I see. Eivor, can you teach me the art of archery? Well, I would be happy to. See how I'm standing. Plant your feet in the ground, no wider than your shoulders. Breathe in as you draw the arrow back. Look at the point you want to hit. Now imagine the arrow passing straight through it and far beyond. Breathe out, then release. Don't be afraid, dude. I don't get it. I already showed you what to do. I don't know where, where I'm. Where are you going? Come back. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Go back. Oh, you've come back. I don't want to. There's a guy right there. He's gonna die. Shit! Fire! Let's keep our eyes open. Okay, I did it, right? Turkbarma, Turkbarma, what's up, dude? Daphne. Top left are your quests. Go up the mountain. Isn't this the mountain? Where are you going? Come back. Oh, you've come back. Oh, up here. Now, I have something for you. See, all in the eye. Thank you, Eivor. As a gift, I could design a new tattoo for you. Something to decorate your scar. A kind offer, but I want this scar visible. Oh, I did not mean to offend. In any case, I do have a tattoo for you. awfully close to my face uh, but I like it all right this is the last person to talk to I will not be playing dice Little with dice you never caused any harm ah Orlok Orlok a game of skill Jormungandr <laughs> how about the game Maybe later. I if gambling you is mind, a I'll sin. Be here. Gambling is haram. Uh. Okay, I've literally done all the quests, dude. Oh, this fucking quest wanted me to. Complete another quest. Well, that's oh come on, dude. They they really didn't do a good job with that, dude. They they should have fucking.
Am I going the right way? Okay, I am going the right way. Unless I like climb the mountain, I guess. Cinematic camera. This is very Red Dead Redemption. Why am I? Why am I crouched on the horse like this? I'm slob squatting on the horse. Is this how they ride in Norway? I passed it. I passed it a long time ago. Why did no one tell me? I was reading chat. <laughs> Wake up, you fool. That's what I thought. Uh, you stupid idiot! Oh, there's always a seer. Okay, this seer is normal looking though. I need silence to hear the songs of nature. Hamuram. Hamuram. Svala. She gives praises and she is greeted. For your hearing, I hearken. O oh, ancient ones, great Odin, great Freya. I give you thanks for your gift of Seder. I gotta turn on the she lights because this is hurting my eyes blessed. a little bit, chat. Eivor, <sighs> it has been some time. I'm sorry. What brings you so far to see me? I... I have come for your advice. On a private matter. Come. Is your mother well? Her mind is a jumble. She speaks to spirits. I fear her final winter has come, but she has me. Now, let her speak to your needs. I have had a vision, a powerful vision. It may have been my battle lust or a delirium caused by the cold, but... Describe it for me. After 17 years, I saw my father's axe again. And when I touched it, the vision came on fast. There was a wolf howling in fears, and then a figure, a gray beard in a cloak with a single eye. He bid me follow him. Ah, the high one. He calls to you. Perhaps he means to speak with you, deliver a message. Only through Seder will you see more clearly and unravel the threats that sit tangled upon your mind. This will not take long. What are you brewing? An elixir to loosen your hur and unwind your thoughts. Your hur? You will enter a waking sleep and journey to the world of dreams. Please. It may confuse or My disorient hur. you. But you must take note of all you see. Drink. Yes, I still need a if PS5. You seek true understanding. 
Whatever that chatter was. Oh shit. The game just started for those of you asking if you're just joining us. Oh my god, I got a bear on my arm too? I saw nothing, Volka. Felt nothing. Harvey! Harvey! I walk among the dead. Where Sigurd. are you, Mutig? Sigurd. Brother, when did you arrive? My PS5 retail will I get mod? No. You will just get retail price for your PS5. <laughs> I hope you get a PS5, but I will spray your perfume first like the girls. There was no other way, Harvey. Our fates are fixed. What? Sigurd! I thought he survived, right? Am I misremembering? I thought he survived it. He just fell off the horse. We. Sigurd! <laughs> what is. I know what it's a happened? dream, but. This was not for you, Javi. I thought I... What was that? Tell me everything. I, I, I was on a mountain in a, in a violent blizzard, climbing toward the summit, following a, a wolf. Mm -hmm. Yo, I have such horny fucking fans. Someone goes, yo, she bad. I saw Odin and the Nornir spinning the threads of fate. They were watching me. Y'all would fuck the seer, dude? N not watching. They were showing you the way forward. Your life. Your path. What lies before you. And where it ends. And the wolf was eager for my attention. As if it were... Beckoning me to follow. You are the wolf kissed. Fated to carry its mark for life. In this case, it might represent your ambition, or your fear. I saw the gates to Odin's Hall of Slain Champions. They opened for me. Shades of Valhalla, for which you are destined. I do not know what else to say. My, my memories are faint, hazy. Did you reach the summit of this mountain? Someone in the chat says she doesn't have yes. bangs? So no, Hassan wouldn't there, fuck it? Yes, it's wounded, true. In pain. His fighting arm was missing. Then the wolf reappeared. The oh, she thick though, dragon, never mind. Twisted and terrible. It fixed its eyes on me and struck. 
than I awoke. I literally have a better accent than these people. The gods favor you, Eivor. They always have. I have a better Norwegian accent glory, than they and do. And you will earn your place in Valhalla. But these portents carry a darker truth. The missing arm, the trail of blood. And Chat knows the it. You will betray your brother, Sigurd. That is the meaning of your vision. That cannot be right. I would never betray Sigurd. He's my brother, my family. The Nordnir have spoken, and this is their message. No, this is wrong. Oh, you misunderstand. That cannot be right. You will betray Sigurd. Odin fought against his fate. It can be done. Wait, one of the chatters might actually help me. With the PlayStation. Qualia. No, no. Stop saying no elf. I'm saying someone in the community might uh send me might redirect me their their one of their amp one of their orders. This game Wait, where are we going? What is this like what? Stealing from chat? Speak the Randri. Where do I go now? Why don't I just press travel? Find your own way to the PS5. Well, turns out we might find a way to the PS5 already because of the community. All you motherfuckers talking to me about the PlayStation event, just leave. Must be finished now. Just leave. The for his best mead, so the talks are concluded. It should be safe to enter. I'm ready to face the thunder. I will speak with the king now. Excellent, King Stierbjorn. I will take this proposal to my nephew. I believe he will see the wisdom in it. Good. It is all I can hope for. May the... May the winds favor your voyage, Guthormer. Eivor, come forward and explain in plain words why you have willfully disobeyed my commands. Do you mock me? <clears throat> I do not mock you, King. I mean to embolden you against your enemies and your own poor judgment. Some of these Nords look you Italian, know bro. You nothing of my judgment. You know nothing of my plans and strategies. Sigurd would agree with me. My son might agree with you, but he would obey me. He knows his place. Not as well as he knows his father. Imagine you are harassed by an enemy with warriors that vastly outnumber your own. What profit does open war bring? Would it not be better to work quietly through diplomacy, gaining alliances? Waiting until the day our numbers outweigh our enemies and our victory is guaranteed. We have no allies. We can't negotiate with Rizzi. Your diplomacy is cowardice. Do we have any allies to speak of? Or is that your excuse to do nothing? Your confidence blinds you to so much in plain sight, Eivor. Day and night. Yo, y'all fucking cry, dude. You cry a lot. Okay, here. Here you go, okay. Here, is that better? Is that better, dude? Is that is that fucking better, dude? Huh? 
left, top right. I shouldn't even have the chat on. I don't know why I have it on, to be honest. Top left shows objective. Okay, top right then? What does top right show? Anyway, it's top it's top of the hour every hour, six second hour break. Um moving to the center. Moving to the center. Bottom left. Top right shows map. Check LSF Babela. Bottom left, maybe? Hit a green screen already for fuck's sake. No, I'm not going to do that. I think bottom right is fine. I, I think y'all were just being little babies, if we're being honest. If I, like, make it a little bit smaller, it's all right. Here, you can, like, see a little bit of the chat. I pay the drama about you, dude. I, I oh my toil God, I don't to forge fuck. ties with clans to the north. <laughs> Very soon, you will see the fruits of my efforts. Only then will you understand. Is that all? I'm at a loss with you, Eivor. When I took you in as my own, never did I imagine such disrespect from the child of Varin. Your father was a fine man, just and loyal to me. He died bravely so that we might live. He died a coward, Lord. A fate I will not mirror. Why do you carry such a useless burden? Let it go. Think only of the days to come, of your future and the victories at hand. My honor has been stained. Until it's wiped clean, I want nothing else. I refuse to pick at that wound again. If there is something that can chase these shadows from your I don't know thoughts. what's up with the audio. Sigurd has come. Down at the docks. His ship is here. Sigurd has come. Where are you, Sigurd? You little bastard. I already played the ad, didn't I? Hey, hey, careful with that one. Hey, boy! See you good. <laughs> oh, look at you, blood soaked drinker. What, have you been worried without me? I told you, oh, that's my cured. brother, right? Salt cured by Kinga. I smell the stink of a dozen kingdoms in your beard. It's just a star. Randvi, my dear wife, your husband returns, bringing gifts and riches to share. And new friends, I see. Yes. Basim and Hytham, we met in Miklagant, and they showed me her buried secrets. Oh my god. We are grateful to Sigurd Ezio. for his invitation and eager to pay tribute to your king. My oh my god, this dude is straight as assassin. Keeps, if you're standing safely beside him. He must like you. Ah, Eivor. Save the introductions until our bellies are full. I will see my father. Tell him of my time away. This morning we traded with a ship passing south. They told us Eivor the Wolf Kist was captured by Kyrtve's men. They must have cut the tail short. I killed my captors and recovered my crew. And for that your father scolded me. You know where I stand, brother. Nothing short of war will dislodge Kyotve from our lands. But he disagrees. I know. I know. Father thinks too much and acts too little. Today that changes. I promise you. <laughs> By the end, the name Kyotve the Cruel will be a curse on the lips of a drunken fool. I doubt Miklagard is Istanbul, bro. My son! What's up with the fucking brightness, dude? There's like some shit going on with the fucking brightness, dude. 
Is it on gameplay? Where is the brightness? Meek the guard literally means it's not. Oh, wait, really? Oh my God, no way. That's sick. Miklengard! Uh. Vikings were the, uh... Okay, I gotta look at the fucking man here. Turn off bright... Turn off HDR. Oh, I'm on controls. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm so stupid. Vikings were incredibly gay. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Isn't it better now or is it too much? Welcome home, uh, father. I think it's better now. Yeah, dude, I'm looking at it right now. You couldn't even see Tonight, before. We feast and celebrate your return, Sigurd. The tables are laid with barley and lamb. It's supposed to be sunny, you meat. fucking fools. And no more, I beg you. I want nothing you would not serve at all. Look, thank you for Let the fifth and tier one gift you. subs. I bring gifts and tales from faraway lands. People couldn't see After before. After two winters away, I am full up with both. Very well, very well. Come inside. And when we are fat and satisfied, father, we will talk of Kyotve and his clan, and how we may end their terror once and for all. He has dogged us too long, shamed us for too many seasons. Yeah. I know this. Eivor knows this. It ends now. Yes, of course, when the time is right. My Viking has the fuckboy haircut. Through Rusland, we barreled down the Volga River, raiding as we went, shadowy tribes hurling spears at our ship. At Miklagard, we saw men bedecked in riches as vibrant as the Bivrest itself. And these we took for our troubles, of course. We sailed to Rome, then Africa, past oceans of sand, warriors of all colors, and beauty the eyes must weep to behold. Mission, listen to his now tale. I have returned, with riches and glory to share with my family, my friends, my eyes for Strengir. So take what you desire from my horn. For this, this is only a taste of things to come. Tomorrow, the Raven Clan starts anew. Skull, Sigurd. Skull! And you, Eivor, come. I have something special for you. What's going on? You are Basim. You have a good memory. And you have no meat. Can I fix that? Sigurd spoke often of you on our journey, called you his right arm, a celebrated warrior. I am honored to meet you. Likewise, Basim. And how did you come to meet my brother? He sat down in Constantinople some months ago to rest and resupply, he told me. But I knew otherwise. Men with eyes that gleam like his are always up to something more. I think he wished to raid the Hajj of Sophia. That sounds right. I will not bore you with the details of the meeting, but I liked your brother from the first. I saw something in him that captivated me, as if a forgotten memory of an old friendship had suddenly resurfaced. He has that effect on people. Enjoy your evening, Basim. 
It is mosque now, brother. I thought long and hard on a gift worthy of you. You have snared my curiosity, brother. What is it? Not yet. Drinks first. It'd be sick if we could raid Constantinople with the... It must end with me so with the Viking, with the Viking. shouting at the shadows of trolls. And you want me to sail with you on these honey waves? Yes. You are stuck with me, Dringur. Now drink. <laughs> oh, you would put Thor to shame. You have been away too long, brother. You do not know the spiced kick of Tekla's meat. Mmm. It does have a new taste. I like it. He came in it. It's good to have you back, Sigurd. Yes. I've missed this terribly. When I first met Basin, I regaled him with tales of our homeland. And it was then I felt a hard longing to return at once. These tattoos are kind of shit. Come. This Bro, did these guys have nothing better to do? They fucking traveled for months these all the way from Istanbul to Norway. The Abbasid Caliphate. They are a clan not joined by blood, but by a common idea. A brotherhood of shadows executing their own form of justice. In my time with them, they shared many of their most hidden secrets, for which I am grateful. And now, I gift one of these secrets to you. A weapon for the finest warrior I know. Pog! Beautiful craftsmanship. What kind of smith makes a weapon like this? It is less a weapon Will it kill? than a tool. One we have used for centuries to fight injustice and evil. <laughs> Mentor, I must protest. This is deeply unorthodox. Our wrist blade is a sacred Do tool. Do not make a fetish out of cold metal, Haifa. What matters is the mind of the one who wields it. Please, try it on. The blade should ride on the underside of your arm to conceal it from your target. I have no wish to hide this, and I would rather not make the same mistake you two have. I like it. This is no mistake. This is a voluntary sacrifice to prove our devotion to the... A good start, Eivor. But you must learn how to use it effectively. Outside. This is not something for all eyes. Lead on. Damn, that other guy's gonna assassinate me, bro. He's... Hytham is looking at me like I'm... Hytham is not happy, this dude. This clan of yours, it has a name? Indeed. But among the tenants of our creed... Hold on, it is a little overblown. Hold on, hold on. I will need to fix this. I am going to need to fix the brightness a little bit. Maybe like a 8. I think that would be good. 8 in the brightness is very good. Too much to outsiders. In time, you may learn more. But not here, where the walls and trees may have ears. I look forward to it. Here. Let me lead you through our most basic techniques. Wielded with skill and care, our blade delivers a singular killing blow. As you near your target, find your window to strike. Timing is essential. Nicely done. I have not seen a blade so sharp. Some targets are trickier than others. Keep that in mind before you strike. Attempt. 
take that one down from the ledge. Aren't we drunk right now? It's probably not the best time to do this, huh? No? Okay, get up there. Oh, there it is. Damn it. That's it. How about a challenge? Leap down upon that target from above. Dude, these are so these these cinematics are so sick. Use your surroundings when possible. Strike from that haystack, for instance. I already did this. Strike. Mentor, does Avor intend to join us? Not that I am aware. Then why offer him the blade? Surely we have more. Python. Hush. You wield the blade well. Let us leave Eivor to enjoy his gift in peace. Come. Eivor, let us walk to the docks and take in the night air. I'm what do you make of my you? new friends? They seem generous and menacing in equal measure. I know what you mean. They have learning, too. They wield numbers and writing as if it were magic. Basim has shown me so much about the world, all of which I will share with you when the time is right. This guy is gonna fuck me. Oh, I miss the smell of this land. Have you returned for good? Or do you mean to join this Shadow Brotherhood? Leave all that aside, Ivor. Tonight we are family again. The here and now is what matters. Our kinship. Our clan. Our glory. I missed you, brother. Your clear head and your courage. We have not had enough of both in recent months. <laughs> you flatter me, Wolfkist. Keep it up. From here to Valhalla, I will always be on your side, Sigurd. Always. This fjord has grown too small to contain me. Or I too large. There is so much more beyond these stony fangs that rise around us. England, Ireland, Francia, all greener pastures, ripe for the plucking. Oh, this is sick. Tomorrow, we make new war on Kyrtve. He's gonna betray and me, but it's fine. I'm gonna take over Ireland. And from there, I'm gonna take over England and give it to the Irish. For us. I'm with you. Only say the word. Good. Get some rest and return. Gonna take over England time. and give it to the Irish. A revenge. I'll call it the revenge of the potato. It's called payback, you fuckers. The Nordnir have spoken. You will betray. No, Sigurd. this is wrong. That cannot be right. Ah! Odin fought against his fate. It can be done. Oh. You will betray Sigurd. Well, that was easy to know. Shit. Kjotve's warriors. Wait, what the fuck? Can you make fun of more cultures? I mean, literally... I don't even know. Oh, where have the Raven? Gives a bonus to all Raven and Lion gear. How do I get like different skills? Is this it? Like, how do I get more health? Oh, stomp. That's sick. I want that. That's 
One, two, three. I can get that, I think. Or one, two, three backstab. Health is on the right. Oh, that opens up to new trees. I gotta... Bottom right is... Stealth Recon's pretty good. The heart? Oh, got it. I think I'm going to do that. Oh, fuck. The stealth recon takes a while to get to. All right. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely try to get to that. Headshot damage is good. Stealth recon is good. Rude awakening. Wait, should I kill him? This one would not have come alone. I should find the others. Wait, those aren't... Those are friendly. You can respec any note at any time. Yeah, I saw that. Is there no one who will go around with me? Hey, Tekla. What is brewing? Alvis tells me this brew is too strong. What? Think you can handle... What the fuck? Ha! <laughs> Not like waving an axe around, is it? These Drinking people not takes know. a strong gut. Do these people Do not know? Freak. They're not they aware. The gods. I need to let them know. I need your eyes, my friend. Is that where they're at? Is this it? Oh my god, chat is so fucking cancer. You know I like backseat gaming. You know I like backseat gaming. Is the are these the guys? No, those are my guys. Why ch why chat? Why? Other streamers have played this game, so I know there's some motherfuckers in here that has already seen it. Yeah, I'm gonna upgrade the Raven for sure, but... Wait, what? How did they get in here? These assassins are like... Hi. Can you point me to some... Dude, worthy is, are you joking, dude? Where? What the fuck?
asked about this lamp, my friend. Go. Go. Okay, I marked it. I think I marked it. Wait. 3,000 miles, 3,000 meters away? What? Hold on, there's no way. What the fuck did I just mark? Three thousand meters away, that's crazy. What do you see? Am I going the wrong way? What the fuck? Dude, I'm, I'm so mad. What, what is happening? Why am I going the wrong way? Oh, Jesus Christ. There's fucking two markers. Oh, I got it. All right, all right. That was a little hard, but... We're on the right path there, brothers. Brothers, we're on the right fucking path here. Don't you worry. Don't you fucking worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a wee thing, brother. Damn, I'm just... Taking on opponents one at a time could be the best course of action when in proximity of a hidden space. Is Instructions tell me what you see and how many ships warrior supplies also not visits from Yarls and other important people Learn what you can and report to me directly Dude our pussy ass Yarl Our pussy ass Yarl does not want to fight Meanwhile Kyotwe is trying to kill us This is unacceptable Take it off. Exploration mode? Wait. Oh my god, I almost assassinated it. I thought that was a Please person in the village. Grows. We do not have the men to storm Kyotve's fortress. The losses would ruin us. The losses have ruined us, father. Until we cut off this serpent's head, it will poison us day by day, drop by drop. The poison has already polluted our waters. God save all. What happened? Spies in our camp. Three men sent by Kyotve to kill us as we slept. I returned the favor. There, you see? This is what waiting brings. We must answer this insult. They came from Nartfall, that whaling village under Kyotve's control. We hid him there. Burn it down. I, before I like Kyotve this game his spies uh, more than a watchdog so far. I can search the, the village while you round up the crew. No need. I will send Hytham to search the area. It's really, it, it is actually you can really rely good. On him while we are away. We? Do you mean to join us? Like the cinematics are really good. I have not been bred for Valhalla like you, but this will be far from my first battle. I do not like this, but I will not stop you. 
No, Sleeping Dogs is great. I'm going to play Sleeping Dogs after this. But I really like this. Do not lead my son into the same storm that follows you. Where are we going? Man your oars! Where'd they come from, dude? No, sleeping dogs is fucking sick. Time to hit the... Ooh, this is sick. We're about to pillage, dude. Ooh. Was Watch Dogs not good? It was good. It's just not. I, I don't know. I I didn't. I didn't like it as much as this. Can't raise the sail here. Shall we raise the sail? Run up the warriors. Bring it. When I was Sorry, away, no far from these frozen shores, wondering if I should ever see home again, I grew afraid. Afraid I would not return in time to see Kurtwes end. Afraid. I would not see him bleed out like a stuck pig in a drift of snow. But here I am, home in time to join those I have missed, those I love, in this glorious fight. Today we seize Nochtval from Kurtwe. Tonight his heart will pulse with worry. Tomorrow it will burst from fear. He will beseech the gods for aid, for they will be deaf to his cries. And soon, the Raven Clan will feast on his dead. Ships you are... know these isles best, Wolfkist. Lead us to victory. Ships are fast, but... Way, but you must lead us there. Oh, hey, Ward. I missed having you at my side. How I wish I could have taken you along on my travels. Stevian did not trust fate for both our lives. He had no reason to fear. Together, we are unstoppable. Dude, stop screaming about... There's... Sing by ravens. What? They're not singing, though. No? Are they singing? Oh, shit! Wait, am I stuck? Too busy messing with the radio? True. But guys, chat, this is why you're not supposed to. This is why you don't fucking text and drive. What's up with this? How am I blowing up these things? 
Oh shit, press right on the D-pad to heal. True, it did heal. Call. Cool. Oh wait, I don't have any more um Coward! Die! Yeah, fuck you. Oh dude. Combat is very rewarding. PP. I'll be back in one second. Roll when you fight. Stop, drop, and roll. Okay. For the record, we're saying RCP called Penn. Uh, RCP like recalled Pennsylvania or something. Remember, some people were saying it in my chat. Remember how some people in the chat were saying like RCP had like uh, no longer called Pennsylvania. Well, it turns out they never called Pennsylvania. I just saw Michael Knowles tweet about it. The level of copium that conservatives are on is so sad. Where... Wait, where am I going? Level of copium conservatives are on is so sad where they're like... Like they... They just want to believe. Oh, fuck. We got to do it again in the talk? Wait, how do I do it? How do I drop? How do I drop? How do I stop, drop, and roll?
Is it is it just I ran to a whole circle? It's not working. How is he not dead? Oh, come on, dude. These fire things are going to be the end of me. Oh, no. Shite. Just fucking die. Stop dropping it all. Holding square. Okay, got it. I split you. Come on, assassin. I want to see what you got. Okay, where are the supply wagons? Destroy those wagons. Okay. How do I get health again? Where the fuck is it? Is this it? Is this the supply wagon? No, that's just the building. That's a supply wagon, right? No, nope, doesn't look like it. What's in here? All right, what is this? Oh, it's a loot chest. Pog. Nice, I got a bucket. done dude i want to fucking rape and pillage and shit what are we doing there's got to be more loot in here loot chest <sighs> that's what i'm talking about <laughs> what do you mean 
mean clipped? I'm a fucking Viking. A drone well taken. No fun lies in ruin. Let the blood in hand be a warning. Ships are coming. Oh, come on. Come on! No! Oh, I'm gonna die again. I'm literally gonna die. Give me- Oh, fuck. It's- I'm playing it on the PC, but I'm doing a horrible job. I am hitting right. I just don't have enough health left. Hail, Raventlan! You reap a bloody harvest. Who are you, Gester? Name yourself. I know his face. He met with your father not long ago. I did, indeed. I am Guthor. I'm missing? What am I missing? Uncle to King Harold of the North. I speak for my nephew when there is need. This is not King Harold's land. Why does he send warriors so far south? You may ask him yourself, my lord. Thank you, Uncle. And you are Sigurd of the Raven Clan, is that right? Son of the wise King Stebjorn. I am. And you are standing on his land, King Harald. Land we have reclaimed with blood and steel. That I see, and I honor it. For I have not come to war against you, but for you, at the request of your father. The canny wolf. Is this it? Was this the plan he spoke of? We don't get to I do- offer my support. Wait. There's no, like... When you're when you're raiding villages, all you do is just like burn supply. I thought you could like I thought you could at least like fucking kidnap people and shit. With my warriors, Chad, your what are you? Chat, I'm playing a video game where I literally just genocided an entire village. Like what are you talking about? I thought that at least, like, with the can take Kurtway's fortress and settle this. What do you mean the fuck is wrong with you? This what, is good I'm news sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. In what circumstances is genociding an entire village in a video game all right? Like, I, I like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? I thought there would be like more. Uh, more options than just like burning down uh supply lines like i thought you could just like literally loot and shit kill villagers stuff like that wandering king will tip our fortunes i don't know maybe i'm missing it though we have common cause we don't need your men what's in it for you Any man who wishes to see the end of Kyotwe is a friend of mine. We thank you, King Harald. Your trust in me will be repaid. This blood feud runs deep, King Harald. We welcome your help, but I must lead the charge. I see. Is this a question of honor? It is. <sighs> Hold on, let me just like eat a couple fucking idiots here. Yeah, I'm trying to do some fucking war. Many winters ago, Kyotwe broke an oath to our fathers. He betrayed a friendly peace and slaughtered many. I understand. Sigurd Jarl will lead the assault against Kyotwe and his clan. Give him full command of my ships and my warriors. When your victory is in hand, Sigurd, find me at Alrekstadir, and we will celebrate together. Our men will gather at Flor. Oh, this dude does not look Nordic. <laughs> Will you join us? Hold a moment. You captain our longship, Eivor. Meet us there, and we will claim Kyrtvis' head for the gods. Brother, I have waited too many years for this day. This dude looks Turkish. I swear to God, us. he looks Turkish. Give me the final blow. You will have it, Eivor. You deserve it. How's he got a haircut? Eivor, give us a hand. 
Hardald is generous with his troops. More than I would be. I cannot fathom his game. He is either a young fool, or deceptively wise. Whatever his reason, I have a good feeling this war is near its end. When do you get to kill Anglo-Saxons? That's what I'm talking about, dude. A cruel destiny. Speak to Sigurd. When do we get to... When do we get to butcher the Anglo-Saxons? Shit, what is this, dude? Open up hella shit. <laughs> Killing is okay. Stealing, have some morals. Yeah, I, don't, I want to pillage and bring home some. Now I feel bad if I just like say uh, enslave people, you're gonna take it seriously. Unlike in Mountain Blade, where you could have some actual slaves. Is he in here? Is he in here? Where are you? Are you on top of this thing? Do I die again? That would have been fucking terrible. <laughs> Chat's about to be like, uh, actually, there's a lot of intergenerational trauma that I experienced. I experienced a lot of intergenerational trauma as an Anglo myself, and quite frankly, sweaty, the words that... <laughs> The trivialization of Nordic pillaging and genocide and slavery and uh, and uh, everything else is is not something that you can take lightly. Okay. How do I get up here, dude? Oh my God! There's a fucking ladder in here. Eivor, you missed the opening act. Kurtve's forward camp melted like a spring thaw at our approach. Is it from here we launch our attack? We do indeed, and we are ready to fight. Enjoy King me. Harold's forces are well in place. <laughs> Only give the word. I will, but before we strike, I have a request. Name it. The neighbor may give challenge to Kyrtve at the gate of his fortress. A battle to the death in single combat. Is... is this what you want? Kyrtve robbed my father of all honor and dignity. I will win it back. When honor is at stake, let none interfere. And if Kyrtve should die before the battle begins, all the better for our chances. Today my blade must do the work of Skuld's sharp scissors, and cut short the cord of Kjotve's fate. Well said, my sharp-tongued warrior scout. May we all live to hear that saga sung. Eivor, a word! 
Pass him. Hide them. This feud is not yours, yet you fight it all the same. I find that strange. You find it strange because you are wrong. Our clan, the Hidden Ones, have been fighting with Kjotve's order for centuries. You came from Miklagard to kill Kjotve yourself? We did. Or rather, we came so that Hytham could kill him. My apprentice has been studying this target for many months. Is Kjotve's reputation so great outside Norway? Not his reputation alone, but the order to which he belongs. Wait, there was Templars in Norway? To our own. Hytham, I mean no disrespect to you or the Hidden Ones. But Kjotve is mine. My family's honor is at stake. I understand. <laughs> All that matters is that Kjotve dies this day. On that, we are agreed. My man's like, no dis... R.I.P. to your... R.I.P. to your cult, but I'm different. What the fuck is this drip, dude? Yo, it's, it's uh, hiccuping a little bit. It'll get better in a second, though, I think. Face me here now. The fight is mine, Kjotve. Sigurd is only here to watch me feed your innards to my raven. Look at this. I'm gonna update my graphic. Again, I'm gonna update my graphic drivers. To take a swipe at me. After this. This. This is my father's shame. Today I take back the honor he lost. I call the home gang. Here. Against the Oathbreaker! I'll update them tonight so this doesn't happen again. Sorry. I will make you beg as your father begged Wolf Kiss. Squeal as your mother squealed. Why is he retconning history? I was there. You didn't make my father beg. My father you sacrificed himself life. like an idiot. I will take yours! Oh, shit. You are weak like your father was weak. <laughs> Did he just one-tap me? Rise, Eva. This is not your day to die. Squirm, worm. Why do you refuse to die? We're not alone, Jotve. The old father watches. Yo, he is big as fuck. Okay, get those out. My blade will drink your blood. Your flesh will feed my wolves. Wait, can I not parry that? No, oh, timing is off on that, I think. They've... Oh, I fucked it up again. Okay, I can't fucking... Happen. Oh no! Hi them! Damn. Assassin's bitch, more like it. Shameful trade. You are your father's child. Oh shit! Oh shit, dude! Oh! 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 Odin, give me 
get the power! Rise, Eivor. And awaken. Odin? What do you want of me? You have won your prize, Wolfkist. The glory of my death. All for this? The coward father is empty sacrifice. Price of our war, Lord Kist. The harvest of three dead generations. All oh, their names are known. It all means nothing. No. My plan will not be forgotten! What? I fought as I did. As hard as I did. To survive. For I know what awaits us in the end. Only darkness. <laughs> Odin's like, kill this monotheistic bastard. We have multiple gods in Norway. Not one. Take this back to your Templar gods. Your lives are forfeit. Come forward if you must. Into the crucible of your doom! Your father is dead, Gorm! His debt repaid! Open the gates and you will be spared! Wallow in shit, wolf kissed! Archers, take aim! Ravens, show no mercy! See, there's a black guy. Archers, fire! Wait, why is no one covering this part? Well, that's dumb. Oh, I'm gonna get clapped up, aren't I? Nope, that's not it. Oh, there's people in here already.
the 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 combat does feel chaotic but in a good way the burden of hospitality did you do ads no i haven't done ads yet get away Some call me Hunter. I speak with full authority. With my nephew King Harold, he has an interest in a strong united Norway. <laughs> Fuck off. You twat. Wait, how did he die? Okay, so there's a bunch of cool pogger stuff that I'm missing out on this map that I should probably get, right? predictable you are a shadow of your father gorm weak and witless and you will leave this place as ashes on the wind uh oh uh oh norway he's blowing up his own temple a man who is willing to kill I'm gonna do that after I kill him. Good, this fortress is ours, boys. Eivor, the breath of battle rises from my brow. The skulls will sing of this night. We have won the day, but Gorm escaped. He fled north to King Harald's domain. Let that bruised piglet run where he may. His father is dead. His clan is no more. We are the masters of Ruya Vilke. A toothless cub may grow to be a dangerous wolf. Eivor, stop and listen. You have reclaimed your honor. Enjoy the night's victory. Tomorrow, we will celebrate. You're right, brother. You're always right. Guth Ormund, relay news of our victory to your nephew, the king. I have done so already, Sigurd. You'll be more than pleased, and will ensure you pride of place at his Althing at Alvekstadir. Tell him we will come. Battle first and singing songs of glory. Keep company with kings, and you will soon have a crown of your own. <laughs> if the fates have spun it so, linger here and loot what you can. I will bring news of our victory to father before he leaves for Harald's Althing. Help! 
I know, Sunan. Another time. Okay, I'm gonna fix contrast. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna do ads too. While we wait for this, it's ad time. If you'd like an ad free experience, a contractual obligation, but if you'd like an ad free experience, then you can subscribe with your Twitch Prime. Top of the hour, every hour, 60 second ad break. As a Norwegian, I have to say, your Norwegian accent is on point. Any opinion on the DOJ and Bill Barr situation? Add time and I'll also made you a Viking email. Let's take a look. Keep a Viking? That's cute. As a black man, I have to say your accent's on point. Thanks, my brother. Thank you very much. <laughs> As the only black person in Norway, I've gotten the vouch. I've gotten the vouch from both a Norwegian, <laughs> both a white and black Norwegian person. <laughs> as the, yeah, you can't say as a black man from Norway. You got to say as a black, as the black man from Norway. <laughs> how this works so oh the map is actually pretty good what online service error so what are these little gold ones are like i remember the 4k streams come a long way by the way i, I it's crazy it is crazy that like as a Muslim, your accent is atrocious. It's tough for the love. How dare you? It is wild that this community has grown so much. I, I am very appreciative. Like, it's... It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is this door closed? Like, what's up? What do I do here? Heckin' Paparino is this, dude? Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Get. Please get in. Is this a joke? Is this game just fucking with me or what? Right. A carbon ingot? Damn, you had all these cookies in here, dude. You had all this food in here. 
Okay, I should be able to get out of here this way though. It's kind of weird. They've always had that problem. Okay, so now I'm going to get back on the ship. And then we're going where? No. Adjusted power 280. Birthright. He does not read donos anymore. Yeah, I'm 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 too big for that, dude. I'm just kidding. What do you want? You want me to read the donos? Here, I'll read your dono. Firstly, 20k on the fucking OG here right after the election. We rule you. Don't you forget that. Second, the accents are pog. Congrats on the growth, com comrade, says we Shrick Baby. Thank you. Dumb giant. I made a recap video of the election. It would mean a ton if you watched. If you have the time, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, thank you, dumb giant. Gaming time, though. You should grab those yellow books ASAP. Why? What do they do? Thank you, Obabe102. Hassan, I fucked up and went on poll. They're making shit up, but it's scaring me. I need some cope help. Tell me Trump has no chance. Dude, why would you ever... Dude, they're just... <laughs> what? Don't be ridiculous, dude. Nothing, like, nothing that you see on poll is, is real. All right, chill. Which one's better, Ravenclaw or Berserker? Oh, it's superior. Should I upgrade? Dude, why would I use the flail when I got some... Seize my emo pog doesn't add. Yeah. No. Damn, Lake McGroove, that was fucking crazy. Lake McGroove, that dude. You banned that dude before he was done thinking the N word. Like, holy shit, I saw it in the chat. My dude was literally not even finished thinking it, and you fucking banned him. Like, <laughs> that was insane. Was like, nope, boop. Boop. So, there's a book here, and I should get it? Is that what you're saying? Are these. Like, what are these yellow dipping dots over here? You not have auto mods for certain words? No, of course I do. It's just that. Fudge Muppets? The problem is the yellow. I'm gonna go with the yellow dip in the back here. The problem is they're they're usually hard to capture. They're hard to figure out where they're at. Both this forward first. <laughs> My man. My man goes, report on the news now. Yo, that one spamming kid. I haven't read your message, but you, you fucking spammed it so much that I'm probably not going to read it. I'm just letting you know. Like, I, I'm most likely not going to read it. Whoa, what the fuck? Oh my God. 
Area not available. What? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Turn around. Thing went away, dude. This is I'm not a kid. All right, I don't care about that shit. Whatever. Oh, that's it. Thank God I didn't get any damage, dude. What was that? <laughs> Ghosts of Norway. I'm not gonna check behind it, I don't care. Bro, Hoobie wants to debate you. Man, I'm not gonna fucking debate him, shut up. You destroy me. Mmm! <laughs> 18 Andy, one day ban! Boom! How the fuck? How do we get to this other fucking island area? Like, do I just fast travel here and then go from there? That's what we gotta do, right? There's got to be a better area to, to go to. Like, there's got to be a better way to do this. Fast travel to anchor on map. Oh, that's where my ship is. Dude, I'm fucking tired, dude. I think I might call I, I might call it. I think I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it, dude. But I will I will definitely I played earlier today. Like I started gaming early today. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna game early today. Uh, or tomorrow as well. Because Good. Damn. Imagine if I didn't save this game and then I just like... Okay. Oh. This back thing is actually kind of helpful. What a fucking liar, dude. Oh. What a fucking Weasley little Ladies and gentlemen, liar, boys, dude. girls. What a fucking Weasley little I love you all. Liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. We did another Holy we did another shit. entire day. Literally lying. I can't believe that America I'm America. I got like 20,000 people in here playing video games. Like that's crazy. America.
Very exciting. I will be continuing. I will be continuing my uh my gaming streams. Be playing this game tomorrow as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And um pervert. I bet he's got some big old big old giant bitch tits. I bet he's got some big old big old giant bitch tits. Yeah, I don't I don't got much more to say after that. I'm gonna go hang out with my mom a little bit. I'm gonna update my drivers immediately. So hopefully that's that's definitely uh that's definitely what I'm doing ASAP, you know? And America deserve happiness. Fuck it. I'm saying it. America deserve love. Fuck it. I'm saying it. America deserve happiness. Fucking liar, dude. What a fucking weasley. Oh, I know where to send you guys. I'm gonna send you guys somewhere chill. Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. I'm gonna send you somewhere real chill. Some good vibes for all of you, and I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy. Um, hopefully the PS5 thing is going to work as well, so that's very exciting. And as always, follow my YouTube, follow my Instagram at Sandy Piker, and tomorrow we will continue the news and some gaming as well. Again, incredible. I can't believe the growth of this community and and it's been sustainable too on top of everything else. Not only is the community growing, but also in its growth, we have picked up a bunch of very cool people. Like it's been it's probably been the first it's probably been the first time out of all of these instances of like my community growing where there hasn't been too many issues with moderation. Like usually when the community grows, the moderation is really hard for a little bit. Like everyone starts complaining, but uh, everyone that's come on and stayed on since the election streams have been very chill, which is kind of surprising. Um, there aren't that many shitters, which is great. Anyway, I'm sending you guys over to a really chill person. All right. So have fun. <laughs>